That, that was from uh, last week's episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what's, what's this guy talking that, about? That was <laughs> what did I miss? Speaking in real life, that was me speaking on the show last week. Ah, I see, I see. All righty. Uh, oh, let, me, let me share this flame on the, the Twitter. You know how it'd be. Give people time to arrive. Back uh, to back. Dun, 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 dun. At least I think I put it on public. It should be there. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, we might hear echoing for a split second while I mute the YouTube thing while I'm getting the chat up. I, I, I only hear you. You're fine. Did you hear it again? Did you hear me saying I'll only mute you again again for a split second? I, I got it muted. It's fine. I, I only hear you talking. You're, you're fine. <laughs> okay. it, it was me talking that other time, too. <laughs> but it wasn't Still real. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Velma yeah, Forge? Velma no. Twice. Velma? Yeah, fuck. Two episodes and I tapped out of that. I only watched the... I only the, watched a single one. I only watched it my EFAP boys uh, cover that. And I was like, I'm, just, I'm not going to touch that. That was my reaction. It, <laughs> that's one of the few times I've seen them just like bummed out. Like they didn't even, they couldn't even rip into it. They were just like, let's just, just, just quit. Just, 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 just stop <laughs> it. Let's not touch this yeah. ever again. Well, I, yeah, I think, it's not, it's not I worth think, it in any way. Through uh, Real BBC, I believe Mahler is to be watching Venture Brothers at some point, and that is the only funny Hanna Barbera sort of throwback thing I need in my life. Because if you guys have not seen Venture Brothers, it's it's actually not. my all time favorite. I've heard it's my all time favorite show. Like it it tops Breaking Bad for me. Like everything. It's oh, uh, damn. oh boy, it's absolutely hilarious. Wow. It's so smartly written, and yeah, the characters <laughs> are just amazing. And it, it like it, the lore builds over the course of all the seasons very very faithfully so even though it seems like they're just doing all this Hanna Barbera James Bond Marvel Comics GI Joe spoof stuff mm. it all is lore and they they'll refer back to stuff and they'll never just kind of forget about something like uh there's probably like a a few things they reference in the early seasons that don't come back at some point but your your details are covered though yeah, you're you're well rewarded by paying attention to the series and watching it multiple times because characters that become major characters in season six are shown in season one. So you're like, oh crap, they were they were there all the time. That's so kind of like Attack on Titan. You go back, I'm like, holy fuck, that dude was here the whole time. I just didn't recognize his haircut. <laughs> and it's like there's so many people to evolve and like uh, see their arcs just go off. It's crazy, um, especially with that show in particular with the time skips. I was, I was just gonna yeah. say though, I'm I'm so happy that Breaking Bad's legacy is like a reference point for quality. <laughs> so many people I, like. I <laughs> it's just an easy one because no one argues with it at all. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. In terms of like, we can all unanimously agree that that's like top tier storytelling. So yeah. everyone is just comfortable with it, you know. Because when I watched yeah. it, I didn't realize how popular it was. It was like kind of just my niche little show. You used to be able to say The Sopranos, but then after The Sopranos ending, there's there's so many people who hot take oh. The Sopranos. are like, actually, it wasn't that good because the ending just cuts to black. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I actually like that ending. And it's it's better than you think it is because you're not it's, understanding it. <laughs> it's one of the few endings that I want need to check out in terms of like definitively controversial endings. Like um, me and you talked talked about uh, Attack on Titan, which I put on, I put in that category of controversial endings. And I had a podcast yesterday with um, Uninspired and Dark Hour. We're talking about No Country for Old Men, which is like mm -hmm. the text, like the, the quintessential controversial ending. Like that's like the most controversial, controversial endings I can think of. And I, I'm not talking about things like Game of Thrones season eight, where we all admit that it's fucking trash, but like <laughs> things that there's actual like there's merits to discuss. Right. I, I think I can say this and make it vague enough to not be a spoiler. But the opposite, uh, the the ending of Sopranos is basically the opposite of the No Country for Old Men ending. <laughs> Oh Jesus! But, uh, okay. You'll you'll understand that when <laughs> when you see it. But uh, all right, we'll get to that. Or or like a lot of people I argue with against it, you won't quite understand it and just think it cuts to black when that cut to black is actually representing something pretty important. Oh, no. Here's a question: Did you understand Argyle until the fucking like re reveal after reveal after reveal like dawned on us? I mean, <laughs> like I I definitely thought it was a very twist heavy movie that uh, probably had some twists where we didn't need it. But I, I guess we should uh, we should let Metal introduce the the main topic now that yeah, I do it up. Metal, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just so giving, so giving people thunder. time to arrive. Just have some yeah, yeah. bands in the beginning. It's all good. Oh, I finished uh, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth yesterday. Oh, how how yeah, was it? How it, was it? It is quite the good video game. It uh, the story's awesome. It, it wraps up in a way that's quite satisfying, I'd say, and Ooh, probably nice. some of the best JRPG battle system mechanics 
in any game like it's Ooh. It, it's it keeps you so engaged because I know, I know you've played a bit of yakuza like a dragon but in infinite wealth you can move your character around inside a little sphere mm. and that changes your angle of attack which can knock different enemies into other other enemies to do damage to not only the enemy you're fighting but the ones they knock into right. you can knock enemies into your other party members and then if you've got a good enough relationship with those party members they'll do all these follow-up attacks and stuff so it mm. it is turn-based and ultimately it's the same old oh, i don't want to play final fantasy because i just stand there and get hit and that sucks it's, yeah you're kind of doing that but also every single strike that hits your character you can block with the b button if you time yeah. it right yeah. so turn base has a bad rep for some reason i love turn-based yeah, so it's it's got that kind of Super Mario RPG thing where you can you can add damage to attacks by hitting the attack button at the right time in, in Super Mario RPG or block by hitting the defense button. And it's similar in that, but the bonus damage is handled with little QTEs that kind of look like an old Sega arcade game. Like, tap A before the circle closes. And, and then it'll... It, you don't have to do that, but it'll add like 10% damage to your attack. So if you're doing that consistently, it does add quite a lot of damage over time. But at the same time, you can just just kick back and play it more more um relaxed and straight up turn base and not have to engage in the in the additional buttons and things like that that you can press to buff or mitigate damage and it's uh yeah i think it's it's really really good and even i, I played it in english as well and i plan to replay it in japanese but uh mm. even even the english cut isn't that bad because kaji tang still does a good job as ichimon and yang yeah has has a couple scenes where he's not altogether terrible I'm not going to say it's perfect. Yeah, the like uh, that, uh, the mechanics are the one I, I kind of want to lead with because that's the thing that really blew me away. I was like, wow, they didn't they didn't just put like a dragon's combat in this again. They they right. took that combat and thought, hey, what are ways that we can make this not only more interesting to experience, like while you're while you're playing it and while you're watching it, but add more strategy to uh, put more strategy in the player's hands without turning it into a full-blown tactics RPG like Final Fantasy Tactics where you mm. you move your character's movement and then their attacks is and things that you can do after that or get double move. It's nothing like that. It's just, now you've got a little box that you can change your angle of attack with. And uh, they do a lot with that. So, yeah, hard recommend. It'll probably end up on Game Pass. So if you don't want to spend the, the super probably, expensive yeah. price, I mean, they, they're for that. almost all of them are in Game Pass except uh, the, the zombie mm. one and, well, this one, I think. Yeah. Oh, and um, I think the Judgment games aren't. Oh, uh, right. The, the two ones where you're a cop. And I, I've not played those, so those are still holes in my Yakuza canon. <laughs> if Marcus joined the discussion, shouldn't he be added to the title, Mortal? He is my, the, the co-host. He's always here. Yeah, I have a <laughs> yeah that's, why he's, that's why he's not mentioned. <laughs> I am the Forge. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, Jedi Rook's first time on the Forge. Welcome. Yes, yes. No, I've uh, been in the chat. I've been, I've, I've been here since I've seen since you started. You know, I was happy that you actually branched off and um, right. started your own little thing. You know, yeah, I always yeah. appreciated your um, your commentary on EFAP. I've been there since like the beginning. Well, thank you. And uh, this is um, definitely a good fit. Just just because EFAP is there's just so many people there, right? And like sometimes you're yeah. more soft spoken, so you're gonna be talked over. But I'm there, I'm listening. I've always appreciated the commentary you've had, so it's cool to be there, see you. At least one person is hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what I say. No, no, no it's, it's, there's rooms for every different personality on it. And one of the things that I liked about you and Mark is that like you guys don't talk too much, but when you do talk, you always have something interesting to say. And right. like um I'm even I remember Mark, uh we met on the EFAP one, but even before that it was the um which debate was it? Was it the the the, oh, the Vibe? One of the Doomer debates. Oh no! And I just remember I, I, was, I wasn't in the Vibe one. I was <laughs> okay, the, the, the other one. Storytelling and video the, games one. The video game one, yeah. And I just remember like this fucking poor guy is trying to be so f nice to this dude, trying to meet him halfway, and Doomer's just losing his fucking mind as you're trying to be like, hey man, try to actually like make peace. And I was just like, yeah, that that that, that kind of sucks, but. I did appreciate like um, the way you handled that situation because it's hey, man, really uh, crazy to watch someone just like re like that and just you know not pick on them and try to actually like tone it down. I always just do my best to try to understand people and communicate them communicate with them to the best of my ability. And sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Uh, well, well, well. But yeah, I'm glad you played something good, Mark, because I didn't. Uh, if you, yeah. people were watching, I mean, a lot of people were watching me play the Justice League video game. Uh, and no, this wasn't Mahler's fault. 
people still think he made me play that he told me don't play it but i had a i had a big case of fomo i was like this is kind of a happening i kind of want to kind of join in and well it's a it's a disaster i mean i went on a whole rant after i finished it and put it up on the channel people seem to like that one that's like nearing 10,000 views which is pretty big for me uh so yeah uh if you want to know uh a, a longer explanation why it's bad the the video is right there i put it out yesterday uh what is it even about i just keep hearing the title and like people bitching about it but i don't know any context for the game well basically it's the suicide squad uh being king shark holly quinn <clears throat> Dead why shot. is that bitch still like getting pushed like, i don't know but she's as badly go. written as she, gets as she is pretty hard in this one and she's as badly written as she's ever been since the suicide squad started uh seriously oh and captain boomerang of course and uh it's basically hey the justice league is evil because brainiac took him over we need to kill him and for some reason these four are the ones to do it and it's really bad the writing mm -hmm. is atrocious the dialogue is cringe and bad they never shut the fuck up you just traverse the 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 open sandbox and you just quip and quip and quip and none of it's funny uh <sighs> It's disrespectful to the characters, obviously, because they can't write to fucking save their lives. Uh, it's really bad. Uh, I don't really want to get into it too too deep again <laughs> because I, I'm still have PTSD, and I couldn't even do a therapy stream yesterday because I had to prep prep this this uh, this shit. <laughs> I mean, this movie. I, I'm not gonna make any judge. It's bad. It's really bad. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so. But tomorrow is my birthday, so tomorrow I'll be playing something fun and hang out with people. Yeah, nice, nice. I was I was actually going to bring that up because it's very easy for me to remember Metal's birthday because my mother was born on the same day. Well, there you oh, go. Not the same year as far as I know. But, but yeah, Brooks, if you're around tomorrow when I stream, uh, just uh, let me know when I get you in a call because I'm probably just going to be hang out and play something random. Yeah, yeah, I'm usually here. I'm probably just going to be doing some editing. Yeah, yeah. So just mm -hmm. uh, just putting it out there. No, my Probably. birthday is tomorrow. Well, I guess the meme is my birthday is every day, obviously, but uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, Suicide Squad, it, it's live servers trash. Uh, if the servers are down, you can't play solo because that's how it works these days. So if someday the servers go down, uh, you'll never get to play that game again. Unless they bother to put something in to make you able to play it, but I doubt it. I, I heard they are planning to add an offline play mode because I think they've... I think they're in full blown damage control at this point. Probably. Because, uh, I, I don't think I don't think this game's doing particularly well. Uh, I mean, I could be no. wrong. For all I know, it's. I mean, it's, I've it's I've seen there engine. there has been like a like an uptake of uh, re looking for refunds in the game of like seven hundred percent or some crazy stuff. Uh, people are not happy with that game. It's also not a complete uh, narrative. It basically ends on a cliffhanger. Oh, that sucks. And it's a triple A life service seventy buck game, which I paid hundred for because I wanted to but I, I wanted to play it early and stream it. Uh they're basically like, you're gonna play all our seasons and you need to kill Brainiac twelve more times. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, because there's more there's multiple Brainiacs. You kill one and there's multiverse stuff when they're somehow connected and you need to kill them all and I'm sure. I don't know. It's uh. Hey, are there battle passes for each one, or is the is the are the Brainiac fights free, and the battle pass just gives you stuff? I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, they call it seasons. They uh, banking really hard on you to go back and play that game, but the gameplay loop is really boring and lame. So I don't know how many people will actually go back to play it. Uh, apparently, people went back to play the Marvels game uh now <laughs> which is kind of funny oh the avengers one yeah which is kind of funny because that one has been uh taken down if i remember correctly it's it's, it, it's terrible like i i i played a bit of it i was doing a review for geeks and gamers for spider-man miles morales the the ps5 mm -hmm. one and i i figured i'd play a bit of avengers just to have some point of reference because it was on game pass i had game pass so i was like okay it's not gonna cost me anything i I hate that game. It, it's it's absolutely <laughs> terrible. I don't understand what they were thinking with any of it. I, I get, I guess I get the, hey, we want to put a bunch of different heroes and have them all kind of play like themselves. But man, the writing in that game is is really, really horrendous. The 
it, well, God, not even touching the not. It's not so much the combat mechanics as there's like a weird kind of motion blur FOV thing happening. Even when mm. you try to scale it down, where it, it it seems like you're drunk when you're playing it in this strange way. It's like. It's like you're looking through a fish island. Or let's like in a Grand Theft Auto game when you're drunk, kind of, but not right. that intense. So it seems like, well, something's a little off here, but I don't know, man. But like I, I was actually getting a little bit of motion sickness and I oh. I regularly play like ultra fast first person shooters. So that like that's, that's not awkward. common for me to get motion sickness while playing a game. I play VR and I'm fine, you know? Yeah. But it's just uh, there's something weird about the way that game plays and animates and uh yeah, I think having Kamala Khan as the the lead in the story was probably not the greatest call, but because you yeah. know it's an Avengers game. <laughs> but yeah, stay far away from the game. That's atrocious. If you want to know more and haven't seen my my rant, it's up. Uh, people seem to enjoy that, so give that a look. See, don't play Avengers either. Just do what Mauler's doing. Go back and play Arkham Asylum. <laughs> oh yeah, those are <laughs> great. Are, I actually played Arkham ones. Asylum randomly last year on a Saturday. It was just. I didn't feel like doing anything. It's like I want to play something. It's like oh, I'm just gonna pop that on my on my big telly and just play it from the couch. And it's like I played it for like five hours or six hours. It's just such an easy game to play, and it's it's pretty darn good. Even writing wise, yep. I remember it being pretty One good. One thing I just realized, because Suicide Squad is technically the next game in the Arkham franchise, right? Like, that, that was supposed to be the deal. Which is why oh, yeah, it's in the Arkham that, universe, which okay. makes it even and worse. And with those? I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. Though. So it requires an online connection to play, right? And you can't play it offline. Correct. So Ding. every single Correct. other game... <laughs> yeah, no, actually, that was really good though. I just didn't want to miss any Discord messages from you guys. But anyways, um, it, it, so you have to always be online to play it. It's a, a full-blown live service game. I have every other game in that franchise, like in the, in the Arkham franchise, mm. not Gotham Knights, because apparently that one's outside mm. of it. On GOG, where it's it's DRM free and it, like, I don't know. So I like I, I have versions of that game that are offline play, totally free from any kind mm. of like like storefront locking forever. And then the the final one in the franchise that kind of doesn't count is so not really canon that it's it's the only one that's the exact opposite of that, where you you need an online connection even to play single player. <laughs> yeah, I was just thought that was funny. I mean, yeah, it's just modern gaming <laughs> it's just annoying life why is there continuity for the batman movies or the batman games though like arkham asylum i thought that was his own franchise well they just said it's in the same universe because yeah. i don't know that's just how I, I think i really think they just wanted a reason to have the batman boss fight use the scarecrow powers because I, I did I, i've not played the game like i've just i've seen a bunch of mauler stream of it mm -hmm. and read articles on it and things and i heard that it's because the you guys ever finished Arkham Knight, the 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 last one. That when they it made? came out, I don't remember how it ends. Yeah. Okay. So it ends yeah. with um, Batman pulling off this this protocol that he had set up, which effectively fakes his own death. Oh yeah, right, he's right, right. Yeah, yeah, dead. yeah. And it, it's not really clear, so it's like Batman might have been dead, which is why when the Gotham Knights trailer came out, everyone <laughs> thought it was in Arkham because that opens with Batman being dead. So it's yeah, like... so he can protect this <laughs> bad family and stuff like that, yeah. right? That's the whole idea. It's funny because in, 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 in this game, he's back because at some point the Justice League showed up and it's like, hey, Batman, do you want to join us and do your thing and just throw everything out of the window? It's like, okay. <laughs> he, he is, he's kind of back at the end of Arkham Knight, though, too. But everyone thought it was going to be um, Azrael. The um, like actually the the version of Batman that as like heel versus babyface is named after Azrael. Um, mm -hmm. That's, who that's where Az comes from. Yeah. Wow, I've always yeah, wondered what that, uh, what that Nightfall, meant. Because Nightfall is his favorite book, so I'm pretty sure. I, oh, I think he's, well, he's explained that. That's some cool. But, uh, anyways, um, but it, that that Batman is in, or that Batman, that that kind of Batman-like character is in Arkham Knight and, and during the side quest. So a lot of people thought it was just going to be him coming back as, and right. like taking the mantle of Batman, and then maybe Nightwing would have to take him down or something. But I guess the way they wanted to write it was that, no, Bruce didn't die. The um, I think it was like uh, might have been Nightfall Protocol. Even it was whatever the protocol is that he initiates at the end of Arkham Knight, mm -hmm. it apparently was him faking his own death and going underground. And that the Azrael like character you see at the end actually was Bruce, and he's now using the Scarecrow right, like, right. Gadget and stuff. So and and I saw that they were doing that kind of in the in the Batman boss fight in the game. I mean, again, I've not played the game, so if I'm yeah. getting do this you want wrong, to know what happens in that boss fight? 
It makes I, it, no I, sense at all. I, I guess I did see the ending several times, but um, but yeah, I hear it just Batman becomes like a kaiju or something. <laughs> oh, it's funny. The the evil Batman fear toxins the just uh, not the just league the Suicide Squad, and then Harley Quinn's plan is. I did chemistry. We're just going to mix our own fear toxin and blast it to Bruce because he's not immune to that one. And then they're both fear toxins, but with different ones. But for some reason, the way they show it is that they're fighting each other while Batman is like this big fire monster and we're just normal shooting the guy. I just imagine <laughs> them all being on the floor drowning in their own vomit. I think that's how I put it in my rant. Can you imagine how this sounds like for me with no context here? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Giant kaiju Batman? Like, what the yeah. fuck is that? I, a, well, it, I mean, you, when you think if you have to have a boss fight in a third-person mobility shooter against Batman, I, I suppose you kind of do have to do something like that. Otherwise, it would be a very odd fight. But I, I don't know. It's still like it, it's still like if that's the only reason they didn't just say okay yeah this is a different else world this is one where the justice league have turned evil and we're going to go forward from here and it's going to be like an apocalypse story that that's a lot different than saying this is the follow up to our arkham games that yeah. are <laughs> it's, like, it's very it, weird. it really is it's not yeah. the same thing uh, oh well but yeah bad game don't play it that's the <laughs> that's the short of it um I have not and don't plan to. Good, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, right, but that's not even what we're here for. See, now we talked about it anyway. It's just there's so much shit to talk about with that game, but I don't want to. It just makes me sad because <laughs> um, it's really awful. And Batman is really cool and other things, but not in that one. In that one, they just get shot and pissed on, so that's really cool. Um. No, what we're here for today is uh, a movie I feel like nobody actually gives a shit about. <laughs> because I d yeah. I've barely seen anyone talk about it. Uh, well, what, what was my answer when you asked me uh, if I wanted to come on? Uh, you, what movie it is? Like, you, I'm you like, what the fuck is Argyle? Else, I, no, I, know, I, didn't, I didn't know what the hell it was. Yeah. What the fuck is Argyle? What's is Argyle? Like, what, what have we been talking about here? It's funny because we yeah. shortly before that, you sent me your, your newest video. It's like, hey, you like action stuff? Go check that out. It's like, haha, drugs on you. I already watched it. Nice, um, nice. Appreciate it. And that's how, <laughs> that's how I was like, oh, Mark recommended we watch this one because it's like the one big movie in January, basically. Or the beginning of February. Also, I, I, I like Matthew Vaughn as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, Kingsman was pretty, pretty fun. I remember that one pretty fondly. It, I, the, uh, yeah, it very, very um, charming, and the the way they directed those action scenes is mm. like, yeah, I've never seen anything like that. You know, it just it's very unique. Kick, but Kick Ass this, has um, kind of similar action scenes, I'd say. Like this, as far as yeah. the camera work. I've seen the, the, that one in ages. So I don't even it, remember that 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 well, it? but I think it was pretty solid from what I remember. Uh, I don't remember Kick Ass, but I the Kingsman like I do remember it being charming. I remember it being fun. I remember the action scenes being like phenomenally shot, like just yeah, really yeah. really unique in the way they paced them and everything. Uh, this movie didn't have that. Like no, because I was, I was <laughs> like because that was my my thing. It's like oh, it's probably gonna be meh narrative, but at least maybe the action is gonna be cool yeah, because uh, they fun, can normally do that pretty well. The fun characters and like you know, there's enough there's enough people in this. There's enough people casted in this that we like that if they just have interesting characters and some decent action and like well paced, we can get through it. But like, the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, but yeah, because you pointed that out, I was like, huh, I'm going to ask uh, Brooks if he wants to watch that. He likes action. What could go wrong? And then we watched it. And uh, well, you yeah, ha I, had, I heard your reaction already. It's like, what the fuck, Metal? <laughs> it's just, I just, I've kept it vague yeah. just in terms of what was that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just... we can just, I guess we can just start with like little blurbs from uh, my left to right. I don't know if the thing just start with Brooks. What do you, what do you think about, um... about Argyle? I think Argyle's fucking shit, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is just... <laughs> it's, a, it's a movie where it's like, okay, okay. Oh, it's like decent premise. And then the premise, oh, wait, it's like completely fucks itself within like the first like five to ten minutes and just becomes lame like almost instantly. Like any cleverness that could have been there is just like squandered immediately. And then they keep bringing out these twists and not really doing anything with them. And, and it's just... Every everything about it just felt very, very first draft and mm. childish, and 
there's a there, there's a good story in here that they just never got close to, which is bizarre to me considering all the you know, all, you know all the talent that's involved with this. Like, why is Henry Cavill even in this fucking movie? Like, this is such a bait and switch. I think Gary who made, you said why. <laughs> huh? Yeah, what Gary you made the point. He's been saying all week is like, I think Henry Cavill just needs to fire his agent. That's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was blown away. I'm like, dude. You're lit. This isn't even a role. You're here just to be this fantasy ideal version mm. of, of of this character, and like just to be like the the muscle and like and the pretty face. But you're not even a character. This isn't a role. This is pathetic for someone. It, like this is worse than at least The Witcher. He got to like you know have moments of of acting and like I, I there's some moments of substance in there. I didn't watch all of it, but like there's 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 things to to appreciate there even though it got ruined this is no one's gonna remember this except the mm. stupid haircut i that's how, <laughs> that's how i remembered the movie i'm like oh argyle that's the thing where henry henry has that dumbass haircut right all right let's find out why he fucking actually signed up for that it must be worthwhile and to find out that this is what it was yeah it's it's shit i got through the first little bit because the cat was cute it reminded me of mine <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, and then it all like by, by the end i hated the cat too and I'll be honest with you, when I saw Samuel L. Jackson, I tapped out. I don't even know how this fucker ended. <laughs> I, I'm going to need you guys for Holy the last shit. half an hour. I, 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 I tried my best, but right you haven't the, even, right, seen, I, even this morning, you I, woke seen the worst. Time, I woke up this morning and like, it's literally as I was making tea, I was lying. I was trying to, I was ca- drinking the tea, trying to catch up with all that. And as I, I saw Samuel L. Jackson, the fact that I associate him with shit movies now, just really disappointed me so i just like I'm, i couldn't do it i'm gonna wait for you guys for the to fill me in for the last like, oh 20 you're gonna minutes. that's you're gonna the last love part. that gonna... <laughs> which which might work out even better because it's a mystery to me now <laughs> because that part is basically a completely different movie uh for oh, the... yeah yeah i, no, I believe is... you i believe you based on what you said so i think this might have been the better way for me to do it i've got the first yeah. like 90 minutes under my belt well, well, sadly so. all, the, all the action scenes at the end you're not you're not missing a whole lot <laughs> Well then, but, Mark. What about you? What's your little I, flame? I, I'm I'm probably gonna be the one with the hot take because I I didn't think it was altogether terrible for what it was going for, and I I guess I should I should really preface this because I didn't go into this thing expecting Kingsman. I went into this expecting a chick flick about a novelist, like more than anything else, <laughs> because because I saw the trailer and that's what it seemed like they were going to do. However. I did think that, and I, I, I think I was correct at least about this, that having Sam Rockwell opposite to her as like a competent dude who actually knows what he's doing with what I thought was a pretty interesting personality. I mean, maybe it's just be, because he's like a laid back dude. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I like that guy. <laughs> you know, he's a, uh, I, I, I kind of get where he's, what he's going for as far as his attitude goes. And um, I thought some of the action scenes were like, entertaining aesthetically even if they didn't make a lick of sense so i didn't think it was good but i guess i figured that if i was in i don't know like high school and my girlfriend and i my girlfriend dragged me to like 10 things i hate about yeah i guess actually that's a good movie <laughs> hey, hey, hey i like that movie how to lose how a guy dare in you 10 days. no no how to lose a guy in 10 days that's the one i was thinking of yeah and you know, i stopped myself okay like i love heath ledger joseph Gordon yeah Gordon. that's heath ledger's movie. like yeah Julia taught me Stiles how to pick up worry. women man <laughs> i 100 I was not referring to that movie i meant how to lose a guy if i, I was dragged to see something like that i'd pretty much be snoring through the entire movie and i'd chuckle maybe twice Twice. 10 things but i hate about you oh sorry no, 10 things i hate about you is it like in my small list of like every like preteen boy needs to watch like, know, road that, trip american that, pie that, that's a good movie ones. i misspoke <laughs> I, I want to be <laughs> clear, but, but anyways <laughs> what i mean is like i growing up i did get dragged to a lot of chick flicks because oh, yeah. I, I had a girlfriend through high school so uh, like i guess for me if i got dragged to something like this and then it was basically that same kind of movie where there's a girl who like everyone looks at as this frumpy person, but you know, she's also ultra successful and uh, no one knows how she's so talented, but she goes on an adventure. That's kind of like one of the novels that she either writes or read. Like, I mean, it's a similar kind of thing that happens in kiss, kiss, bang, bang, just it's a much better movie and it's detective novels instead of spy novels mm-hmm. with uh, Robert Downey Jr. You guys see that one, Val Kilmer. It's uh, one of the Maybe. good, um, <laughs> one of the good movies that the Iron Man three director did. Um, Shane Shane Black. Yeah, he he, did, he made a couple good ones. Oh, nice guys. Yeah, and... Buddy cop, buddy cop, dude. That's yeah, yeah. It's yes. uh, that that is a pretty good movie, and I think it's kind of similar in concept to that. So looking at this as a movie that is primarily being directed at like girls who like romance novels, 
but having there be a character like Sam Rockwell's character that had such good comedic timing that I, I, I liked him every time he was on screen. And I was at least a little on my toes about what his motivations were because, you know, they, like, the, the twists in this movie are extremely contrived. It's, it's not a good story. And I think most dudes are probably not going to like it, but I guess it's the kind of movie that I see as like a date movie that is moderately entertaining at times. And I, it, at the same time, Oddly enough, I think it's actually better than Kingsman the Golden Circle because that, that movie had the opposite effect. I watched it last night, rewatched it for the first time since I saw it in theaters. And that that sequel just takes is, Kingsman. Is, is that the one with good... Rus Rasputin or whatever? No, that's the prequel. That that one's all right. Um, the, the sequel is the one with um, Pedro Pascal, where he's like the, the cowboy oh. agent from America. I haven't seen that one and either, Don. <laughs> anyway, so, it, it, so if you watch, watch both the Kingsman movies, like the, the two with um, Taron Edgerton in a row, because yeah. the first one's an incredible film. It's really great. It's kind of the best you could, you, the best example of what you could get when you mix kinetic cinematography that you see in, in his previous movie, like Kick-Ass, with what if James Bond in the 70s, but now? You know, like right, like right. the Roger Moore era of like, hey, what if James Bond movies were still kind of silly and fun and had gadgets and kooky villains and things like like a girl with two prosthetic legs that both have swords on them, you know, like like wild shit like that. And they do that in Golden Circle, but they like they they stepped on the Marvel gas pedal and just made everything really cartoony and did a lot of expectation subversion as like, Oh, remember all that stuff we set up in the first one? Guess what? Now all those people are gone. They're not even in the movie at all. We're going to America and dealing with these people. And by the way, all the consequences in the previous movie, don't worry about those. They didn't matter. <laughs> and, and while, while intimately tying itself into the first movie at all times. So it's constantly reminding you of the first one and saying, Hey, remember that thing that happened? Here's what's actually happening. And it sucked. It really was bad. I, I didn't even really like any of the action scenes in it. I thought the action scenes were better in Argyle, oddly enough. What? And I know, I like. It, it, trust me, Kingsman Golden Circle fucking sucks. And <laughs> I, I remember thinking, like, yeah, I didn't really like that one. But I guess I saw it as just an interim sequel. And I'm like, well, we'll do another Kingsman. It, it'll be better. They ended up doing a World War One prequel that I thought was quite a lot better. Still has terrible CGI, but it, the King's man with Ray Fiennes is a good movie though. I'd recommend that one, but golden circle is actually terrible and it destroyed a good movie. Whereas Argyle was at least a new premise. I noticed that it was a new premise that was very much directed at like women who read fiction because the, the lead character is a female novelist who has a cat, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, yeah, they went for that <laughs> approach for sure. But I, I just yeah. feel like we've seen so many things that like the point I was going to touch back to the point you're making earlier about like, uh, Corbin feel like, like a chick flicker going with your girlfriend, like being dragged to legally blonde or like, uh, save the last dance. Like there's, there's chick flicks that actually have some substance. This was like first draft, like nonsense, like all the way through, at least for the portions that I saw. Yeah, and you guys tell I me it gets even worse. No, 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 I feel no, like I, 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 I'm on board with the concept that you described completely. Like there's some movies that are just tolerable, like you're just doing the couple thing. This movie doesn't even deserve that. It's like a tier below that. It, it, it should have been what you're describing, but it's like mm -hmm. so first drafty that like, I don't know. I, yeah, I, no, I, I, now that I'm I know you haven't seen the full thing, I'm, I'm going to have to skip some of my notes because I wanted to jump back and forth, but now I'm going to oh, do it shit. chronologically. I, 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 I came right off a six hour podcast <laughs> and I'm like so delirious. Like I have to finish the movie right now. So I had to try to finish it this morning and I, I couldn't I just in time. I missed it. I tried so hard. Sorry about that. But. It's all good, it's all good. I, I, it's, I, I, I'm I want to be clear, to though, that I, I'm not making a defense of the story. It, I don't think the story is good. I want to be it might, about that. It, no, no, of course, you never said that. But it might work out even better that there's one person that kind of, like, has the mystery box at the end. So oh, I, I did guess. I did a whole thing like that with a meme repository with She-Hulk, uh, I think oh, it was. Geez. I, I watched the episodes, took notes, and I just had him in the call while I, while I was doing those forges <laughs> and just told him what happens and just... Got his reactions. It's pretty fun. Oh, geez, how many yeah, times did he say the words? How many times did he say the words? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably every every episode. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I guess that was your blurb for all the Kingsman movies. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sort of. What about you, Metal? Uh, I had to contextualize my positive angle. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all good. We'll, we'll, we'll change that uh, because uh, I think this movie is trash. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I went to watch it with a friendo because, I don't know, going to the cinema alone is kind of boring. So I was like, you want to come with me? And he's not, like, uh, super critical. He, he's not, like, on board with everything, but he's, like, more more chill with things and he even saw like some of the things like that's not that's, uh, uh. um when i first watched it, it was like that's kind of meh i think pretty sure nothing makes sense but i was like oh, i gotta have to rewatch it anyway to take notes blah 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 and then i started rewatching it and i was like good god uh mm -hmm. i think the movie how it happens just shouldn't have happened <laughs> this could have been resolved before the movie started all of it uh, yeah, no, it sounds, it sounds like it's completely broken from the beginning. Like just what, from the premises that I've seen released, like I, I yeah. hear you on that. You have to accept a really big thing about the rules of the situation. Oh, that's mu there's multiple things. Work. It's it's time skips. It's the time frames things happen. There's things they have they don't use up until the end that should have been used. Uh, the, the, this movie has a big tonal problem. Because it takes itself super serious sometimes, then it goes to a bit silly, and then at the end it goes to wah, wah, Looney Tunes yeah, awesome, silly. Awesome it goes powers, in, like, yeah. insanely weird. Uh, it's weird because it starts with the book, obviously, uh, that she writes like, oh, this is silly, but they say it's a book. And then from there on out, it's just like, okay, okay, just pretty normal, but normal, but normal. And then the end just goes like off the charts crazy. Yeah. Uh, a tonal like problem. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Like three different movies that they introduce, and they don't bother like to properly develop each one, and then you're into the next one before you can. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like they should have just chilled the fuck out and decided what they wanted to do. Yeah. With this. On my on my first watch, I was kind of like, okay, what's gonna happen? And on my rewatch, I was like, just fucking get on with it. Like this is so mm -hmm. fucking boring. Uh, it's way too long. Like it's two hours twenty minutes or something. Like it takes way too long. Uh, this could have done with I don't know half an hour less. I feel like. Uh, oh, easily, yeah. It's uh. Yeah, it's not very good, and well, uh, paced. we're gonna we're gonna go into it from the start, of course. Uh, we're gonna probably talk about the uh, the elephant in the room because it starts obviously with the whole scene that you've seen in the trailer, which is basically the like, intro scene. Be exactly. Because it, it starts with John Cena, Henry Cavill, and Dua Lipa, who looks hot as fuck, by the way, in this movie. Oh yeah. my! <laughs> She's banging. I'll give her that. I mean, I mean, who? Everyone will get through the first scene, no problem. Oh, easily. There's, there's intrigue and like, you know, the, why is Henry's hair, hair look like that? Like, there's, there's yeah, questions, it, right? It and, goes um, super crazy. It's basically like a Bond, a, like a crazy Bond movie kind of, kind of deal. He goes like into a dance room. He danced with Dua Lipa. Uh, it's like, oh, I, we're not so different, you and I. Agent Argus, like, oh, no, yeah, he's been found was, out. Uh, ah, And then he's surrounded. It's like, hey, Hacker Man, which is John Cena. Help me out here, and then he does like some smoke, and he gets out of there, and she runs away. She shoots the the car they're in, and the other agent gets shot. It's like, ah, no, I need to save her. It's like Agent Argyle, you need to be in the target. Evac is on the way. It's like, ah, damn it, ah. And then we go like super crazy. He has like a, I don't even know what kind of car it is. It has like no roof. Maybe it's for luggage or something to drive that around the the hotel or whatever. And he just drives down and gr uh, like grinds on the side of a of a staircase. It's like, <laughs> oh dripping. fuck yeah, this is what we're in for. Like, I was on board. Like, I was like, oh, if we go in this crazy route. That's my jam. Like, I watch that shit happily, no problem. And he like crashes through walls. It's like super insane, super dumb. I was like, okay, this is kind of fun. And then he gets down. Uh, John Cena's just sitting there with some coffee. It's like, oh, he's coming your way. It's like, yeah, but I'm drinking some coffee. It's like, oh, it's kind of fun. And then he just grabs Dua Lipa off the motorcycle she's going on because John Cena is yeah. jacked and strong. And then they sit there. It's like, ah, <laughs> oh, we're both working for the same uh, agency and we're double crossing. And then Dua Lipa takes like cyanide or something and dies. And it's like, oh, cut your feet. And then cut. She closes the book, it uh, transitions to her reading the book at a book reading, and it's like, oh, that was the book. So that was... For fuck's sakes. Yeah, I know. That's... I, just, I was like... 
we're going to the real world now. It's like, like oh, man, no. this is what we're doing. One of those ones where you just get kidnapped and just hijacked. Like, man, I, I like it was kind of like a lighthearted Sin City vibe type thing where it's like, yeah. goofy, it's goofy as fuck. But if you guys are committed, you, you could probably make this fun. Let's see this unfold. And then she closes the book. And it's like, shit. Fucking Jit Bryce Dallas, what's her face? <laughs> Dallas, I can't remember her name. Uh, Ellie, I like her, but I, Ellie I, 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 I like her, but she's in shit movies constantly. Oh, okay. It's just one of those things. Is that all the like, Cavill scenes? That is all the uh, basically pretty, pretty much. the that's, only that's, so that's his only sequence. He is he's in that movie for like another thirty seconds combined. Maybe. And switch stretched out over a long time though, so like he keeps popping back up. It's just uh, yeah, he, because he's, he's in like a shot, or he's her Tyler Durden basically. <laughs> let's, let's let's spit it out. This man got used. He got completely used, like for the marketing bait. Like one of the most ridiculous bait and switches I've seen in a long time. Because I thought this was a Henry Cavill action movie. Yeah, that's what I thought. Everybody thought that <laughs> because he, what John is Cena, here? Dua Lipa, they were all in the forefront of the. Of the advertising, as far as I can tell, there's like even posters where they're all three of them are like in the front, and then our actually main protagonists are like in the second, third row. And I think they were like, "Ah, oh, see, we just all baited and switched you because that's actually not the story." And like, if you watch the trailer, it's kind of implied that they are in a book, but you would assume we go to 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 something. It's like, oh, but they're like actual agents, like they do show up as the actual agents. But no, that they're actually just the fictional characters fucking lying ass trailer like this is one of the yeah it's to advertise this as a henry cabo action movie and if, knowing how many people want to support him after the things that happened to his career and then yeah just like do this it's I've, really the, left the a bad trailer, taste in my mouth i think that, like, I, at least for me though i think that the trailer did make that quite clear like i knew that was the movie we were signing up for or at least that henry right. cabo was gonna but, well because because they they show all the stuff like they show Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell and everything and the the concept that she's a writer who's who's a, a fortune teller like is telling the future with what she's writing and I mean like I I thought that that was a premise that could end up being really really dumb and then I but well, I, it, I, it was. I my, my, <laughs> I had a vague memory of that part but when Metal mentioned it to me I remembered the haircut for some reason I remembered there was a cat and it was gonna be like an action movie. But when you're mentioning those pieces, like I, I assume they're going to be cutting back and forth, and he's act we're actually going to mm -hmm. see his character and his story play out. It wasn't like that. He literally got used so we can get a shittier premise, a shittier version of that concept with somebody else. Which I'm like, if you're going to do that, then go and have the courage to do it. Don't advertise us this different version of the movie with Henry, someone that people want to support, and then just use him like some Tyler Durden shit in like a crappier version of that. And yeah. I just I if at least the I've movie would have been so good to after. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever felt so lied to in terms of advertisement in like a long time. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean I I think I can agree to that. Especially yeah. the print marketing, like the the posters mm -hmm. and things, but again, like I think in the trailer I think they do make the Henry Cavill is the novel character mm. quite clear and that's it's why his hair is as stupid as it is like, <laughs> that's, well, why, I think, that's why i was no, curious I that, like, like, there's got to be like a character behind the character reason well, for that, right? like, i mean right when they cut out of that scene they show you like a uh kind of like funko pop looking yeah like, yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Two yeah. Of them. And, that's like, the, the part that i thought was interesting like stay with her and the character and cutting back and forth and like do, do something with it but then they just got yeah oh, jesus yeah i mean I <laughs> they use it in a very awkward way and really short they they drop that pretty quickly because that Please. happens one two more times so i know maybe he's like in this movie after this like let's let's give it five minutes tops after that yeah stretched out you can literally say that as maybe five minutes stretched out from what i've seen and i assume maybe he's got like a little dialogue at the end or something but he's really not in this movie he's a concept in this movie not a character which is kind of like really again? again which is weird i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna jump all the way to the after credit scene where he appears in the real oh. world as a def another character so apparently this argyle character does exist somehow because they do <laughs> he is in the crowd at the end and it's like oh maybe i can tell you some things so I don't even know what they're doing with this because the after credit scene they they actually tie it to the Kingsman universe what we just saw. I, I actually I didn't stick around for after the credit. I've not seen the after. <laughs> well, I think it was more like mid credit scene, not an after credits. Uh, but it, well, I mean, I, I don't I blame you for leaving because I Marvel. Did. I think Marvel burned out people on credit scenes. They're, people just leave now. Oh yeah, I don't I don't blame you. I just saw this and after this, like I have to piss. I'm gonna get out. Well, 
But how do they tie it to Kingsman? God, that actually probably would have well, pissed me off. Well, I think we, 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 we see... Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I couldn't find the, the after credit scene online anywhere. Uh, she's in Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's uh, someone in a pub and it's like, oh, this guy sent me. And it's like, oh, here, here it is. And then he gets like a gun and then he calls him uh, something Argyle or something. So Argyle does apparently exist somehow. And I think they're they're uh, uh, they are uh, the baiting not baiting they're announcing like a prequel or something I don't know maybe it's maybe maybe that's going to be a movie with Henry Cavill or just a completely different character and he was just in the movie at the end that he does exist I don't know but it is in the Kingsman universe uh, this movie oh man that sucks <laughs> yep <laughs> I, like I really thought with the the Kingsman like with the prequel I kind of thought they were getting that franchise back on track in a good way I was like oh no I could I could go for more of this now but man yeah that sucks <laughs> uh but yeah the, the, it's the it's this because yeah I'll, I'll i'll point out when henry cavill does appear and in what context because it gets kind of confusing how he does appear and how they use him just from a like how, how it works but yeah she's like doing her book reading she just uh uh released her fourth book if i'm not mistaken and then she gets like quests like, oh, I want to write too. What do you do? And then it's like a whole thing about how writing works. Like, oh, just take your time if you want it. I mean, I guess it's fine. I don't know why it's in this movie. It doesn't, it's just like, I guess they wanted to tell people what they do if they want to write something. Just do what you like or something. Doesn't really have anything to do with the movie itself, to be honest. Yeah. I feel like it's separate. just a message they wanted to put out, which is fine. But I just found it weird that it's in here. Um uh and yeah and then there's this one guy who, who stands up which we later learn is called carlos and actually works for the baddies uh and he's like hey uh what what wh you are you a spy yourself lamau because you've been predicting all these things happening and he's like oh no it's just research and it, already this context like if you know it it's like why 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 is he here asking these questions he works for the baddies to know everything that she's what she is why why did they why did they send send this guy which is basically the right hand baddie guard man for the for the big boy to ask dumb questions like this like what's the what's the point i didn't i didn't get it That's what that so that she recognizes him later <laughs> yeah we see we see him in the in the train not too far from now and we're like why did he why did he ask those stupid questions he knows everything that's going on it's like he's even in a fake room later that that she it's it's just makes no sense i don't know why he even asks those questions like i don't know why they would send him here to ask these questions like what okay Um, right. Uh, and then there's this other guy's like, "Hey, uh, he's gonna." A he's asking her out. It's like, "No, I already have a hot date." And then we cut to her home, and he's, she's alone at home with her cat because that's how white women are. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the wine mom cat meme, yeah, like like cat lady thing. They just do it all the time. It's like that's the only type of woman that exists. <laughs> like, I live with an Asian woman, and we out. have dogs. Yeah, no, that's no, what I'm saying. No. It's, it's, there's plenty. Some women like cats. Some like like this. It's just played out a little bit. Yeah, um, I, I did like the cat though. The cat was cute. I'll give him that. Uh, yeah, if the w yeah, when the I real cat is on screen. Uh, and yeah, the and then he one. turned all CGI and floompy, and I hated him. Like, yeah. Out of here. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the we go there. We introduce the cat. It was called Alfie. I was like, yeah, that cat is going to be around. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess she's really into finishing this next book because she's basically done with it already, uh, right after finishing the fourth one, and she she finishes that one up that night. I guess the same day she releases that one because she says like, someone asks, "Oh, when are you gonna release the next book?" He's like, uh, uh, "Sooner than you think." Uh. So she's basically almost done and finishes it that night. Uh. And there's one of the other she's scenes with Henry, Henry Cavill in here because we like zoom into the page and see how he like finishes the things like, oh, the master file is somewhere safely stored. I, you get this uh, second payment when I get this. And it's like, oh, when he finds it, never will be the same again. The end. It's like, oh, we finished the fifth book. Woohoo. 
So that scene, I actually thought that they could have used that format to to actually actually use the the volume sets or like the kind of shitty green screen that's in most of it to <laughs> yeah. do some interesting effect because they do this thing where she stops writing in the middle of the scene and then she's like, oh no, that that sucks. Deletes yeah. it and then you see the yeah. the footage kind of winding back in the background while the characters are still unmoving in the foreground. And I was like, well, if they had it so that she's trying to finish this book and that's a big part of what's you mm -hmm. know it's informing format. the storyline i thought it would have been cool if they were cutting back to that frequently and like showing that's that what more. i was thinking they would yeah. do but that's, that's, the, that's own, what the movie was that's yeah. the only time they do it because <laughs> that's the what, best part of them <laughs> yeah because the what, what happens is she she's like oh i'm done so i'm gonna go to sleep now sends the book to her mom to read it uh, and the next day she gets faced i was like oh i read it it's like it's really good but uh, it's a cliffhanger. You're gonna kind of let down the the audience. That's kind of shitty. How about I'm gonna come over next weekend? We're gonna make it a whole weekend. We're gonna do a little brainstorming. It's like, ah, oh, you have one teeny little tiny uh, chapter to write still. He's like, Ugh, mm. fine. And this, and then we go to the scene you just described, Mark, where it's like zooms back in and she writes the things like, oh, I still have time to kill. And uh, how about I show you some fireworks? And then just stops. It's like, oh, that was really bad. And while she's thinking that, Argyle is saying it, which is it's kind yeah, of a fun it's, concept. What you, you just nailed it. Right, right, there's so many fun things you can do with it. What yeah. you just described, like, just put a smirk on my face because that would have been funny. Like, him looking at the camera like, you serious? Like, this is what, like, go to bed, like, girl. Like, you know, try yeah. again. Like, yeah. There's so many things you can something. fucking do. Fucking hell. We're making a better movie right now than whatever the hell <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because this is the only Probably time they do it. Like, <laughs> like, what did you say, Mark? It probably would have been cheaper too if it was just yeah. all like yeah. yes. volume shoots like that and like all kind of cool green screen action sequences that, that had some <sighs> comedy to it because she was constantly rewriting them and doing different things. So you, you could get take like it five seriously. versions yeah. of the same scene. Yeah. It wouldn't need to be like all the goofy, like even the CGI stupidity with the cat. There probably could have been context for that where we could appreciate it rather than just rolling my eyes like yeah, I was, you yeah. know? Yeah, no, like, that's a just, better movie. There's, <laughs> there's so many things that we could have done with it. That's where my frustration came from. And I that frustration like came in like, I'm not, I think before this scene, because I already assumed that they weren't going to do that before I even saw this. And the Samuel Jackson thing is like, I really like Samuel Jackson. I love a lot of his movies. And in yeah. the last like five years, he's just become associated with crap. I've just and, seen, like, I've just like, seen uh, an yeah. older movie of, of his while I was over at Mahler's. Uh, we saw The Negotiator. Mm. Uh, that's on Netflix. I hi highly recommend. It's a pretty good movie, which didn't do well back in the day. But it's a really cool Samuel Jackson movie. Where he... Have you seen Shaft? Yes, I actually saw that with Mahler as well. One of the first times okay. I was over. I think we watched it twice yeah. in those two weeks. Jeff, it's so Jeffrey funny. Ray, it's so good. It's Je so the, funny. The, the the first one or the second one? Uh, good question. Probably the first one. Oh, but probably is Christian Bale in it? Oh wait, no, no, no. I mean the one with Samuel L. Jackson. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, Shaft, <what? laughs> Buster Rhymes, uh, uh, Samuel Jackson, Christian Bale. And Jeffrey Wright. Wait, year Christian 2000. Bale was in that one? I don't even yeah, remember that. Just, okay, you have okay. Christian Bale pays praise plays a racist asshole. Like he's it's it's such a fucking yeah. fantastic oh, movie. Oh, Mark, yeah, back me up here. I'm sure you've seen no, it. No, I believe you. It's just been too long since I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint which one you saw, because the fact that yeah. you can't figure out which one I'm like, what the wait a minute, how many shafts are there? I didn't see the newest one because there's did a new I. one where that's supposed to be his, like Samuel Jackson's kid, the new, the new Shaft. Oh, I had no interest in that. I, I didn't see that at all. But the yeah, 2000. No, Wait, but that that's the one I was talking about then. That's the one I've seen. Oh, okay, no, no, no 2000 no, no, Jackson no. with Christian Bale is him and his. Prime. Oh no, I'm talking about the 2019 one. That one is really funny too. Uh, okay, so the 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 2001 though is yeah, it, Samuel comedy. Jackson is supposed to be the son of Richard Roundtree, like the original TV show Shaft. So it is like they're all canon, I think. I I don't know <laughs> if he's the son of that guy in that movie, but I know he plays a cameo. They give a cameo to the original Shaft, which I really really like. Like they do what Marvel should do, like pay respect to the OG characters mm. and whatnot. Like that was such a good scene of like seeing the young Shaft. Uh, get advice from the old chef and like like a uncle. I don't know if he was his, his father in universe, but but my point is that Samuel Jackson is prime. That's I, I've always loved him from them, and to see him yeah. Secret Invasion like almost made me hate him. Like I fucking kind of hate him after that. Yeah, Secret Invasion the Marvels, was awful. Yeah. The, the Marvels, I was done with them, and in this movie, like 
I, I this is the first time I've ever come to review something without finishing it, and my hatred for what they did to Samuel Jackson, I couldn't even like do it. So that's the only thing from it. Yeah, but, yeah. Watch Shaft, year two thousand. Do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, she's basically having a writer's blockage, and is mm-hmm. like, oh, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna go over to my parents' place and chill out there for a while. Uh, which yeah, I guess makes sense. If you, I mean, she just she just released her last book. She probably has. A bunch of time to release the next one um and yeah she goes on the train and this is where we get a second protagonist agent man uh who's called aiden we don't know that yet he says his name later but doesn't matter i'm gonna call him aiden now because i can't be bothered to call him agent man every time i think he carries the movie (laughs) I mean, he's probably the funnest character of the of the he's, bunch. But the thing is, he's got, I basically all of the comedy in this movie doesn't really went for I, me. I didn't. Really I was like gonna it. say there's one good joke. He's like, "Hey, the cat. You're supposed to be in the hat, not in the bag." Like just his introduction oh, yeah. and the arc. I, 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 That's I, when, I he's ho- <laughs> when he's hobo Aiden. <laughs> yeah, the hobo, the hobo arc was the only thing I liked, and then he shaved, and I got bored of him instantly. <laughs> Am I the only one who got a good chuckle out of the skull crushing bit? <laughs> probably. I found, yeah, it, I found it cringe. <laughs> I was like <laughs> looking at my phone by that point. That's I was so out of the movie by then. I mean, like I, I, I just I, I found it an oddly relatable situation because you got to think from his perspective. He's like, look, I only have so many bullets and I've got to kill like twelve people. So could you please just crush their heads? <laughs> like now, it's I not could... that hard. You just got to stop on him. It's fine, especially when when you find like in the end, he's like, I know you can do this. Like you do mm-hmm. it a lot. In concept, not execution. There's so many things. That's like the summary of this whole movie for me. But he also so has like that could be better. four SMGs on the floor he could just use for more bullets and just nail them all down after you flashbang them. But uh, that's that's for later when we get there. <laughs> yeah, fair point. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's on the train. That's the, she's like, hey, mom, I'm going to come over. And it's like, ah, oh, maybe we can find the boyfriend for you. It's like, oh, I'm married to my to my work it's like oh okay uh blah 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 then this one uh, attractive guy was like can i sit here he's like no it's taken and then she regrets it immediately and then hobo agent sits down and it's like no no someone's sitting there and he's like yeah well i can just get up when he comes back really (laughs) it's just knowing that no one's coming back uh but yeah he's our second our other protagonist uh agent aiden uh and he like finishes her book right there, and uh, I-, I guess he's just playing the agent role right now. It's like, oh, it's you! I didn't recognize you. Blah blah blah. Uh, even the camera does like the thing where he just looks at the picture first and then at her. So he's just playing the role. Uh, he's like, oh yeah, we both have like the the luxury of doing work that we both like. It's like, oh, what do you do? And he's like espionage he's like okay she's like thinks he's crazy and he basically is like oh there's people here i'm gonna beat them all up and then we're gonna get out of here you have to bear hug me because we're gonna do a whole jump with a parachute and stuff and he's like okay and then another guy comes up and he's like oh can i have an uh an autograph he's like yeah okay and he's like oh are we actually doing this and then our first action scene happens because he's just gonna beat them all up in the train uh yeah when they started switching back to henry yeah this is the i genuinely got angry of like this is what you signed up for yeah to because be this, he he starts talking figment of her imagination yeah so he, he he starts talking in like uh like a spy would and she just kind of projects him onto like he she pro- projects argyle onto him and just switches back and forth between him it's like kind of weird she later calls it like a coping mechanism or whatever. Uh, we, we, I don't even know if you know what it, what it actually is, uh, Brooks. I don't know when you precisely stopped, but uh, I, I think One, you, you might have stopped I, right before they. Right when they introduced Samuel Jackson. Oh, when I so, saw okay. his face, I got oh, fucking so angry. You don't even. Oh man! Like literally, <laughs> as I saw his face, I was like, "You, what the fuck are you doing here?" Oh, <laughs> and like it, conf- it confirmed he's just known for shit now. I just like fuck. I hit the space bar and then like, <laughs> I just I couldn't do it, but yeah. So that's so right when he's introduced around one twenty. Oh yeah, that yeah that's uh, that's that's uh, I think five minutes before the the big reveal 
Uh, I'm kind of happy I did know. <laughs> okay, so well, yeah, so she's gonna. Th that's that's what you're gonna see about, with Henry Cavill, like little seconds of him appearing when he's doing fights and just looking mm -hmm. like flirty at uh, at he's Ellie. Giving her the fuck you, the fuck you face. And, like, yeah, and just going like me. being epic. It's like, oh, you punched me, but I got everything in control. Obviously, it, it's actually Aiden doing all the all the shit talking, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, the fight scene is just super basic. It's not the most offensive I've seen, but there's still the whole thing. It's like, oh, I, baddies don't hit for I, shit. The one guy starts off by using his baton instead of the gun he later uses. I don't know mm -hmm. why he did that. Uh, I don't know. It's whatever. I don't feel I, I, strongly about that one. It's not the most offensive and bad I've ever seen, but it's also not great. My immediate take on the fight scenes were like, these are being carried by the music where no one's even paying attention mm. to the logistics of the fight. This isn't even something like, I'm not doing a scene comparison on that fucking fight. <laughs> fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it's all stupid, but it's like, I could tell like you're, you're tonally, you're going just for like a tone here and not really caring about the logistics. So yeah. I'm not going to. I think what's worth seriously. What's important pointing out is it's a very normal action scene. It's not super over the top. It's just people with guns or sometimes mm -hmm. sticks and they do like normal takedowns and stuff. So nothing super over the top. It's important to remember for later because of the tone we're going with these action scenes. Um, mm. uh, then there's an, a part where she gets pushed into a toilet. She sits there. Aiden has to fight like two lady assassins and... It goes, like, back and forth between him being Henry Cavill and him. And I think it's supposed to be funny, but it's just... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work, didn't work for me. Done with uh, it instantly. Your mileage by, may vary, but I know that that, that type of comedy wasn't for me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, but, yeah, they're just fighting. They get to the, to the end of the card and they're, they're cornered. And then we see the guy from from the book reading it was like she's like oh hey it's me remember and it's like yeah i'm here to kill you and <laughs> there's like seven people with guns and no one in the train actually gives a shit like there's people shooting but they're like i'm gonna read my book here uh, i don't even know I why i don't know what the fuck was going on like i don't know what the stakes were at this point i, I was just so like yeah i mean they, we only know <laughs> they're, they're after her because she kind of fortune tells what has been happening and uh, they parachute out. She falls unconscious and wakes up in uh, uh, in a hut with uh, good old Aiden, who is now shaved and uh, has a haircut. The hobo arc is over, I'm afraid. Yep. No. Yeah, that was the best. He's, yeah. Instantly became just lame hero man. And you can, I'm assuming they, she, <laughs> fucking hell. It's also predictable, where right? I just like to see what's gonna happen with these two yeah so uh she wakes up uh he tells her that some of the things she are right she is writing is unfolding right in front of her including the unpublished book the fifth one which he read already because he sent that around email and he's a spy so he gets the things whatever um and they really want to know what happens next because the thing they stopped at uh the cliffhanger the thing that comes right after is actually the things they need because they actually, in real life, are looking for a master file, for the which is called uh, like the, the the enemy group is called the division the 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 easy for me to say the division shouldn't be that hard to say but you know what I'm <laughs> dumb, um, uh, something they actually want because it will incriminate the people in the division and that's really bad for them so they want to know what's written next, um. And that's why they're after her, because she's basically a fortune teller, quote unquote. Uh, and then we, we we see our baddie for the first time. He's called Rita, which is uh, played by oh, Brian Cranston. God damn it. That's, a, that's another one. <laughs> there, there, there's a couple, there's a handful of actors where like, that are just, if you're going to put these motherfuckers on screen, you better give me gold. And Brian Cranston <laughs> is one of them. I do not want you fucking around with everything he does after Breaking Bad needs to be like, you know, 
to be well appropriate and suited to his skills. Like I don't want to yeah. see him wasting time. Charles Dance is another one, just wasting that motherfucker away. He hasn't done shit since Game of Thrones, mm. and this it, this annoyed me. Like you have Brian Cranston on screen, and somehow I'm not entertained. Like you failed, you failed. <laughs> yeah, that's a oh, shotgun. A cool shotgun. <sighs> yeah, God. but he, he's uh, he's very evil and kills his henchmen for failing. Yeah. I just written I down do. yawn right after that sentence. 100%. <laughs> it's just, just so, ugh. He's very it's, it's... evil. He kills his henchmen. Hooray. Um, uh, G G Giancarlo Esposito, what they're doing to him and the boys and with uh, uh, Mandalorian. Just, just wasting. <laughs> he's six. fucking space, he's space Gust. It's just fucking stupid, man. Like, that he's another one where I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, they have a specific skill set that you can harness, and people will follow them to see them utilize it, but they yeah. just can't. It's, it's yeah, frustrating me. Yeah. Yeah. He shows them with a shotgun that his dad got. Doesn't matter. He's evil. Uh, we go back to the other two. Uh, you, you're going to notice I'm going to go through a lot of the first bits because the notes I took, I'm not going to mention now because I want to see no, Brooke's no, reaction to the... To the, to the twist. Um, so I'm skipping a, a lot of stuff for later. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. He's evil. That's like a perfect segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. So, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a pretty good way of describing this. No, no, I'm, I'm legit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, it's, uh, that, I wasn't being sassy. Like, no, really, no he's, he's just same. bad guy. <laughs> that's <laughs> basic, basic bitch villain. Yeah. So we go back to the two. They're making their way to an airfield. Um, and uh, Aiden explains to her, it's like, oh, we brought them this hacker who got the file, but they don't know where the file ended up because no one was at the meetup. And, and now you need to write the next thing or use your imagination to figure out where it might uh, went because she's uh, predicting all this stuff. And she obviously tells like, that's not how it works. It's like lots of research and stuff, traveling to places where things might have happened. Uh, and he's like, okay, cool. We got a plane right there, uh, which I guess he has because he's a spy, the rogue spy. Actually, I don't know where he got that plane from. <laughs> now that I think about it, he has a plane at the ready for him to fly around. At connections, I guess, whatever. And it's like, okay, I, cool. I, I, we go to just, London now. Yeah, go ahead. I just, one quick question before we move on. The, uh, the shot of them in the car. Mm-hmm. Is this the Baby Yoda effect? Like, just we need a cute thing in a box, like, no matter the context? Yeah, like, yeah, that's maybe. like, oh, yeah. Like, like, like it, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, the, the cat is basically just here to facilitate drama and get them in trouble. That's, 100%. that's, that's all it does. But I just mean this specific shot, I just feel like it's almost a mandated thing now. Like, if we, they oh, need yeah, to show have the a cat, cat. Or have a dog or something. People it's like just cats. Like, yeah. Oh man, it's so lame. And I love cats, like <clears throat> legit. But like, yeah. when you're just using them as like a, as dangling keys, it's kind of lame. Like, do something. You remember the dog in the mask? Yeah. Oh god. Was Anybody? Yes. The, the 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 mask. That's yeah, a whole with Jim movie. With you remember the... his dog Milo? Yeah. You remember his oh, dog no, Milo? I you meant in this movie. I was like, oh, oh no no. no. <laughs> The movie The Mask, his dog Milo. Does anyone remember that? Chat? Anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like that's, Jim Carrey movie, The Mask. <laughs> that is a fucking dog where it's like, he's not just there for fucking like, you know, to fix the plot for everything. It, it's, it's, it's it's just not there as dangling keys. Like, I just re I remember when they actually were believable pets. Now it's here as just a prop. Something about that annoys me. I just have to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, then we're going to make their way to London. And I've, for some reason, she's like, oh, no, I'm scared of planes. I was like, that's why I was on the train. I was like, okay. But so she's afraid of flying, but Aiden calms her down by telling her a story about where he climbed a mountain and knowing that if he would let go, he would fall and die, but he just focuses on what is in front of him. And this calms her down. And then we go to London. It's just like a scene where it's like, I don't need, we don't need this. Cut. <laughs> Cut. Just like that's what I mean. Like, like even in the tap. context of the rest of the movie, I know, Mark. Maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like this is just no, kind of random. I, I, I mean, like that. Uh, I guess the the only Bonding, defense I, I can make of that. Is, well, and also that's a that's a pretty common like military thing of uh, don't don't worry so much about the five kilometers you have to now march <clears throat> with this backpack that weighs a hundred pounds up this hill. Just think yeah. about the 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 back in front the guy's backpack in front of you. Just keep that the same distance away from you, you know, like so that I, I mean, I, I do think that's not terrible advice, but it really the scene was, hey, what if um, 
what if the reader is afraid of flying? Let's have a scene where where the, where the spy man calms her down and teaches her how to fly, and now she can fly, yeah. and she's no longer nervous. Like it's a, a lot of the stuff in this movie is really just getting Bryce Dallas Howard's character to get over like neuroses yeah, and things the, like that. So it's <laughs> it's holding really her hand. That... <laughs> there's there's, there's <laughs> another scene right before you stop, Brooks. Actually, that is, has the same kind of thing. Where I'm just like, why did he? Why did why did he do that? That's weird. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll get there. It's just a random scene. That, it's nothing really he, wrong with it, he... but we didn't need it. It's just yeah. it's, random. It feels out of character. Like, I, does it, it feels like Hobo Man wouldn't have done that. He felt like a more believable <laughs> that, character, but he shaved, okay. and now he's just this loser. <laughs> that does make a little more sense when you when you know the twist, though. I guess mm. in fairness, okay. it's not that okay. it's better, I, and that the scene. I am more. I am excited, and I'm happy I tapped out. <laughs> you, you, will, you will you will eventually understand why he will at certain points get very very nice to her. Like I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I I do I do know that she's, um I I did get the reveal of her like I I know that part and I th the only part of it I like is that like there's a version of her that he likes and he's tired of this fucking idiot that's scared of everything, but even then like I miss Hobo Man I still feel like they should have had that portrayal <laughs> like you utilize that version of him but okay. yeah, I think it would have been funny if he was the hobo hobo look yeah, for the entire movie yeah he was way more charming cool. he he's way more charming like I that would have kept my interest much more. Um, but yeah, they're now in London. Uh, London. They are at the uh, Albert Mem Prince Albert Memorial statue. Uh, specifically, it's like, well, this is where the meetup should have happened, but this is also where all our leads end. Uh, and also the division finds them here because some random guy recognizes her and starts live streaming her to the internet, and that's how the division finds her. Lame. Oh, convenient. Convenient. Um. But they tap into all the cameras around so they can now hear them. Uh, the, the basic gist is they... Uh, uh, yeah, that tech didn't make a lick of sense. Because it, it, it comes up on screen as lip-reading technology, but then the, the voices sound like them. Yeah, so, I... I was like, wait, what the hell? It's like the lip-reading technology makes it so that they can actually hear their voices? That doesn't make sense. Like, you figure... It would have made a lot more sense if what they were hearing was, like... An AI voice, sort of like a Microsoft yeah, mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's how you would normally do it. So basically, the the hacker gave them a burner phone, and uh, well, she starts writing. So this is another Henry Cavill scene where, he, well, he just stands there, and then it's like goes back to the car with John Cena. It's like yeah, it wasn't there, and uh, it's like a minute of them just going back and forth and basically it's like oh there there might be an encryption device for end-to-end -end calls in this burner phone uh but you need the proper satellite dish to decode on the other side um and he's like well we need to find out which who has those satellite dishes and then aiden's like well give me the laptop i'm gonna hack this thing real quick at the same time the division hears that starts hacking the dishes as well try to figure out oh there's 93 though and she says, oh, what's what's the nearest one? And it's like, oh, it's this one, Conrad Street. And apparently it's like Prince Albert Conrad. It's like the full name. I checked. It, it, it checked out with the names, whatever. Um, and it's like, well, let's check this location first. And then they do. Uh, and that's just like basically them saying that. And there's like this little back and forth between Henry Cavill and John Cena for a minute, minute and a half. So we got a little bit of that going on. A preview into the movie you were supposed to get or the movie we thought <clears throat> it was supposed to be or something like that, you know, if, if John mm -hmm. Cena is like the guy, the guy, um, the guy behind the keyboard, like the second hand, yeah, your yeah. tech guy type thing or whatever. Guy you know? in the chair. Like, the guy in the chair. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and it, again, just teasing, teasing that, which is just strange because the premise that they're working with now with these two has just gotten so stale where and you can see at least this could have been fun. Like John Cena, for what he's worth, I thought he was funny in um, The Suicide Squad as Peacemaker. I didn't see Peacemaker, but he's a charismatic guy. And I think mm -hmm. they could have made something work with, uh, you know, Henry being the more serious and then him being more, you know, there's, there's so many things they could have done. Even the, the little rewrite that me and Metal did at the beginning was like, you know, I'm still <laughs> thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell, man? So, yeah. Just the all these scenes with him just were just frustrating. Um, but yeah, they go check that one. Obviously, division knows as well, so they're kind of on the way too. Uh, they check this place and it's empty. 
And for some reason, Aiden is even like, oh, it's empty. Well, let's bounce. We're not going to check anything. And then and then uh, Ellie is like, well, hang on. This is kind of weird. Like this, like the wallpaper on bricks. That's kind of awkward. It's like, well, yeah, he's got like bad taste. Let's get out of here. It's like, no, it's got to be a clue. And that's like weird markings. And then it's like, <sighs> we have a spy here and a writer who at least knows about spy stuff. She's about to just find something by looking. Yeah, and but for some reason, those. for some reason, instead of them looking and finding a thing, he's like, "Oh well, if you're wasting time, I'm gonna do a little dance. You like to dance?" Then he spins, taps forward, and finds the hollowed out ground like this. It's like, what? What are we doing? Yeah, they made, we were they about, made about. We were just really starting. Stupid. We were just starting I them starting to look around the place. And he's like, oh, I'm going to do a little dance. And he taps and finds the hollow thing by accident. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, why, did you, why did you start it out like they were about to check the place? And why did you make Aiden look like a fucking dumbass by just not... Well, he's a spy. <laughs> like, instead investigate. Of doing, instead of doing investigative, like, detective work, he's doing this fucking nonsense dance. I, did, I don't even... Like, well, no, I must have zoned out. That. Worse than that, she's the one that's supposed to know everything, and she's like, wait a second, hold on, this means something here. And he's like, well, like, it's fucking scratch, it's plaster, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, he's he's like, been wait, urging, what? he's been what? urging her to tell her, to tell her, it's like, what's next? Like, wait, there's like this, a, this there might be something time. here. It's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> exactly ignores her, like, it's so stupid, they can't even stick to their own premise. It's the first oh time God. in the movie that she ever takes the lead on giving new information. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, instead of him being like, okay, please think of something. He's like, where were you standing? Standing there? Okay, cool. You were standing there. What happened next? Yeah. And now she's like, wait a second. This means something. And he's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> God, that's so stupid. Yeah. It could have made the reveal actually make more sense because you could recontextualize all those scenes and be like, oh, yeah. that's why he had so much faith in her opinion. That's why, because I, you can get to a point where it's like, why does he trust this lady so much? I'm like, oh, that's why. Instead, what you just described is him saying, oh, fuck off when she finally gives some advice and start using it why would they skip why would they screw up their premise and also miss an opportunity for any yeah, detective was, work you know what i mean detective like that's the one th like the batman for example for all the people who had good or bad with the movie where we felt about it everybody was happy to see batman do some detective work oh it's for, always for fun in yeah. anything this was a waste give me five minutes of them shutting the fuck up and actually trying to investigate and maybe would have got my attention again but no, the speaking tap of dance. the Batman, I'd rather be dragged <laughs> to this than a Twilight film, and I've been dragged <laughs> to a Twilight film. Okay, oh, I just I've skipped those wholeheartedly. Not mess with vampires. Yeah. No. Well, Robert no, Pattinson no, no. came out of them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened I mean, to the his other guy? Career. I don't know about the characters. Like, <laughs> what happened to the other dude, man? The other dude just fell off a, a mountain. Well, I think <laughs> just... the, the problem is, I think his agent got it into his head because he was a jacked dude, like like he was a really muscular guy, that he was going to be this action star. So they started trying to get him all these movies that seemed like they were a late '90s Schwarzenegger film, but they were starring Taylor Lautner and. No one wanted to see them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, then call. he just kind of disappeared, I guess. And then Pattinson actually had talent and he got some good roles. Yeah, Pattinson, he, he came up to Canada, started doing stuff with Cronenberg. That, that was his mm -hmm. his solid move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Canada yeah. created Batman. <laughs> I respect that guy. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they checked the whole ground. There's a little safety box in there. Uh, that has the uh, the the hacker man's uh, I think it's like a logbook or something they call it. The base has like a lot of things in there that can decode with a certain uh, thingy, like a lay something code. They say it later. I, I have it written down here somewhere, but I forgot the exact mm -hmm. wording. But with this, they might be able to find the master file, and uh, also apparently the they figure out it's like oh the hacker has his name his namesake is some anarchist from some time ago so they figure it figure this his one and of course they're right and then there's also a boat key in it and uh and is surprised that she knows what what a boat key is and she's like well i live on a lake and it's like why is he so surprised that she knows what a boat key is it's not like some what? forbidden knowledge I <laughs> owner for five years how does she how does he not know she lives on a lake and is in boats I just, times, I just wouldn't yeah. be surprised if I've shown someone a key. It's like, oh, that's a boat key. We're like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Good, you knew that. I mean, it's not any Are forbidden. There... No There's a lot of boats in the world. But like Mark, <laughs> but like Mark said, he should know that. He's been oh, spying on her for years. That's true. That's obviously also true. I just find Fucking, it weird. How do you? 
Yeah. These are just such basic things in writing. Like, this is your premise. Like, you have to stick to it. You can't have it be retarded scene after scene. Like, it's just so stupid. <clears throat> I'm going to say it again. Beard Man wouldn't have fucked it up. Like, you should have stayed with the fucking... Like, should have yeah. stayed with the hobo. <laughs> hobo spy. Woo! Yeah, man. Would have been funny if she would have said like, something and, and said, like, oh, oh, do you know what a boat key is like? Well, I can predict what's happening next, so this is a boat key. Like, they didn't even play it into this for, like, for, for, for the lulls or anything didn't use their premise at all they just think the twist like by a twist being a tw a twist being a twist is enough like they don't care about the building blocks like it's, it's, it drives me nuts like um for example recently the fall of the house of usher mm -hmm. that show yeah. is so fantastic but it's it's yeah, like it built in it's it, the, the ending and the the mystery at the end reveal it's so satisfying because of all the components that yeah. led up to it you can't just skip to the ending and say oh that's a cool twist that's what i felt like with this there's no yeah. they didn't earn anything it's just like I have an idea of what should happen by the time you get to the ending of it, but still the payoff is so impressive because of all the ways you've constructed it. Like the Fall not to spoil house. anything, but the bell, Jesus Christ, that blew my mind. The ding 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 ding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Oh my god. <laughs> the um, but I was saying that that Fall of the House of Usher is an interesting example because they play with the idea of dramatic irony and like knowing the outcome of the story as you're mm -hmm. learning the story like they, mm -hmm. they flat out begin the it's not a spoiler to say the show one of the first scenes in the show yep. is them saying hey every single character in this show except for these three people yep. are dead <laughs> and, and I, like, I love okay. when they wait 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 sorry, sorry one second my mic died pause one second okay uh, wait, 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 I'm confused. Anyway, so what, I, what I was saying is that they reveal that all of the members of the family, the House of Usher, the family of the Usher family are dead. And they're like, yeah, now we're, I'm going to tell you how they happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that, they're like, yeah, here's the outcome. of Here's the ending. Now we're going to tell you the story. And even though you know the ending, you're going to want to hear the story. Exactly. The mm -hmm. confidence to be able to show you everything at the beginning, but then give you so many details and substance in between where like you don't even know what's going to really end. Like, like. But, uh, the I don't want to spoil it, but what happens to a particular uh, character at the end that makes everybody sad? Like you're you're not really gonna piece that together just from seeing that opening scene. But when you look back, it's like oh, all the components were there. This one, it's like you look back at the component, it's like are you guys fucking retarded? <laughs> like what the fuck? Like are you fucking? Crazy? All you had to do was make this guy like be aware of what she is, and he's just stupid. Every I, the two things you guys pointed out, I didn't even notice that because especially with the payoffs, but like. How could you be this dumb? Like when you're writing a story with this much money, I'm just I'm just blown away again yeah. and again and again. But yeah, they uh. found found this thing. That's their next lead. But obviously the division is on the way, and there's uh, one car that arrived with four with four dudes uh, for now. And they're like, oh, I guess I'm gonna hide under the floorboards. And they're basically fine. They're like, oh, they're not here anymore. And then now we know why the cat is here. The cat goes meow. And the guy up uh, on top is like, that's weird. And instead of waiting a little bit, like Aiden is like, oh, I hate that cat. And he jumps out of the floorboards and just starts killing all, all four of them. Um, <laughs> and it's like, that's why the cat is here, to get them in trouble. They should have, I, I don't know, I feel like they should have been fine. <laughs> so I, I just looked up the writer. He's not done a whole lot else. It looks like he's he's made this movie and like one of the Ice Age movies and then okay, nothing else. That. Oh, and uh, he I wrote the that. he wrote the story for Wonder Woman, not the script though. Yeah, mm. the first Wonder Woman, I guess. And then we get another action scene where he turns into Argyle again and looks at Ellie and is like, "Oh, look how cool I am! I'm Argyle from your book." Uh, it's four dudes, uh, and it's it's like the whole out of sight out of mind kind of action scene because three are in the room and there's one more guy who the last time we see him is just standing at the entrance so all he has to do is turn around and start shooting the fucker but he's only fighting the three well he's not fighting four he jumps out of the floorboard shoots the first one in the head and then scuffles with the other one uh and the fourth one for some reason is outside first and not in the doorway anymore we didn't see him move or anything i just have to assume <laughs> he went outside and then took 15 seconds to turn around the corner and start helping his friends or his colleagues or whatever uh should have been really easy for him but uh no we're not doing that uh he wasn't they in just the, put him on a pause he wasn't in frame so he doesn't get to move it's frustrating yeah 
uh uh then there's like a joke the one the last guy he's fighting he throws a flashbang towards uh, ellie and she's like oh shit throws it back at aiden who's still over there uh he it's weird like he german suplexes the guy and he's like ah my bag and then he gets flashbanged gets yeeted across the room turns into argyle again for a minute lands on a chair and is like oh that sucked He's like, sorry, ah, oh, no problem, no, it's all right. Actually, that fixed my back problems that I just oh, hilarious. got. And then he gets up. He's not even flashbanged. <laughs> He's not even blinded. I'm so confused. Boy, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no. <sighs> That's not I, like yeah, Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark I, I want to ask you particularly, like, the, the things like that just drive you nuts. Like, I'm assuming you yeah, have some experience with flashbangs. <laughs> well, it, like, okay, so the timing on most most hand grenades is like four seconds, and it's to the point that like they they train us from like the early days of basic training when we start learning about fragmentation grenades and things like that they will tell you hey you've probably seen a lot of movies where a grenade falls on the ground and someone picks it up and throws it back never try that <laughs> just, just don't try that ever because you will not have enough time to pick it up Hold, throw your arm back and then chuck it forward to get enough distance exactly. that it will actually still mm. not kill you. So, yeah, when that stuff happens in movies, it, it really always bothers me because I'm just like, <laughs> look, the only thing that you could possibly do if you see a hand grenade flying at you is you need to see it in the air. Immediately quickly, deflect it. Yeah, you'd have to hit it with your rifle or something. Like you'd instantly, have to knock it away yeah, it, like a baseball bat. There would be no time for it to land. You grab it and then throw it back. It would, yeah. it would literally yeah, have to be an immediate rejection, like a redirecting block, the momentum. Know? But honestly, your better bet is when you see it flying in, start running and find some cover. Like, <laughs> Agreed. I'm not kidding. Like that. Like really, that's what you should do. Yeah. All I'm saying is that basic equipment should have a tennis racket so you can just bounce it back immediately. Should be a part of the uniform. Yeah, but it's like you have a technique where you throw your right elbow out and because there's a tennis racket at the end of the buttstock of the rifle, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, like can, you imagine, can you imagine oh, your boy right, saved your life right. because he's fucking sick at ping pong? <laughs> like just, like, just <laughs> completely just bang! That one time Gary saved the whole platoon. I'm, I'm bringing this idea to the Canadian Army on Monday. Hold on a second. I'm <laughs> Honey, I'm I'm doing yeah, my funny. show. Uh, that's funny. Good stuff. Yeah, this, this movie's pretty shit, Metal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that that it is. Um, oh my god, man. Yeah, but, and I, I just for me, um, I logistics and immersion and uh, those things are like religion to me when it comes to movies. Like for example, No Country for Old Men. Yeah, I, I need to rewatch just, that. I haven't seen it in ages. Dude, to finally, I've been waiting like over for, for years to finally have a proper discussion about the ending of that mm. movie. Like the closest thing I ever had was like, I think me and Mahler talked about it for like two, three minutes on one of the EFAPs. Like, uh, okay. I don't even remember which one at this point. But like, I, I think it's it's one of my, I think it's my, I think it's one of the best thrillers ever. It's one of my favorite movies. It re, I've seen it like at least 10, 15 times at this point over the years. And it the fact that it can keep that tension every single time just amazes me. Like and yeah. just the rewatch last night, if it was felt like I was watching it for the first time, even though I've seen it a million times. And comparing that to this, where it's like, I never want to see this movie ever again. Oh yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> there's never gonna be a reason. There's it's nothing. always bad when you have a have a movie with like lots of twists, and you rewatch and just want to like, oh, just get get on with it. Like that yep. was my feeling yep. rewatching it and taking notes, and I was like, God damn, this mm -hmm. is so lame and boring. Just fucking skip. But I can't yep. because I need to take notes. I wish to skip to this <laughs> part. <laughs> you gotta you gotta do the work. It's but like yeah. this is pretty rough, man. Um oh, cat jump. But yeah, cat these jump. these are these are Dunzo, but there's more common because apparently they always come in waves. At least that's what Aiden tells us. And uh here's the thing that uh, that Mark uh, got a, a giggle out of, uh with the twist and twist and uh kick, uh crushed the head. <laughs> uh, it, like, it wasn't so much the technique it was just the concept that he's like look I'm gonna need you to just quickly stomp their heads yeah, yeah. to make sure is they're it, out yeah. the <laughs> thing is I don't even think like his delivery is bad or anything I just didn't find it funny I don't know it's just like uh. I don't even know I guess, I guess I, the scenario is kind of funny though because you can imagine this like novelist who at least thinks she's never had any experience with anything yeah. like this that's why I was saying 
she's seen a lot of people die so she under, she should understand how serious the situation mm -hmm. is and he's like look i'm not really telling you I, i'm not telling you to like, grab a gun and start fighting with me just just make sure they're down once i've shot them yeah. because not having a guy come up behind me will really help me out a lot i'm and looking at it like ex uh it's all about the execution like concept i can give points to but like i feel like edgar wright would have made that hilarious whoever oh, made this yeah. did oh, definitely. you know what i mean mm. It's, it's it's one of those things concepts for sure but the execution yeah. with those two i just didn't d believe the chemistry with these two and as soon as he shaved his beard the chemistry was gone like i was kind of joking about it but it's true so these two like they just didn't have the dynamic for those jokes to, to land mm. for me but yeah uh so yeah he and picks the up the cat down the cgi oh god yeah he picks up one of the flashbangs but none of the other weapons uh i don't know maybe they're all empty <laughs> i don't know no <laughs> No, I, he should just pick up weapons. They they have like full gear. They definitely have extra ammunition with them. I just don't believe that. It would have helped them so much. Uh, it's so it's so it's so annoying. Um, I hate that shit. It's just metal. You 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 watched my Lorraine breakdown, then you saw that I specifically pointed yeah. out that she went to go pick up her fucking weapon, look for new ones, take whatever she can. Love Even it. the bad guy tried to pick up his ammo. I was like fucking having a fucking seizure when i saw that it's so, I was just like no fucking way yeah, the details good. the details yeah because it's the same with the, with the one fight what? scene in in the killer when he fights the like one of the the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> big... i haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it yet oh no that's, that's just one big fight where also oh. they they the one guy goes they both try to go for the weapon again when it gets uh. run around and it's they try to use. Isn't it? They just try to use things around the room to just get an advantage. It's just that yeah. it's a really dirty fight. It's not clean or anything. It's just like fights are it's a fight. dirty. <laughs> it fights are not fight. clean. It drives me fucking nuts. This idea, people's idea of fights are fucking disgusting. Like people, yeah. you get primitive. Most people don't know how to fight. But ninety nine percent of the people don't know how to fucking fight. So yeah. fights are gonna get dirty instantly. And we like seeing that portrayed on screen. And like the fact that people don't make that effort when like how fucking easy it is to get rewatchability from a proper action scene it drives me nuts i, I could rewatch that first john wick just for the club scene over and first over john and wick... over and over again hey i give john wick a lot of shit but i i still love the first one i love it first one is really good i really really I... like that movie the first club scene the red uh with what's the red the red What's the, what's the red? I can remember the red name. Is it? I, I don't remember the uh, the name of Wh the whatever club. the club, the yeah. club in John Wick One. You know the one yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, I yeah. consider so, that I masterpiece know. in terms of um the diegetic soundtrack, the way they the, the, the way they built it up, uh, um the, the quick exposition they did with John, and just how mm -hmm. especially the henchmen, the respect that they had for John, like you know like how serious they were looking out yeah. for him, even though Theon was just part. There's there's so many elements that make it work other than just the fucking gunplay, you know? Absolutely. And like, I, come on, man. I get frustrated instantly when I see shit like this and like Echo, where it's like, you just don't give a fuck. Because like good action you know? scenes, I just randomly go back to and watch them. Like I find myself <laughs> randomly things like, oh, I want to see that one fight from Eep Man again, where he fights the 10 dudes at the same time mm -hmm. because they made it really I, believable. Or Detailed. Uh, the raid movies, prison, those fights, prison raid. Break. Yeah, I was about to say prison break from the raid too. I I will frequently rewatch or the stairwell kind of atrium fight in the protector with Tony Jaa. That's another. Raid. I oh, have a remember. Yeah. I have a memory of seeing Ong back in Ong theaters. Bak, yeah, that shit is. Tight. And I, I did a, swear to God, one of my first like, forges I I did. Uh, back in like like two two oh, years ago. Oh shit! Yeah. I cover that yeah. all by my lonesome. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> yeah, that's how it starts, man. Because I, I grew up with Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. And my dad yeah, showed me yeah. all those different types of things, right? So when Tony Jaa came around, I always, anytime there was a new guy who was trying to be like the Moon Arch Black guys, I was always like, yeah. okay, let's see what you got. And I will never forget an entire theater going, holy shit, during the first <laughs> front kick. Like the very first like strike where we actually see the speed and like his yeah. technique. Just the first push kick that he did to that guy. And he introduced me to Muay Thai before MMA, which I'm a massive MMA fan, but I will nice. give Tony Ja. He was my introduction to Muay Thai. And like out there's twice in my entire life yeah, that I the, like the genuinely they... wanted um Oh, the way they do these fight scenes as well, because it's like all, all the people they have like they have like uh, pads on their on their torsos and everything. Like they they actually yep. kick the shit out of each they other. They commit. They're actual <laughs> martial artists, so they know that they want to commit because they want it to be realistic. They care about the project. And yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say there's only two times in my life where I like genuinely went out like someone come at me like I'm looking for a fight almost. <laughs> I'm gonna it was throw him up right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was Mortal Mortal Kombat Annihilation when I was a kid. I went and like chopped up my karate thing to look like Gu Kang, and I'm like. 
like went outside. I'm like, someone, <laughs> someone say something. Someone talk oh, some shit today. I'm ready that, to fucking oh God, an, wheel kick an somebody. Annihilation <laughs> infuriated me when I was a kid. I hated that movie so much. It's so Actually, trash, but I loved I got, it when I watched I it at in, the age. I, well, that's all back was the in, other one. <laughs> I got in a huge argument with my buddy Jono because he'd be like, no, 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 you don't get it. Mortal Kombat Annihilation is better because it has every character. I'm like, Jono, that, that doesn't means make it better. nothing, man. That doesn't make it better. <laughs> Uh, it's fucking trash but it was fun it's probably the first autistic media argument i ever had <laughs> that's, where, that, that's where it starts though about annihilation. <laughs> oh man oh shit go ahead uh but yeah the the next scene is not even an action scene uh it's just a, a, an extended joke basically because he tells her it's like oh you just need to do like a like a twist and just step on the head and then just break it or whatever uh and then it's like okay he picks up his one silenced weapon, none of the other ones, because why would you? It's only like 12 people you could shoot immediately because you all flashbang them at once. And he shoots the first one, he's on the ground, and he's like, oh, I can do the, the thing. And it's like basically a shot on her trying to do the thing, but she can't. And then we pan back up and it's like, hey, what's up? You had like the one job, why didn't you do it? It's like, oh, it doesn't really seem necessary. And then he tries to shoot them and he does the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I I appreciated that aspect of it too. It's like, yeah, well, you know, the, you almost got us killed by not stomping on the head. Just yeah. so you know, <laughs> uh, we're in a serious situation here. But that's 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 basically the scene here. They make their way to the rooftop uh, because she's panicking. It's like, let's go here. And it's like, okay. He follows, and then there's like a thing where they can uh, lock up the door, like a like a steel or metal bar or whatever it was. Um, and he says like, "Oh, that's convenient," which like, "Oh, are they actually gonna do something?" It's like she she predicted that with her writing. It's like, no, he just says that and then never brought up again. Like it was right there. You could have just brought up your thing. They don't that you use were doing. their opportunities. They lampshade the stupidity of it rather than actually using their premise with her. Like she could have had so many of these things thought out. Like just it didn't do anything with all these ideas. That's why it's hard for me to give credit for almost any of the things. There's, there's <laughs> yeah. concepts here. We didn't do anything. It's it's first draft, first draft, first draft, first draft. Every single idea, idea is just like you know half baked. So oh yeah. oh yeah, I forgot I forgot to mention this because I was researching it a minute ago. You guys uh, want to know who wrote the book that this movie is based on? Oh, this is based on a book. No, who? who wrote uh, yeah, it? I know that. <laughs> um. Uh, so the author's name is Ellie Conway. Uh, oh. What the. F- Okay, <laughs> like I'm not kidding. Um, I I looked that up and I mean I guess they just the took or... I guess they just took that name and just went with it. I mean fair yeah, enough. Yeah, so I guess. it's uh, I just I just now realized that the man that's it's a major self insert there. Eh? Oh yeah. okay, I did I wasn't aware that's there was like bit. an actual book that exists. Not, yeah, neither I was no I. So I. I was just looking up things about the writers. And oh stuff. wait, hang on. Originally published January fourth, twenty twenty four. So it's probably just. Oh, the okay. Story. Oh, so they, okay, they're doing like a novelization. It, well, the, but it said it was the basis for the 2024 film. That's strange. Okay, I got to look up more stuff. Matthew then. Vaughn further added that Argyle is a real book written by Ellie Conway. Taylor Swift may not have written the novel, but one character in the Matthew Vaughn f- film was inspired by the singer. Wait, wait, why did that come up? Taylor, oh. Wait, hold on. Taylor Swift is Ellie Conway? Oh, God. I, don't even, like, no, no. I wish I didn't look any of that up. Taylor Swift may not have written. <laughs> now no, I'm confused. Now no, I just have more questions. Okay, because I was really like, oh my god, this is based on a book that is essentially written by Bryce Dallas Howard's character. Like, wait, wow. the film is based on a book written by a supposedly real life author named Ellie Conway. Are they just fucking around for ad uh, as ads? I I don't know. I, I I guess I brought that to the table without fact checking it well enough. But it did it did kind of blow me away when <laughs> it's I saw a it. fake like, book oh. Matthew Vaughn is trying to pretend it's real. Yeah, that's what that's the feeling I'm getting. Well, look how I much mean, they yeah, lied that, in the trailer. You can't put anything past these people. <laughs> Isn't it, like, they did that with didn't they do that with Quantum Mania too? Like they put out um Well, that was, yeah, was, was, name, that, was like, after, that was after that was after the movie though. I'm, I think. No, what, 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 what I mean is they, it's they the biography of Ant Man. I think they they actually made that a real book. I'm saying that movie studios do like novel tie-ins yeah, yeah, like yeah. that because they're like, okay, well, if we sell blank amount of movie tickets, how hard is it for us to just put this in novel form and sell it and pr- do a little kind of arg thing, like uh, augmented reality game where it's like, oh, maybe Ellie's real. Who knows? 
but I, I don't know. But if it is, if she is an actual person, that's pretty funny. I think there's cool opportunities for side stories with media. Like, I never played the game, but I heard uh, Alien Isolation takes place with uh, Amanda Ripley, like Ripley's daughter. And I feel like there's stories that could be told there with her, like in between, as long as it's like fits with the continuity. But a lot of other places, a lot of, a lot of things don't do that. Like, anime does filler and waste your fucking time. And a lot of other places, um, movies and things, like, just don't put a lot of work into their spinoffs or their side stories and those type of there's things a, like star wars uses their books just to fill in like fucking plot holes and shit hmm. That's I, I find that in vogue right now is um animes that don't have any filler and do six episode arcs twice a year like so it's 12 episode seasons as opposed to like 25 or something like that and then they they cut out the filler and just uh, adapt the man- a manga more directly that's and, why uh, I, um, with me with anime, I wouldn't want to watch one that's ongoing. I want to f- have it finished, good recommendation, and be able to cut out all the filler and know the yeah. version that I'm getting is the best version. Like, it's just, it's so I, difficult, man. Episode I, by I episode you, with all the, yeah. I think you might enjoy Chainsaw Man, though. Chainsaw Man's first season finished, and that's that's a pretty wild story. <laughs> that I think I think both of you would get a kick out of it, actually. It's uh, really gory, really fucked up, and very funny. Can I ask you just real quick before we get back to this? Sure. I got four recommendations yesterday on the podcast, just randomly. If you've seen any okay. of them, um, the Vinland Saga. Yeah, uh, that's still great. haven't seen it, but I've been recommended that a million times. I still need to. Yeah, Alright, erased. It's... Never seen it. The what? Uh, erased. Erased. No. The standoff at the Sparrow. Never heard nope. of it. And three ten to Yuma. Yeah, yeah, great movie. I heard that name. With, uh, I don't think I've seen Christian that. Christian it's, it's, it's a Western with Christian Bale. That's all I know. And oh, it's yeah, one of those things where um, is good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, you know, random question too. What's your best favorite Christian Bale performance? Oh, damn. Oh. He's very good, like in general. Yeah. <laughs> one of my top, he's one of my favorite actors. Because. Uh, yeah, it might be Batman Begins, but I know that he's had better performances, but that's probably the one that I enjoyed the most because I, I thought his take on Bruce Wayne was really good. I think that's his best performance out of the three movies. Um, his, his his Bruce Wayne was the best in the first one. Like, I really yeah, like I can tell you which one it I wasn't. Would, I wouldn't put that. As, I wouldn't put that. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't put that as his best performance, but I Batman Begins is one of my favorite superhero movies. I think it's one of the, the most Big underrated. Short. He was pretty damn good in the Big Short. I mean, um, he's ob- I mean, he's obviously you, really Metal? good at American Psycho. Everyone oh, goes yeah. to that oh, one. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. No, that, that would probably be the most obvious one. <laughs> um, the one that nobody seems to know about is Harsh Times. I think that's by far his best performance. Never oh, even heard the, of that. Um, and, a, so- Anton, a soldier Anton with... Fuqua movie? I think Harsh so, yeah. He plays Times. a soldier with PTS, uh, uh, PTSD and, like, just he's really fucked. A former gangbanger who's also a former soldier with PTSD, and he's, like, really fucked up. He Dang. was, like, the most fucked up guy in the gang, but then he went on to be, like, you know, straighten himself out and become in the military, but he's still, like, insane. Okay. And the story is, like, it's, it's like Training Day. It's from the same guys who made Training Day, I think, so it's yeah, kind of like the same Anton format. Yeah, Fuqua. Fuqua him, is the director of Training yeah, Day. Yeah, a lot of it is him and, like, the boy in the car, like, trying to get their shit together, trying to, like, get the send out resumes and whatnot. And it's, like, character study, but so fucking phenomenally acted there's this one scene of him like road rage it's the best road rage scene in any movie like challenge me like show me one that's better than christian bill like just drinking day drinking and like smash <laughs> like gets uh i don't even want to spoil it it's christian bale at his baileyest like he's just fucking <laughs> 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 nice. yeah well maybe i'll check that out it sounds pretty good um where were we i think they were winning or something uh Oh, they're on top of the, they're on the rooftop right now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, there's a boat down there. We got the boat key. So we could, he's, there's probably like a ladder here somewhere. That's his way out. And then it's like, oh, we got to jump. He's really excited for the, for jumping down. She's like, no, there's no way. It's like, ah, oh, it's got to be fun. There's a crash mat down there, whatever. And it's like, I don't know. Uh, this is your fault, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, do you trust your cat? And he just grabs the cat out of the backpack and just... <laughs> lets it fall down onto what? the thing <laughs> it's like oh my god it worked it's like jesus that's not gonna help you getting any trust with her <laughs> that's what i'm saying like what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> just take the girl's cat and throw it off a fucking building like yeah. that is the last thing you do to get a girl's trust like it's just a stupid scene like even for a joke for me and there's just it's none of it worked for me that no. scene was just like come on 
Uh, but yeah, they do a trust fall onto the mat, get in the boat, and uh, are here and go to a hotel. And Rita is very angry that they got away again. Um, and I think he's readying his jet to go somewhere himself or whatever. Um, doing the whole uh, big bad, he's like, oh, if you want to do something, then you gotta do it yourself. Uh, well, in a hotel, uh, she's in in a sh he's just out of the shower, looks at the mirror, and he she's basically talking to uh, Argyle in the reflection, and it's like you're not real, you're just a coping mechanism for all the stress. And then the Argyle man says, "Oh, the, well, you're the author. I guess I'm gonna leave then." And then he's gone, and there's another ten seconds of Henry Cavill for you. Um, we should have a cavil clock, like really. I a think cavil clock. <laughs> I should have timed. I should have timed it actually, but I, I, it. I, uh, I was running out of time, ironically. Oh, uh, she leaves. It's like, well, shower is ready, and it's like, oh, okay, I can take a hint. And then uh, the cat gets us, her in trouble again, or it facilitates drama, because the cat is like opening up the door a little bit. She's like, no, leave him alone. And all that's she how that. Oh my god! I just saw this part before we came on. I'm getting we're getting closer to where we are. I did not realize the cat is what fucking did that. Oh yeah, I, I, th I goes... thought it was lame enough that she heard him, but it's even stupider now that it was a cat. Yeah, because she like, wasn't oh even near. She she was just hanging out. It's like, oh no, Alfie, leave him alone. And then all she hears is, uh, she needs a bullet in their head. I will bring her to you, and then we'll end it. And it was, and <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Aiden is evil. What? And even the server was like, no, he isn't. It's just a stupid misunderstanding that was facilitated by the cat because she only heard like half of the conversation, if anything. So she grabs the cat and then she walks out. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> in London. She's just around you, in, 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 Lon in London. You would think, though, being a spy and understanding how subterfuges and information can be understood and misunderstood in ways that can compromise a mission, you might have wanted to not use the words, Ellie Conway needs a bullet in her head. <laughs> or at least one, make I'm sure. Bring it to you, and then we're going to end this. Yeah, Do or at least make mark? sure the damn door is properly closed. Do I, I need to know, fucking I don't, I don't say it? I don't know how soundproof this say door it. is. Like, I, I say wouldn't it. say that anyway. The beard man wouldn't have <laughs> fucked that up, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Understand me. They turned him into a fucking idiot. You guys have yeah. confirmed the pattern. It started as a joke, but I'm, I'm baffled by how dumb this guy... Like, the, why would you say that? You just you just don't do that. He would know better than that. He yeah. would know better than that, for sure. Even this stupid yeah, that, version that of part, That part really bothered me. Yeah. I, 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 I got upset there. I was like, oh my god, don't be so stupid. Come on. But yeah, she... uh. Uh, well, she's just about in London now. Goes to a telephone and calls her mommy in Chicago, mind you. Uh, so yeah, scared. So like, hey, what are you doing? For some reason, she calls the neighbor, which I didn't understand why that was. I didn't didn't understand why that was a thing. Like she called the neighbor for a collect and call and collect, and the neighbor brought the phone over. And it's like, well, I didn't wanted your one of the sugar bag, so you get lost. So the mother says to him, "I don't it's something I'm missing. I don't know why she called the neighbor and not the parents directly." Yeah, I like that didn't make any sense to me at all. Are they <laughs> like, trying to imply something? It's like they didn't give out their their own number because of something because they're evil. I don't know. <laughs> But, like, I mean, also, why would she have the neighbor's number memorized? I don't know. I was really yeah, confused yeah, by that. Over her own mother's. It kind of made no sense at all. There's nothing to fill in on that? That's so strange. No, that's that's just the scene. And then dance. We never see yeah, that neighbor again. That's just that's just how it works <laughs> for some reason. They just, they just wanted that guy to have a cameo. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. It wasn't even a cameo. <laughs> it's the back of his head. Like, there's, there's nothing, like, a cameo would make sense if you could see his face, but it, this is just, oh, like... Oh, you see his face. It's not even a plot yeah, hole, it's just weird. For, like, you? 10 I seconds, know. yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking at the scene right now. I don't think you see it at all. You really? see the back of his head, yeah. Back of his head, back of his head, back of his head, back of his head. I'm pretty sure I've seen him Oh, wait, face. You, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, you're right. You see his face for, like... <laughs> 10 seconds, you're exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cameo I mean, doesn't, might be doesn't, I mean, Still, it's just a weird way to make it happen. Like, why would he call, she call the neighbor? It's just another weird oh, thing okay. in this movie. It's just whatever. I see. It's six, seven shots, and three of them are of his face, the other of his, yeah. uh, the other one. Okay, I got it. Uh, 
So, like, so yeah, she, she's basically like, yeah, I can't really talk on, on an unsafe line. Hey, do you remember where we uh, got this room? Do the same one as before, and then we meet up there. So, and they, they're making their way from Chicago to London uh, to meet her there. A couple of things. Um, Ellie's just hanging out in London overnight because the, the, the fastest flight that I've seen, I checked, is eight hours if they would start like right away. <laughs> so she just hangs out on the streets She's just chilling. Having, to, having to just chilling on the streets with no jacket no no food no anything and uh waits for them which also makes me wonder you know you can book rooms remotely right why just don't just tell them call the place and get the room and i'm gonna wait there for you she seems like a very resourceful person in the beginning, and then they turn into an idiot when they need her to be like the damsel in distress, like for these scenes, which is just. Oh, well, would they let her check in without a credit card? This probably ways to make it work. She's fucking hot. Mm. She'd figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we also, her. We also know hot as fuck. She's charming. She would find her it, way into a room. We also know. Oh, that, we also know. <laughs> find find a nice lad. <laughs> Go to a bar, she'd find a fucking... Pl yeah, easily. So, yeah, there, there's ways to make it happen. I mean, just m make the room go. And it's like, hey, I'm waiting for these people. At least at least, just hang out in the lobby or something while it happens. But she just arrives at the time. Unless she's chilling in the lobby the whole time. But the, I, I don't know. It's weird. I feel like you could make this work that she has already, already has the room. Like, make the parents call. It's like, hey... Our daughter is in trouble over there. We're gonna book this room. She's gonna come over. Please let her in the room. Or yeah, yeah like easy that. fix right there. They would have the resources. You a picture for that. of her. Yeah, but I guess actually, if they, email, if they emailed a photo, that might be tracked by the agency as well. I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm trying I mean, to they are the thing. agency. Oh yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. It just that hurt my brain. Even like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, how do we even like? Yeah, These guys also the also well, I mean, I guess they don't also. want uh, they don't want Aiden and Alfie to find it though. But they find but, uh, they get found anyway. Look, it's not a well written movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumb. <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh jeez. And, and let, let me just highlight Hostman Lounge's uh, comment in the chat. Catherine O'Hara, she is like one of the worst mothers in all of fiction. If you put this with the Home Alone, like, leave, <laughs> like you know what I mean, like leaving oh, her yeah. child. <laughs> That's Kevin true. McAllister and now this like that. this bitch is a terrible mother because <laughs> I would <laughs> I was thinking how nice it is to see like hey she's aged well seeing the mom from Home Alone oh she's trying to kill her now great you're just a terrible mom <laughs> holy shit yeah, it's good to, good to see her getting work though yeah yeah that's what I mean it was nice to see her until that moment I'm like great that's what you do with that that's wow. funny I didn't think of that that's fantastic mm -hmm. that's funny uh, so yeah, after she's hanging out overnight, at least eight hours, probably more like ten, uh, with no money or credit cards, apparently, uh, as she told us, she's gonna uh, meet them in, in that room. She's like, oh, I'm thirsty, hungry, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, what happened? And that's like some was like, oh, so now you is it like a tax thing? You're experimenting with drugs? Like, they're still playing their role, basically. Uh but we pretty quickly learned, like, the dad comes in after the other ones. Like, oh, my God, it's Rita. The, her parents are evil, too. Or at least the dad is evil. Whoa. I, I went to I got, went back to Homecoming, of how they did this in Homecoming, the same twist. Mm -hmm. um, with Spider-Man Spider -Man and the Vulture, like, being the his girlfriend's dad. Oh, right, right, right. Like, just so much fucking better. From mm -hmm. Immediately that scene came to mind of, like, you can do this in better ways. This is where, just things like this is where, like, my scene comparisons get spawned from. Because, like, we've right. seen a million stories. Yeah. You can do it good. Look at this. What the fuck are you doing? Like, this was so lame of a reveal. And, like, the fact that, again, once again, with Brian Cranston, any wasted screen time with him frustrates me, like, extra. So, yeah. I think also the, the, um, not no way home homecoming twist i think that that it really made the use of the girl's ethnicity like serve the yeah. story 
because yes. like, yes. like, you really aren't expecting yes. Michael Keaton to be her dad, but then it's like, well, like that's how I you mean, do yeah, it. She does look like she's half black, so it's yeah, one sure. of the best <laughs> things you mark. I, you, I fucking love that you made that point. I've tried to make that point in so many different examples. Um, House of the Dragon utilized the fact yeah. that Coralis was black for the plot. Homecoming yeah. utilized the fact that his girlfriend was black for the plot. They didn't just shove it in like Reba and all this other shit and say, look, she's black. Oh, you don't like her? Fuck you. You're racist. I'm really Wakanda glad forever. I, I recently it... finally watched Hot D. That was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It Welcome aboard, me, It took me a while, but uh, I, I, I I've, got that. I've, I've done two positive reviews on my channel uh, nice. in terms of anything, because most of them, and they're the, the one first, but the second one was Godzilla minus one. Mm -hmm. The first was House of the Dragon. I was like, nice. I, I don't even care if this is successful. I don't give a fuck. Like it arguably slowed my progress down because people were asking for Rings of Power part four. And I was like, guys, like <laughs> I'm done. I, I've House of Dragons right here. I got to talk about Viserys, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> and like, and I, that move, that, vi that video bombed. But I don't give a fuck because I needed to praise that fucking show. I adore yeah. House of the Dragon. It's it, it it I call it I call it like they're like necromancers. They resurrected my love for something that I thought was dead forever after Game of Thrones. They made me care about a world again mm -hmm. that I thought I'd never care about. So like I'll, I'll always praise it for that. Viserys, that poor fucker, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Viserys yeah. is the goat, man. He's Hell like yeah. literally <laughs> in, in eight episodes. I would put him as one of the best character actors I've ever seen, like beginning to end in terms of that the performance the consequences all, all everything mm -hmm. involved it was that scene my my mom saw it for me and she's she's like oh my god this is such a you see and i'm like what's a me scene what are you talking about woman and then i <laughs> and then and then i watch it and i'm just like almost like tearing up like i'm at first i'm like yelling sarah's and then you just shut the fuck up and you kind of have to sit back and like appreciate what they've achieved with this moment yeah and then the damon thing made me almost like i'm like oh yeah okay you, you're throwing in the sibling part now too you're, you're getting me so yeah, everyone in the chat, watch Hot D. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Unfortunately, also <laughs> episode nine, but uh, we get through those. We don't talk about that. Oh nine. god! If, if if you guys ever want to do <laughs> legit, yeah, legit just a, a stream on just episode nine, like I'm down for that. Like if we lost two really cool characters, and I, like I said, I broke down this the show. It was mm -hmm. mostly positive. Episode nine was basically me going back to my critique style because that what the fuck happened there it was so funny because <laughs> I, I was i was i was on the binge i was watching the last four episodes i saw nine was like that was weird oh whatever i want to yeah. see the next episode now and then after i finished i went back to nine i was just reading online i was like what was ha what happened here please someone what explain to happened? me what was that <laughs> what happened yeah. uh, and, the, and, the, and the, the showrunners apparently too like they don't realize the mistake they made they're like oh people don't care about civilians in game of thrones it's like oh my god uh, you so we, we yeah. and we lost two characters well, technically three by the guy who, um, uh, fucking dude who died, uh, Bump Beesberry. Hmm. But, um, Cole, what a waste. <clears throat> like, yeah, we, we, one of these days, I'd have specifically episode nine I would love to discuss if anyone's interested. Yeah, because I, I was reading online, like, one. because they were doing such a good job. And then I, I've, uh, I've read that apparently in the books they had, like, days of uh, conversations yes. about who should be the uh the next uh, king yeah. and stuff it's, like, it's it's like, like oh wow it. that's way better instead of going like yep. yeah this was plotted all in the background you just never heard of it it's like what the fuck what are you I, doing um <laughs> apparently the writers uh, for the most like the, the writers that did most of it didn't do that episode is what i remember <laughs> that would explain like, it was, a bunch it was, it was written by <laughs> different people like the, the community <laughs> outreach writer <laughs> writer episode <laughs> yeah, the bench we're gonna, we're the gonna bench. let one of the rookies do, do one episode okay they got just someone from the bench for this one i don't i yeah but you shouldn't do that though like i just i feel like um there is no like bench writers for breaking bad you can do that for directors and get like a different flavor but i feel like the writer should still be the writer like no matter what also have full control or that's just the way i look at it but we should at least be more like oversight to be like hey wait hold on does this work like, like i does, think the best does this destroy any characters should be the first question every time you're over you're a showrunner yes. reading a script written by a new writer you're, you're making my point for me with ryan johnson because i think the fact that he has made some fantastic episodes of breaking bad but hmm. then he also made a movie so bad it turned me into a fucking film critic you know what i mean <laughs> it's, you know what i mean it's it's <laughs> it's like the fact that he can do both of those things i find really fascinating and the key is oversight that man has a good eye for directing, but keep him the fuck away from a pen or a keyboard. Just don't even like, he shouldn't even be allowed like yeah. within 50 meters of one, you know? But I also find it fascinating that his whole um, philosophy on like, oh, he wants 50% of the audience to hate his movies and the other 50% to like it. 
and he's responsible for um the, the the lowest and the highest rated of episodes of Breaking Bad. Isn't that fucking like so bizarre? That is bizarre. He act- yeah, he, he like he legit pulled it off. Like his philosophies. <laughs> Ryan is is he's so interesting. You know, d- 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 be- yeah. Uh, JJ is <laughs> hiding like in a cave or like on un- space somewhere or something. But um, Ryan definitely came out with still a fan base. I think he's a fucking moron, but. There's still people who respect his talents. I find it interesting yeah. that TLJ didn't sink him. Well, yeah. that's how it goes. And now here we all are. <laughs> yeah. Back to Henry. Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, fucking Hobo Man. Hobo Man. Oh, uh, excuse hey, me. Not Hobo, hobo. Man. Fucking lame, lame Spy Man. <laughs> um, oh, so, geez. yeah. Uh, she's chilling here. And it's like, oh, you go. We're going to need to. The, mo- the mother play- still plays a role. So here's the thing. These both are evil. We're going to learn this really quickly. They're like still playing their role. Ritter's like, oh, how are you doing? It's all good. It's like, oh, you need to go to the police or FBI, blah, 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 blah. And he, she, she explains to him, oh, this is Agent Guy. It's like, oh, what I've written is actually true. And they're looking for him. It's like, oh, this lockbook, do you have it here? And he's like, yeah, it's over there in the cat back. And he just goes over there and you can see uh, he uses his glasses to make like pictures of the lockbook pages. I guess that was like a bit of a Kingsman y thing. Yeah, but then the the, the 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 now still pretending mother is like, Well, listen to your daughter, blah, blah, blah. She's like, Let him do the thing. That's that's all the that's the information you need. Just wait for a yeah, minute. I, Let him do I all really the things. I didn't understand that one. Especially because like he's her boss, right? Like what? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they these two did not. Say, they should be way slicker than this. Yeah, like yeah. I know I know they're trying to to keep the the facade, but. They're getting the info they need to get the dumbass master file, so just chill out for a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the, uh, Aiden arrives, uh, and they quickly drop the facade. And it's like, those are not your real parents. And Richard is telling Aiden, like, if you kill him here, the vision will hunt him down, yada, yada, yada. And then the mother takes Ellie hostage. She's like, what the fuck? Pushes her away. Aiden shoots the mother. Uh, and they, uh, they're, they're off. So, now, I can point out the other things, uh, that I wanted. I realized I could have done that. You've seen that part already, but I don't know. I just skipped it. Um, so remember how they, he, 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 she, she was on the train and everything, and they're pretending, she's pretending, they are pretending those are her parents. Why? Yes. Why? Why have that? What? What was the plan if they actually grabbed her? Because the Carlos guy is working for the parents or the so-called parents. And from what the way we disc- we showed these guys, like, oh, they had like a pen with like tranquilizer in it or something, so they wanted to catch her. And then what? Why not just wait for her to get to you in your parents' house? Because you do have a real house where you live, apparently, where you already hung out. Just grab her from the train station. What, what, what's the what's the point? Because now you immediately establish yourself as the bad guys to her because you're trying to fucking catch her with tranquilizers by, uh, by. Putting something in her brain or something or in her, in her veins to to tranquilize her and get her somewhere, and now the agent you're trying to beat to get the master file is now immediately the good guy to her because he helps her to to not get stabbed by some random guy who's trying to capture her. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, or like even sending them at all was strange because especially because she. She calls her mom, and the mom's like, oh, you're on her way, and she seems surprised, but the, their subordinates are already there waiting for her. Yeah. Uh, so, so, like, exactly. she knew she was at the train station, I guess, but... So, the, the, the weird part is, the way I would have probably done it is, oh, they've been monitoring her, of course, because they need her. So, there's, like, guards around her that she doesn't really notice, like, undercover guards. But why are they? Have, why, wanna, why are they? Why do they want to tranquilize her? Because they come up to her, it's like, oh, can I have an autograph? And then just trying to stab her. They probably should have waited for Aiden to make the first, uh, the first action, and then the guards coming is like, oh wait, this guy is trying to be evil. We, we're here to protect you, you know, playing both sides. You know, keep her and the audience on on their toes to actually know. Oh, I don't know who the evil and the good guy is. 
But the way you do it, they immediately know, oh, these guys are bad because they stab it. It's trying they to stab They need talent her. for that, Metal. Huh? They would need talent for that. Oh, You're describing talent like an actual story. My bad. Remember how we rewrote the whole movie, like, accidentally <laughs> within the first five minutes? You remember that part? Yeah, if you could do that, like, on accident, just casually, then that's how you know it's fucking, like, just, yeah. It's, because it's, it's not frustrating. Even the, because fascinating it's not, when you see these. Because it's not going to switch around. They are the evil guys. That's pretty clear mm -hmm. throughout the movie. So yeah. I, I, I don't know why. It, it's like a really weird way to put it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to this whole thing a little bit later with a little bit more context even. But that's like one of these things like they could have had it so easy uh, to keep everybody on their toes. But for some reason, they did it that way. Like I started shooting at them in the train as well. Like, oh, of course, he's not going to come with you. <sighs> Oh yeah, they they run outside because for some reason there's also no guards in the hotel with the parents, even though they're the head of the division, basically. Yes, it's so stupid. How are they not like? How can they let them slip with all this prep and all the because how Aiden, much information they had? Because apparently Aiden uh, just runs into the hotel, into the room with the gun, and just takes them host takes Rita hostage. Just like oh, you're gonna come with me, and they run out and drive off. Because they make all points like Ellie's like, oh no, my cat. And then Aiden, to be fair, is like, I mean, you can go get that cat, but it's like a million enemies on the way. We're gonna get the fuck out of here. And thank fuck, she's not stupid. That stupid to actually go back. She actually gets in the car and they drive off. I have to give them props for that. She, they didn't make her that stupid. But don't worry, the cat is gonna be back later. Uh <laughs> oh, I actually thought that, that that scene was actually the best use of the cat. Yeah, I, I yeah. actually, you yeah. know what? I'll give Good you that because I did feel that. I'm like, man, like I was just thinking, like, man, I'd be, I'd be fucking freaking out right now. Like, I'm never gonna see my cat again because of some fuck up. Like, yo, and I'm thinking, like, I hope this guy goes back and gets her cat, and like, he, there's a payoff for them. I was more invested with this girl getting her cat back than almost anything <laughs> else. You're so, you're so right because <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's the Scottish Fold. It's the same breed as mine. It's a rare breed, so I'm kind of slightly attached to this cat <laughs> yeah. in terms of that. And I, I, I love cats, but um. The idea of someone losing their pet is really, really, really sad. Like I've yeah. always had yeah. so that. But I mean, at the same time, as much as like oh, I've got, I've got two dogs on top of me right now. I'm, I'm sitting and, on a couch though. And you would fucking, time. you would march right back to go fucking find him. Well, if someone no, left but, him, right? uh, see, no, but the thing is though, when you're dealing with a a situation where there are people with guns coming to kill you. He was right when he said, "Look, do you want to go die with your cat, or do you want to get the hell out of here?" Oh yeah, yeah, no, he's not. He was yeah. he was wrong about that. Just, <laughs> like, I mean, in he, isolation, he, he, it sucks losing your pet, but like you're not trying oh, to get yeah. shot. I hear you. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing. I'd be I'd be trying to think of like, is there anything I can do? Can I send the hotel to go get them? Is there yeah, is there yeah, any chance yeah. the cat is oh, like even to just say, hey, um, I, I I like I had to leave for a family emergency or something like that. My cat is still in the room. Can you please like? bring them to this mm -hmm. veterinary that's why i was saying i was hoping like there's like, some payoff where he goes back and gets the cat or something of some kind but i am assuming it's going to be stupider and not wholesome so that's that's kind of my guess yes um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's no guards they apparently they they have to arrive and it's they're far enough away that they can just get away through the hotel uh they should be just the next in the next room or something but i digress what do i know um, about security. Uh, so yeah, they're making their way to France now, I think it was. Yes. Because they, they go and drive, and, uh, well, basically her life just crumbled, Aiden and uh, Aiden oh. asks if she's nope. okay. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Don't forget the cavil, the cavil flashes. Oh, yeah. The, she, the, she, in the side view. She looks in, this, in the side mirror, and... Uh, uh, it's Argyle again telling her, it's like, it's gonna be fine. Uh, and then she falls asleep. Um, I, I I genuinely feel like people are gonna forget this movie, but they're not gonna let go of the Henry part. They're gonna remember this stupid role. Like, I, 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 some, I, I saw someone's headline. I didn't even, like, see what it was about. I'm assuming, though, I feel like this damaged any potential, like, Bond role for him in the future. Mm -hmm. Who wants to see him play Bond when you have this, like, flavor in your mouth of him and Argyle and this stupid haircut? It's kind of just, like... It's, this was a mistake. It was just a mistake. That's all I can yeah. say. I think uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare might uh, might might shift that opinion though, because he seems like he's ultra badass in that one, the new Guy Ritchie movie. Oh yeah, he's, that, he, that he's wearing kind of my facial hair. Damn it, who got my beard battered with the handlebar <laughs> mustache? 
And of course, he looks <laughs> way better than I do. <laughs> Best God damn it. Best Everyone's going to see that movie and be like, oh, you're doing the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare thing. Like, no, yeah, I had it first, you fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> I shaved, I oh, shaved my, my mu- beard into a mustache for, to dress up like Mario for my niece and nephew. And then I've, I've been growing the beard in ever since with the quaff mustache. And now oh, it's going to be a thing. Yeah, well, well, did it before. It was cool. Uh, But yeah, she's sad. And Aiden asks, like, are you okay? Or she, she isn't. And she makes it clear how dumb that question was. Uh. Which I can kind of appreciate. It's like, yeah, of course I'm not okay. <laughs> I think my parents just got shot by you, uh, and uh, yeah. none of this is real. And it's like, well, you can at least trust me, and you should sleep. And then he, she talks to her Argyle character again and falls asleep. And when she wakes up, they made a overnight trip to France, which and- it's not out of the out of the uh, out of question. Uh, it's not that big of a drive. It's like ten hours or whatever through the tunnel, I think. Um, but that's yeah. That they go to visit Samuel L. Jackson, who was dun dun dun, 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 dun the dun, one who. who and that's where I broke. Ex- that's where I slammed the space bar and just hey, this, got out of there. This role had to be his easiest paycheck ever. Oh, no, yeah. the Marvels, the Marvels, pet cats, and be stupid. Oh, right. He, he was watching a Lakers game for most of this. For <laughs> <laughs> real. <laughs> Like he's just sitting down watching a Lakers game and waiting for a download to finish for the whole third act. He's phoned it in, man. He's officially phoned it. He doesn't give a fuck. He just shows up, says, I'm Samuel Jackson, plays a different version of Sammy, and it just takes the paycheck. It's so frustrating to watch. But he talks about grapes. I I think Matthew Vaughn just wanted to throw him him an easy role that he could get a good paycheck with and just relax (laughs) because he was the villain in the first Kingsman. So this is the same universe. He's already played a character, man. A hundred percent watch Shaft so you can see Samuel Jackson giving a fuck because it'll be really refreshing. Christian Bale is fantastic in that movie. That's Jeffrey Wright's best performance, in my opinion. Uh, People's Hernandez. The gangster that he plays in Shaft, that's his number one best performance. He's so phenomenal in that. He's like one of the most underrated <clears throat> gangster characters that people don't seem to mention for some reason. Do you, do you remember him, uh, Mark? Yeah, I didn't remember yeah. that he was in that movie. But Yeah, like, he I plays know, people. Jeffrey Wright, obviously. Yeah, oh, he, right play, he, he plays people. Uh, and the okay, accent that he puts on is like you would never imagine. It's, it's phenomenal. I, I He's, he, is the, he is the best. And then Samuel Jackson and his... Pro- Fuck, actually, I can't even think. Him, Bale, and Jackson are all phenomenal. And even Busta Rhymes for a rapper uh, turned actor in mm. that. He did a really good job. I'll um, never forget his Halloween movie. That was so he- funny. It ends with Busta <laughs> Rhymes roundhouse kicking Michael Myers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't even not fuck it. Yeah, I might watch it just to see that. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It was like, it was like and uh, Harsh Times, the other one I mentioned. Keep talking, I'll be right back. Yeah. Do it, do it. But uh, what I was going to say, though, is I think Kingsman has a really interesting Samuel Jackson performance because he's really playing against type in it. Where um, I don't remember you know, like, him in Kingsman. I'll be honest. I only remember that fight scene. I, I don't remember playing, the story that much. So he's supposed to be playing like a Steve Jobs type character, or like Elon Musk or, or whatever you would say, like a, a tech billionaire. And. Uh, you there? Oh wait! Sorry, hold, hold on one second. I think I, my my um, audio board just disconnected something. But what I was saying is, though, he's playing a tech billionaire. He's got a lisp, and he's he has severe um, a, a severe revulsion to blood. So if he sees blood, he like immediately vomits. So he's not a tough guy in it at all. But also, he's like a criminal mastermind that's planning to effectively kill most of the world's population that sounds but, more uh, interesting and more complex than what they did to nick like nick yeah. fury in um secret invasion was he's up there like top 10 in terms of like intentional character assassination they went out of their way to specifically make his whole history pointless like i'm not sure if you've seen secret invasion but like it's no it's, I, I haven't I, 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 I've kind of tapped out on the MCU after. You really I, I should it was be. Actually after I, I watched all of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then Why? I was I, well, because I, I was still trying to assess what post Endgame Marvel was going to be like, and I'll I at least you... was. I, I didn't say I liked it. <laughs> I want to be uh, clear uh, about that. <laughs> I, did, I just uh, I watched it, and I watched Secret it, Invasion just for was... EFAP. Sorry. I, I watched Secret Invasion just because we were going on EFAP. I wasn't going to watch it at all. Oh, and by okay, the yeah. end of watching it, and then after breaking it down for like 10 hours on EFAP, I fucking hated that show and ended up making a video on it. It's like the second longest comparison I made. The Echo uh, one. Seen, that, 
I've seen huh? the coverage of it. Like I, I watched the oh, EFAP like, mm. I I am aware of Secret Invasion, but by that it, point, but, I think I was already out to the point that even yeah. curiosity won't get me to watch a Marvel film. You, sh you should it though. For show, but uh, like for this show, like Mallory, if, Mallory, if Metal Commander says, "Hey, like we're doing a forge on whatever random Disney Plus Marvel show comes out." Yeah, then you catch up. Case, usually, that's but, like same reason I watch that, right? Yeah, but but, uh, but like, it's I'm it's just mainly voluntarily. Oh, ahead, I'm out though. <laughs> Yeah, I you should be. It's just so fucking trash now. So like, oh, I can't. <laughs> I um, I was gonna say though, this, the whole plot and the whole story is garbage and whatnot. But the specific character damage for anyone who liked Nick Fury's character, that Ugh. in itself is the worst part. Specifically, saying that he never was a good spy. The scrolls did all the work for him. He was just like a pencil pusher. Like he, his whole backstory, they basically erase. He never was a good yeah. spy. They, they, they. He's a fraud. And then the like, Marvel doesn't it's, even it's, account for his new character traits. He's just like nothing happened <laughs> it's nothing you're just petting cats and like no. it's it's a disgrace it's a disgrace but yeah uh yeah talking about samuel L. jackson he's here now he's alfie uh called like the yeah, cat he's like... but he's ex-cia man alfred solomon or something uh so they take a walk while aiden just goes chilling in the house having some tea or coffee or whatever and then he starts talking about grapes Tells uh, that the same grape tastes different because of where it grows. The taste changes with the environment and what it's been through, or something. Uh, 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 then he talks about some fermentation devices for wine. It's like you never know about the past. Just someone needs to come around and dig it up, or something, which doesn't mean anything to her. But it will soon because in two minutes he will tell her. Uh, you know what? You're, you're <laughs> so stupid. It's so boring. You're, <laughs> you're Agent Argyle. That's not, that's not a character. You're the agent. You're actually a spy. And the things you've been fortune telling, uh, -uh those are your actual memories. Those are the things that really happened. So get, get it. Grape tastes different because where it's grown because she's different now, even though it doesn't make sense because the same grape. That was the point of that. Huh? That was the point of the fucking grape scene. Like just to set this. Oh my God. Uh, I, Lame. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything to her. And he just tells Lame. her after it's not like they say that. And then later she remembers like, Oh, like, oh that what he means. I'm actually the man, you know, Lame. they just say it. They could just cut it out and nothing changes. Like another scene you can just yeet away and go. But yeah, She's she's not Ellie Conve Co Co Ellie, she's Rachel Kyle R Kyle R Kyle. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> it's so stupid, man. That's that. I, I saw that and then I zoned out for like the next six minutes. So that's exactly <laughs> we're almost right where I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, they're like in I their will... big old secret base here now in the wine room or whatever. Uh, oh, wait. So it tells her, yeah, your predictions, th those aren't predictions. It's all memories that she really went through. Our Kyle, the Rachel Kyle. So now it get, gets weird because even the civilian population that she publishes the book to are like, oh, you're predicting all these things and then they turn out to be true. So, she basically has been outing real agents by accident in her book, and nobody gave a shit. Like, I know the Division is, I guess, kind of government-affiliated, because they're trying to keep their name clean. But wouldn't this act, have you heard the Division as well, when, you, when, when in her book, like, all the time, it turns out to be a true story, and, like, actual spy people are getting, un, un, like uncovered because of that like why are they making her do this none of it works <laughs> yeah no it was uh, like uh, i guess the i think that this probably is less dumb than if they made her an actual psychic yeah like a precognitive so yeah i mean they, like, it was at least that, <laughs> that was, like, could have been more interesting I mean, well, I mean, maybe, but like considering like the way this movie set up already, I feel like that I feel like it wouldn't have been. <laughs> I mean, I'm immediately thinking of um, like, have you seen The Gift? Actually, no, no. That's another another movie from the year 2000. And Ooh. it's Keanu Reeves. Uh, it's Kate Blanchett plays a psychic 
and it's like a murder mystery in a small town. And Keanu Reeves, that's his best performance. So many people who say he can't act, he plays an abusive husband in that movie. And it's literally him. You see like a fucking Chad toxic male Keanu Reeves <laughs> for the first time. You, I'd say watch it just to see him be a dick and it's fucking actually fun. Like just, it's, he's he literally plays that's that role way better than you. Oh, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> and the, but the movie is actually good too. There's a lot of good performances, but yeah, two recommendations from the 2000s. But the point is the premise that you just described is done well there because she's a psychic and like it they, her her abilities are actually like grounded within the movie and like the thing it's, it's not like op or anything like that mm -hmm. but it's really interesting to do like a murder mystery and try to consult a psychic to try to get some help yeah i mean this can well, work well, not here though where yeah where no, that's what i'm saying that's the <laughs> yeah. summary of this whole movie it can work it just didn't hear the concept in versus the execution it's just the pattern of argyle I, I guess where I did think it was somewhat effective was in making it make sense why she can't finish the book because and why she was able to write all the others so effortlessly because like, well, she's just basically journaling her memories and thinking of it as creative thoughts. But it's like, why is this spy story unfolding when I'm typing so easily? And it's because, well, it's just the stuff I did in the couple of years before the, the but you thing can, happened. But you don't like, really... I mean, Oh, I, I was just going to say, though, but it's just the way it's executed and then the speed at which, uh, let's say, she gets her powers back, it gets, mm -hmm. it gets a little... Uh, yeah, they crazy. rushed it instead of playing with the premise over time. And I mm. think you could only really praise the first opening scene for that. Like the whole scene with me, we're seeing Cavill and then she can't think about the right. So the scene just fizzles out. We could have did several different versions of that while keeping it like um, keeping it interesting, you know, different patterns. <laughs> I don't know. I just like House of Usher is so fresh in my mind. Um, where <laughs> seeing it's the much better, the, yeah, in terms of a mystery and like the fact that they can keep the room with the two main characters interesting, even though we kind of have an idea of what the pattern is, like the the the, the preview of which kid this episode is going to be about, and like the jump scare. They kept each one interesting, so you don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. It's going to be over here. It's going to be this. Like you never know what's going to go on. But with this, it's just like you roll your eyes. It's like get on with it. You know what they're going to do, and it's not going to be interesting. And the little things they could have done. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So, uh, she, she obviously is like, no, that's bollocks. That's that's not happening. She goes out to aid and is like, that's bullshit. Your friend up there, he's Looney Tunes. He's crazy. And he's basically like, okay, I have enough of your dumbass whining. Here, take the keys yeah. and fuck off. Punch her in the mouth. And <laughs> then he drops it and he starts attacking her. And we're basically doing like the born identity thing where he where his oh, ref where her reflexes kick in and they have like a little <laughs> scuffle and she overwhelms him. And I guess that unlocked those memories a bit. And she's like, okay, fine. I need to know everything. Uh, so funny is also right after that, Aiden tells Ellie, well, now Rachel, I guess. I couldn't have told you everything in the get from the get go because if you force it, you might lose all those memories for good. I was like, okay, I guess those are your rules. Uh, yeah, they, I don't know if that's this is where the mechanics <laughs> fall apart. <laughs> yep. I was just, might lose everything, and then I was just like, oh, so you just took a gamble by trying to attack her, so she could have either lost her memory did this or he just would have punched her straight up in the face and broke her nose <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's what's so funny about it it's like the batman throwing the fucking the uh, the shuriken at uh the flash like bro you could have just asked him like yeah. what if he wasn't you just would have killed yeah. him and i just looking at the scene like you would have just knocked her the fuck out and like give her a concussion if this was it's it's so just, it's just stupid yeah and yeah so now we get the the proper backstory uh she was actually the one who went to the meetup with the hacker man uh not aiden and the hacker man never came. And when she went there to do things, she never came back. And when they finally found her, the division was faster and transferred her to a U.S. hospital already. And she woke up from a coma. She was basically a blank slate. And they 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 hypnotized her to uh, to do her bidding, I guess. They gave her like a phony journal where they... I don't know, made her do the whole writing thing, I guess. Uh, it's like, here, now you can do all the stories you always wanted to tell. They also have, like, a laptop that has, like, the uh, hypnotized.mp4 on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think they, I, I think they <laughs> actually say, like, something. They did, like, MK Ultra stuff and hypnotized her or something. Uh, I don't M have MK Ultra on steroids, or they say something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
crazier than MK ever. Ultra. So they basically made her believe these two are her parents, even though they aren't. And they they made made her novelize her real life stories up until last week, where she was about to write where the master file might have been. Uh, and when she would have done that, they would have offed her. Also, he's been monitoring her for five years. So this has been going for five years. <sighs> so in those five years, Can you imagine they have the patience to deal with this stupid project with this idiot trying to give, wait for her to remember all this crap. Yeah. It's so just, they're the just have been waiting for a moment to grab her back, I guess, meaning the rogue agents. So I have to assume those rogue agents have just been monitoring her until she reveals the data. Because they don't tell us that they have tried to get her at any point. Just like, oh, I've been watching you for five years. It's like, okay. Is, is the implication that they couldn't do it so they don't potentially, potentially lose all those memories because that's the rules they just made up? Yeah, I think everyone in the movie just agreed that if, <laughs> if they don't just let her write the books, that she won't ever be able to tell the world what happened after the end of, you know, the, the after they don't know what happened to her. So right. it's like, oh, we need that information. So if we lose that information, it's catastrophic. Therefore, no one, like both sides have kind of agreed to just not mess with her until she gets up to the present in the story. Yeah. I guess it's, As, it's weird. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, then the other question arises: how long until the division would have been like, yes, yeah, screw it, just kill her because she's not writing the next part of the story because she just never remembers it. Because it's also really yeah. unlucky that she remembers all her crazy spy stories. But when she just gets to the last part that they, that they actually need, she has a writer's blockage and still can't remember it. <laughs> Exactly, and then so the how frustrating this would be for an the, organization. She, this, and then she does one unplanned thing that you didn't know about know about immediately. It's like, oh, I'm coming to your guy. You guys actually, not you to us. It's like, okay, go grab her, grab her right now, to do something evil. <laughs> it's like, just let her come home, or I don't know, f framed like they knew someone is coming to get you, Ellie. Like some crazy agent guy. Like we are actually like high security government people. Like, they could have done anything and be like, hey, this is Agent Hancom. Don't trust him. He's he's trying to tell you we're, like, the evil guys or whatever. Like, they're he's the rogue agent. Don't believe his lies. Don't believe his lies, yeah. But as I already pointed out earlier, the way the movie shows it makes him instantly the evil guys. Like, you do all these crazy twists in, in, in this movie, but you never keep us in the dark who the actual evil people are. Like, it's blatantly obvious from the get-go. Yeah. Like they don't even try yeah, to having, they try to having him kill yeah. the dude in the in the first scene where you see Cranston really gave us uh, no illusion that yeah. he would ever be not evil. Exactly. Point of that, it's the t the typical trope of villain kills henchman, and it usually accomplishes nothing. Yeah. And in this case, it did damage. It's just like ugh, get rid of it. Um. Yeah. They. Uh, I, I guess they tried to pretend to. Uh, that Aiden is evil for like five minutes when she runs away from him, but that's just over just like that. It's just like now we, we're in the in the next movie, I guess. Um, also, we, we're going all the way back to the safe house of the hacker man. So, with all this context now, it seems like they're all very knowledgeable about all these encrypted phone thingies and spy stuff and whatever. They didn't bother to check that encryption route at all. Because it seems as soon as Ellie brought it up, Aiden was like, oh, right. They had five years. They didn't think of any of that. Like, they use burner phones all the time. Like, this feels like a thing they might have come up with at some point. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the things. Uh, Alfie and the Division have this whole secret base with crazy computers and stuff, and they weren't f able to figure out Hackerman is not around anymore at some point or track down where he lived like you, you you're able to get up to, uh, to him somehow to do jobs for you so maybe at some point they realize no one can can realize what's happening so what the heck and i'm gonna grab something from a bit later in the movie because we figure out that rachel was the one who killed the hacker man herself and then a dead man switch went off and it exploded leading to the whole be her being in a coma. Knowing this, 
that apartment they were in, that exploded five years ago. Nobody of those two groups checked that fucking apartment after it exploded. <laughs> Good thing the explosion didn't destroy the floor. That as well. Exactly. Those are very sturdy boards. <laughs> God, man. It's like, what did they even highlight what he was doing over those five years? Like, we're like. No, no, that they, they just say, Aiden, uh, I've been watching you for five years. That's that's it. They're, kind of thing, they're not sturdy boards, though. Aiden effortlessly no. jumps through them from underneath <laughs> and then shoots like three guys while he's still in the air. And they do like this whole satellite dish thing. I feel like they could have got there at some point, no problem. Or maybe with some problems, but they have five years to find clues and whatnot. So I don't know. Seems seems all a bit silly. Um, so yeah, I think they should have had enough hints to actually uh, get this logbook without her, meaning they I don't think they needed her at all to find these things. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> wait, what's my next one here? So for five years, she's basically been talking about high security stuff that ended up to be true. Uh, oh, right, right. I just had to realize what my notes meant. So all those rogue agents had to do, so just to remind everybody, what she's been doing for five years, she released four books where the information she put in there was perceived to be fiction until people were like, no, that actually happened. People figured out that's things that actually happened. All the rogue agents had to do to get to her at some point is like, hey, we're for the government. Where are you getting all this confidential information from? You're kind of sussy. And then you get her. And then you have to force the division hand by that point, and then we could go from there and do call a whole different story, obviously. Yeah, breaks in so many ways, man. Yeah, th th we pointed out already. Like, there's a story here somewhere that could work as like a cool mystery thriller spy movie kind of dealio, but this is just yeah, a they, they went too big. Mess. Yeah, yeah, they went yeah. too bold and they created a mess. You just got to keep it simple. It's part of the reason simple movies can age so well, and like. You know, there's less room for all this bullshit to fall apart. Like, this is so yeah. ridiculous. Like, these are things are falling apart that shouldn't be falling apart within the premise that they have. The idea we had at the beginning of the stream was significantly better, that if it was more of a, an exploration of what it's like to write a spy novel yes. and how, how you can play around with each scene and make things unfold differently or maybe alter things by adding in a twist that even you didn't really see coming exactly. when you started the book, but then you found ways to make it make sense and figure, okay, what do I have to go back and change earlier on that will make this make more sense, but will still fit with everything else around it. Like it's it, it, the concept of writing being a thing that it's, it's solving a puzzle that you don't know what the end picture looks like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like, it is, it's like and getting know, a visual portrayal of that could have been interesting. Yeah, and I think that that, that would have been probably a cheaper movie to do. You could likely have made the CGI even worse and had it like have that be yeah. kind of a thing with it you know like have that it's her her imagination it's not something that's actually happening so. so i mean there's room within the ideas to get away with cheap like concepts like that's not expensive at all but mm -hmm. like if you're trying to be this big budget thing and it still looks like crap then just people are gonna roll their eyes but be clever find a way to make it make sense and then you can get away with these things, you know you what know? i'm gonna be Strange. controversial here. don't be clever just get your bases <laughs> straight for fuck's sake, just give me a simple goddamn story that's yeah, told like of, an actual story. It. Yeah. Now that's making me think that that might be a problem, a recurring problem throughout Matthew Vaughn's um, little universe here that a lot of the problems I was mentioning about Kingsman the Golden Circle seemed rooted in let's not make this the sequel people are expecting. Yeah. And yeah, subverting that, expectations is poison when you have when it's your when only you're goal. talentless hack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you just... I mean, the thing is, though, I think at least with Mark Millar doing comic books that, in my opinion, are less good than their movie adaptations in both King Ass, uh, King Ass God, Kick Ass, <laughs> and Kingsman, uh, which was originally just called The Secret Service. That was the, uh, the the comic book, and the comic book's not honestly that great. The movie's a lot better, and I think that. I, I think that Matthew Vaughn can take structure of something that's a pretty good idea and then do really cool things with it. But it seems like in almost both cases, because Kick Ass Two was not particularly good either. I don't think he, I don't think he directed that though. But I, I think that 
the king's man even has a big expectation subversion in the end of the second act which i, I don't want to spoil it you're just watching because honestly that one's not bad but i think that also expectation subversion in that one didn't bother me as much because it was a prequel and these were characters that i didn't know so i didn't have an idea of how they were established in a prior film this one though i i think that almost everything they do is not particularly interesting and seems in the interest of keeping people on their toes with twists and mm -hmm. not not with any kind of story that makes sense so yeah i don't know matthew, matthew vaughn i think you need you need better writers around you not that not right. that you're bad because I, I like a lot of your movies <laughs> but I, I think you you need to choose your creative partners better yeah, it's a collaboration effort. Like, that's why I was saying about Ryan, just keep him We Just as long as he's not writing, I wouldn't mind his name being a part of something. But um, some people, it's just the right team. Like, I don't know. I've only heard good things about Matthew Vaughn, but then to see this and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. Uh. I mean, again, I, I find him a little inconsistent, and I, I, I thought that already because I, I remember just not liking the Golden Circle very much, but after watching it last night, I actually hate it now. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, no. Which yeah, um, makes me sad to say because I like the first one a lot, which I also recently watched, and it's still great. So, yeah. Watch the Kingsman, the Secret Service. Kingsman, the Secret Service. Do eat. Um, the bibi de baba de boo. Oh yeah. Uh, Aiden tells Rachel then that she has been hired by the division after some while, uh, as they all were, and uh, just like in the book, they went rogue together. So the things we saw in the beginning, that's uh, that's a that actually happened. And she just imagined them all differently or portrayed them differently in the books, uh, obviously. Except Kira, which is the, the one lady who gets shot in the beginning. She didn't need to Arabian be... You're at the Arabian Peninsula? Sorry. Sorry? Are you at the, are you at the Arabian Peninsula? Uh, not, yet. To... not yet. Not yet. Okay. okay, so you're back. Okay. Uh, yeah, except Kira, which is the one lady who got shot in the beginning, who uh, actually died in, uh, in Greece, so they didn't need to hide her identity. Uh, and she's like, oh, shit, that sucks, because she wanted to bring her back in the next book because a fan sent her a cool idea how she survived uh, getting... Sh how, she, how, she, bleh, how she survived, easy for me to say. Uh, mm -hmm. Because she, get, uh, she got shot through the vascular corridor, and as long as you stop the bleeding, you survive. And then they show Aga I... putting a little nappy on there. Uh, well, Mark, okay, any I'll, comments I, on that? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to step in here real quick. I've been an army <laughs> medic now. For yeah, I, I legit years. wrote in my notes, Mark, any comments? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I've, I've been a medic in the Canadian army for 12 years now. I'm in year 12. Not once, not once has anyone who's taught me anything ever mentioned that. And if there was even a 1% chance that a shot to the chest could be fixed with something as simple as just stop the bleed <laughs> it would be it would honestly be priority one to just do that every time because first of all hey the only way you're stopping a bleed when a shot to shot to the heart like that like immediately through your chest cavity is if you start packing it with hemostatic gauze which is gauze that has a chemical agent in it that basically um it, it coagulates immediately so it stops bleeding and how you many cannot... people have that on their pockets? You know what I mean? Well, like, it's I mean, crazy. Like, for, like, army medics, all of yeah, them. Yeah, most, pe most people, zero. That's what but I mean, the average the, person. The, the thing is, though, the next piece of information makes it even sillier. But you can't use chemical agents like that on your friggin' heart, man. You need that blood to be moving. Yeah. It's yep. very important that the, the blood pump. in your heart moves. The That's pump. the place well, where the, your blood the, moves the idea, through. I guess the, the idea is that there's, like, a gap that's, like, two inch or five centimeters. Uh, yeah, like it's a perfect shot. But the thing is, if yeah. there was any chance it ever could be that shot, we would be we'd be doing that as a primary action on anyone who gets shot in the mm. chest, just in the event that it got through. Yeah, the, it would be uh, standard. It would be the standard meta for for like the for medics, like you said. And like if in twelve years ever been mentioned, it's like an old fucking horse shit. Yeah, it's frustrating yeah, to see I, these things because you know they didn't consult with anything with anyone. It, yeah, if I'm you're shot pretty much anywhere in the heart, you're done. Like it's it's yeah, it's very instant. rare to lose physically lose a large portion of your heart, and there's no there's not even a caliber of round that will only take out a small portion of it. Even twenty two long rifle, if it gets through your your honestly your best bet there is that it hits one of your rib bones. 
and right. <laughs> it just breaks your rib and doesn't get to your heart because the 22 long yeah, rifle might actually be stopped by that. But yeah, nine millimeter. If you're not wearing plates, then no, no chance. Or, or a 762, especially if you don't have like full military like ceramic plates. But you know what I mean. Like you're not you know, a shot to the heart's not something you're surviving. Seriously, the shot to the head is a little bit more likely because there's parts of your brain that you don't actually exactly. need in order to be alive. <laughs> you can but survive. You can live. Your heart so is the crazy. thing that gets your lungs like the to pen. communicate with the rest of your body. And the big important thing about your lungs communicating with the rest of your body is that's how you get oxygen. Yeah. You know? The blood's what carries it to your brain, and that's what keeps you alive. It's really to point out she, she, she wasn't shot with like a super low caliber gun in the beginning there was like a smg uzi kind of deal i think so that's not the lowest kind of dealio you can shoot with oh yeah Swapool got it there apparently before i mentioned it that uh, <laughs> a bigger chance of surviving a bullet yeah <laughs> but yeah uh it's a bit silly but they just point that out because it's a funny idea there's no way that's gonna gonna be irrelevant to the story right 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 it was a similar thing. A buddy of mine who's a, a chef once told me that about, I think, I don't know if it was the Slap Chop or it was like some product that was like that, mm -hmm. where I think we saw the infomercial. I was like, oh, that seems like, that seems like it would actually like save me some time while I'm doing meal prep stuff. And he's like, I will tell you this right now. If that product saved even a fraction of a second, we would all be using it on prep lines immediately. 100%. Like it, yeah. would, yep. it would be, yep. it would yep. be an industry changing thing. So it'd be just, meta. You know, they don't fuck around. <laughs> <clears throat> he's like there's something about that whether it's how you clean it or something that makes it inefficient so yeah it's i, I learned that it's so true because i remember i used to buy those things for my mom like oh mom you could cook and i get this because it's an easy thing for like, trying to get a gift for your mom like some type of cooking thing and i'm like why mm -hmm. the fuck isn't she using these gifts because they're all shit it's like this gimmick <laughs> like you know i don't need this to chop like they know how to handle their self in the kitchen and a lot of those things are gimmicky, but the things that are actually efficient, like things like blenders, like that's not a gimmick. You know what I mean? But there's the slap chop, all that. Like they be using it in prep, like you said, no. to keep the line efficient. Because if you see, like, if you've seen the bear or any shows like that, like they're fucking, they're really crazy. And um, in yeah, kitchens, kitchens are a high stress environment. Man. It's one of the most stressful jobs you can have. I've worked, in, yeah, a, chef. I've worked in a kitchen for a while, uh, right after school. Cook crazy, for like 500 it? people. That shit is ex that shit is uh, stressful. <laughs> intense is the pressure it's 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 the the pacing extremely hard <laughs> it's just funny eh? so, someone in chat just uh, wrote smg shot pistol around so st uh, so still not super strong but depends on the exit caliber nonetheless the, the reason i'm laughing is that the guy with the american flag in this profile picture is talking to uh, talking about guns i don't know it just thinks funny <laughs> <laughs> America. Of course, you're right of, shit. you're right of America. course but I just, I just found that funny <laughs> yeah, i'm a canadian who has guns we we just need a license, but you know we can. You I'm can a German. It. I have wait, uh, wait. toothpicks. <laughs> He's got a knife. He's got a sharp knife over there. You say you don't need a license in America? You just go grab a gun like it's a fucking yeah. bike. No, yeah, you, it's a, you have a right. You have the right to bear arms in America. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a. We in Canada, we have this thing called a PAL, a Possessions and Acquisition License. That and sounds reasonable to me. Like make sure you're not fucked in the head like a driving license. You're telling yeah, me, do you have a right to drive, or do you at least have to learn? Like what the fuck? I it's it's why like I mean I guess uh, my American friends will. Let's However, I I do think that learning alive? firearms. Are we good? I, think so. I mean I I can hear you. I, oh, I don't it's know reconnected. If, uh, okay, we, we good. Okay. We good. Mm -hmm. I, like I guess yeah, we shouldn't be talking about Canadian firearms, I guess, but, <laughs> but what I mean is I, I think the concept behind make it so that a person has to prove a basic knowledge of firearm safety before they own a firearm makes yeah, sense. Like a, like a like, car. Yeah, like exactly. But you um, have to wait two years to get your fucking G. Like you have to, it's like the whole process, it sucks, but it makes sense, you know? Well, I mean, I think that the, the problem a lot of people have with it is the second you put that layer of government control in place it, it it's it gives the government the ability to say you are not allowed to own a firearm even if you want to defend yourself whereas in canada we can't actually legally defend ourselves with firearms so it like that's it's irrelevant anyways i mean mm. like, please don't break into my house because i do have well, firearms i, my, I my did not know it was that however. easy like you didn't even need a license like that's just that's news to me i thought it, that just the thought the process of going through some type of training process just seems standard to me but the fact that anyone could just go in and get a gun 
Regs would actually probably be the best guy to talk because he seems to know a lot about things like yeah. um, the first question I ever asked him was um, and... the gun in my profile picture. So the first thing I ever asked Regs is like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, like, like I mean, the laws in Canada, like we can really only use them for hunting and for target shooting, mm -hmm. like like sport. So we're not we're not really allowed to. Use, I mean, we're we are not. I'll, clarify, I'll take out the really. We are not allowed to use firearms or any weapon for self defense. It's not. Yeah, really like a thing people. That we're like there's a comment in the chat that I'm confused. It makes you wonder what people hear sometimes when we say this. It's like, oof, L take from the guests. Guns are necessary and cool. What did we say that like conflicts with that? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm well, wondering think, in terms of the well, process. Because, and and that's why I was trying to tiptoe around it and saying that the thing, the reason why an American will fundamentally disagree with the licensing process being a good thing for firearms from the jump, like from the get go, mm -hmm. is no, you're already saying the government can tell you you can't have a gun. And yeah, once you give yeah, the government the, the power to do that, then you cannot use the you cannot use ownership of firearms as a means of deterrence against the government being tyrannical, and that's that's a big part of the American concept of of um, right to bear arms, like firearm ownership. So it, it's just kind of different in Canada. I, I don't love it. The, here so exactly, they, but people will I go do and... like the fact that people do need to you know learn how to properly handle a firearm. I'm just relaying it to like it's simple for me for. Um... The idea of going through the whole process, the G process, G1, G2, G, to get your car, that makes me feel safer when I'm on the road, knowing that everybody else has to go through this process. And yet there's still crappy drivers all the time. So it's one of those things. So for me, when I look at it from the perspective of like guns, I would just assume that it works the same way. And if the only argumentation from people like Solid Slug in the chat is that guns should be mandatory, it's all right. That doesn't really account for the people that are misusing them and irresponsible. Like, yeah, it's your right, but don't you feel like that's something that you should at least handle responsibly? I'm actually, sh I'm like shocked to hear that. It's like you can just go it, get a gun without any license or training. If, or if like I had an idea, it would be uh, I think point of sale proofing would probably be the best bet. And like saying, like you cannot buy a gun unless you've shown that you've researched how to like properly handle it and something, and something do, like, of some kind, yeah. like safety, and yeah, IAs and. I'm not trying to cut it. I'd meet them halfway. I get the, the like the idea of it being a part of the life and you the right to bear arms. I, I I'm down with that, but bear arms responsibly is like I just feel like that's a very simple request for my part. Oh yeah, I would recommend to even all my American friends do not ever purchase a firearm until you have a basic concept of firearm safety, or it could work out poorly for you. Yeah, a lot I mean, of people say the these things, don't know anything about guns, they've right? never experienced anything with it. And it's just, it's so funny to hear people like that, like, guns should be mandatory, but like, yeah, but some people are irresponsible and they should actually make sure that, the, you know, that's hey man, my piece I, of I, it. I'm a Canadian who is five foot six and I've fired a heavy machine gun that is almost longer than myself and I had to carry it Bro. around for a couple of weeks. So I don't know, I have, I have some decent experience with firearms, even though, like, I don't know, I'm not an expert though, because again, in Canada, you, the... you can only become so much of an expert because we don't ha we can't ever think about things like what's a good firearm to carry with you all the time. Like when you go to the grocery store, we can't do that at all. So I have no opinion on that kind of stuff. Whereas Rags is in um, Arkansas, right? And they yeah, they can, you can do concealed carry and things like that there. So it's a part of the lifestyle. As... But listening to Rags, I feel like Rags um would understand the point i'm making in terms of everything i've heard from him sounds like a responsible gun owner and he would oh yeah no, no, absolutely but that, i mean that, that is oh, i did not lightly say i think like this, these are better questions for regs because mm. oh I've no 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 talk no, about no. firearms enough to know he really knows what he's talking about yeah he's got <laughs> a passion so for guns he definitely <laughs> has a passion for guns and i just why I, I like the, but i that's why i feel like it's shocking to me I feel like Rags would do a better job of explaining what Solid Dude in the chat is saying right now. Of like just saying they should be mandatory is just like that's kind of an oversimplification, but yeah. Enough mandatory comes, the irresponsible people will be faced out. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> no. Okay. That wasn't me. That was a uh, Solid Slug. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, funny. It's, I don't know fucking shit about guns. I never held one in my life. I just talk about movies. <laughs> yeah, I, well, Mark, I've mentioned movies you, so you know my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, it's just frustrating to see people um, who just seem like they have no experience with guns and what they can do. It's kind of annoying. Not you, Metal. Not you. I'm talking about the people in the chat. I'm annoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you. Not you. I'm also German. Uh, it's the same thing, really. No, nothing wrong with that. A lot of good firearms are made in Germany. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't get to use them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, I, I just, I find that comment hilarious. Like, mandatory, like, the irresponsible ones will be weaved out. Like, <laughs> yeah. He also, but he also said, oh, because boy. I'm not American, I'm being intentionally ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, jeez. No, it's all good. Uh, I just find the gun topic interesting, but... Oh, it to, is. But Ar unfortunately, Gillian. we have to talk about Argyle more. <laughs> Ar Argillian. Argilius. Argilus. Hey, we're, we're, we're tangent-friendly on the show. No, it's all good. Oh, of course, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm just completely out of my depth here. I have no idea about any of those regulatory stuff. I think you can you can go to, like, clubs here, but it's more like uh, just at, at, at a station, and then you shoot at targets or whatever, mostly. We should... We should we should sponsor a field trip for metal going to like the Glock <laughs> factory in Austria. Or something. Glock factory, yeah. When I went to the range, we, I saw a few different handguns, different custom handguns, and I, a shotgun at a zombie poster was pretty cool. And the cock back of the shotgun is legit. Like it, like you've got to watch your fingers. I think it'll fucking break your fingers. Like yeah. It's really strong. Mm. And the recoil of that actually felt legit. But that's the only time I shot one. I need to shoot guns at some point. It sounds very I mean, fun. I guess there are books. I could, I could probably take you shooting someday. <laughs> do it, please. Do it. Do it. I, I told you, like, I like that was definitely an interesting experience. But, like, in terms of the other side, the part that I mentioned you, Mark, like, it's just frustrating for me to hear people knock so irresponsibly with guns when you know, like, the damage you could do to people. Yeah. No, you definitely have to respect them. They are a, a tool that can be used to, to hurt people badly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to understand that every time you ever touch one. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and what, I'm still processing. Sorry, not to interrupt with the Argo, but like, I thought you were like 6'2 or something, man. I can't tell what anybody's height is from everyone oh, no, sitting I'm down tiny. and it's YouTube. Yeah, I, yeah, are you, there's no fucking way you're like the only YouTuber that I'm part of today. Because every YouTuber is like, Fringy's like nine feet tall, I hear. Yeah. Like, <laughs> every, every YouTuber just seems to be really, really tall. It's, it, get, okay, there we go. There's one more thing the three of us have in common, I think. Now, if, sure if you've ever seen a war movie and one of the soldiers is like the little Italian guy, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm the, I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the real life one of those. That's part of the reason Lion has always been my animal of choice like since i was a little kid from avatar because it's one of the smaller of the like the big cats right so, oh i see yeah. i see that's a part of it yep and the actual right. girl's not even actually that tall it's just it's a meme that she seems really tall because in pictures of us we're around the same height and she's an asian woman so that's all it takes <laughs> they, they, tend, they <laughs> tend to be thought of as small people and it's like every time yeah. you see actual girls like wow she's really tall it's like no nah, i'm short it's just to be losing I'm like five right, nine. Do it up, metal. I think it's five nine. And well, metal, you're probably the fucking tallest in here. You can tower over us. So oh, there is, you can have that one for one. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Argyle, right? Uh, uh, what, what happened? Oh yeah, she's like an agent now. Uh, oh yeah, we we just got to the part of the movie that Brooks hasn't seen. <laughs> yeah, we're right, literally yeah. minutes from it. I think one twenty three is where I like broke off. Uh. Let's see. I got the archive. Oh, we we were at the the stupid fucking vascular corridor thing, and then we, we talked about guns for a while. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, right after that, uh, Alfie cracked the code, uh, and it's like, hey, the, the the thing is at the keeper of secrets, and that but the hacker told the keeper only Rachel can pick it up, and no one else. But Rachel is like, yeah, but I'm I'm not really Rachel right now. I'm still kind of Ellie, so she's gonna know something is up because she's also an old acquaintance. So, uh, that's dumb. And I was be like, does that matter? Does this does this apply to your fucking character? You're still the same person. Just give me the fucking thing that I was told to get here. Doesn't fucking matter who I am, right? <laughs> I don't really? I, I don't put something somewhere it's like only I get to grab it and then I come back two years later but I have a different out, outlook on life and it's like oh you're not the same person from two years ago you're not gonna get your stuff I was like what fuck off give me my stuff but yeah again, no that is that's pretty true yeah right <laughs> it's like my, my 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 demeanor shifted not my identity yeah though. Uh, my tum tum hurts today. I'm not gonna, gonna get my master files. <laughs> <laughs> you have a headache. You're not allowed in. <laughs> yeah. And then Rachel's like, "Yeah, but I've been seeing Argyle and talk to him." She's like, "Yeah, that's right. I've been seeing him. I find it reassuring. He's like, he's like my 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 coping mechanism, and I'm I'm losing my mind." 
And Alfie just tells her, like, you're not losing your mind. That's your mind trying to show you who you really are. And then Aiden reassures her that they get go together and now they go into the Arabian Peninsula. That, that, that they go. So that's now the, the context for Henry Cavill showing up. It's her mind telling her who she really is. But with that context, I was like, then why is she projecting Argyle onto Aiden? Yeah, what was the point of that? I thought this... Because that's how it yeah, starts, and then it becomes her subconscious somehow. It's really weird. Just change yeah, the rules. Yeah, they, they should have kept that consistent. Or just, like, I mean, then have John Cena be the one that's popping up through the movie. And have it, have it be strange that she's like, why am I seeing him? Yeah, because... <laughs> yeah, they could have made it make more sense. Like, yeah, because they also definitely... say here that the hacker guy, which is John Cena, is Aiden. So he should have popped up to be Aiden. You're right. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. And that would make way more sense when she sees Argyle in the mirror too. If Henry Cavill only ever showed up in mirrors, that I think would be a, the way to yeah. do it. And then John Cena would have more to do as well. Yeah. Here you know, I mean, say, say what you will about his China stuff, but I, I think it's actually pretty <laughs> funny. Oh, he can be really funny. He, he can have some you really see, good. Um, uh... Do you see blockers? It was originally called cock blockers, but uh, they, they, it's just a little rooster on the poster and then it says blockers. It's a, kind of think, a teen girl comedy. I don't think I like heard an, about an that American one, pie, but about like girls kind of going to prom and wanting to hook up. It's like, or I don't know if it was prom or something else. But um, John Cena and a couple other like, kind of funny actors are their parents trying to cock block them. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty funny movie. You know? it's, I, uh... I do remember John Cena coming around on the scene around like a few years after I stopped watching wrestling and then seeing, I saw a couple clips of him just like his personality and shit. And like, yeah, I have a feeling this guy's going to be su successful. And I, I could say that I, I almost predict, like, I didn't think he was going to be this big, but <laughs> I knew that he was going to do good things. Like he had the build and he had the charisma. Yeah, and to charismatic. see him in uh, Suicide Squad, I like. I, I thought Peacemaker was legit. I have no issues. But I, I think. Um, Did you watch Batista... the show? No, I didn't watch it. But, I, I, um, I didn't it was mind right. it actually. Although I, I mean, I'm also I'm also the one that was most positive on Argyle. So you know, sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, <I'm> <laughs> well, in, in fairness, in fairness, I wouldn't even say you were positive on Argyle. You were just willing to look at it. The the give it. You're you're willing to look at it with the in the most perspective way. Like give them I was, benefit. I was. For the concepts i was much more harsh in terms of the concepts of like, i, I rewatched it <laughs> yeah metal just pain like wow i was just gonna say, when i walked out of the theater i i texted metal almost immediately and i was very precise in my word what i said was didn't hate it didn't hate it <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't say i liked it i didn't say man that movie was awesome which is fair like, because that it. was my initial thought as well as like i guess i'm not offended by it which is better than most and, movies these days. <laughs> it didn't the make reason, me angry. The reason I said that is because knowing what the pretty unanimous reaction about this being just a terrible movie is, I, I thought it was like, wow, I'm I'm oddly more positive on this than it seems like anyone else is. Mm -hmm. That said, um, I, I still don't think it's a good movie. I, want, I wanted to be very clear on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's not this is, uh, I didn't hate it, therefore it's good. And I think even saying I liked it would be going way too far. This is like, well, you know, as a... As a date movie type thing that I'm sure it, girls will probably get a lot more out of than most dudes, because it's very clearly set up as Bryce Dallas Howard is the <laughs> perspective character, M much more so than Sam Rockwell ever is. And, you know, I mean, that, fair enough. Like, those those people can have movies, too. And every so often there can be semi-entertaining things in them, like the odd action scene that I don't mind, or joke about, um, you know, crushing skulls. Mm -hmm. But I, that I said, it's like, would I have preferred that they just made the World War II sequel to The King's Man? Yes, very much <laughs> yes. so. I, I want to quote a comment that I said to Mark uh, 28 minutes into Argyle. Um, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> 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 like, pretty, that was my take, pretty much to contrast with him. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> uh. But yeah, um, at the same time, though, The King's Man, like the, the Ray Fiennes one, has anyone seen this or is it just me? Like out of the three of us? I don't remember if I've seen it, to be honest. I, I only remember, remember the seeing the first scene. one, to be honest. I might have I only not remember seen any of the other ones. Okay, I only so remember the action scene of the first one. I don't even really remember the story that well. So The King's Man is a pretty new one. Uh, it was made like two years ago, I think. And it's with Ray Fiennes, Gemma Arterton, and uh, Jimon Hansu. Hansu? Hansu? You know, uh, Jumaan, the black Jumaan? dude that's really... Who? 
yeah. The yeah, black no, dude no, that no, everybody no. knows, but nobody knows who he is. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I think I mostly got his name, right? <laughs> no, you're the first person, like, ever. You and, I think, Mahler in a video. The only time I've seen someone bother to pronounce his name. But we all know him, but nobody fucking knows his name. <laughs> like, no? That's funny. Anyways, though, it's like, it's an alt history kind of thing. Or, 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 I mean, it's basically just showing the Kingsman universe, but the World War One thing and the founding of the Kingsmen. How, how they came about, how the Kingsmen played a part in the... The, the beginning of world war one and and how it eventually ended so and it, it's it's not incredible it's not like the best action movie ever and the cgi in it is absolute dog shit i gotta tell you that right now there's a lot of very obvious volume shoot stuff during the action sequences and at a certain point you got to just be like okay well this movie's not going to look good but let me try to focus on the other elements of these fight scenes that they do because smartly they do narrow the focus of some of the better fights in the movie where it just takes place in a room indoors so it doesn't look like everything's fake you're just inside so it's a set right but um they end it with a tease for a sequel that has at least something to do with world war ii and set it up as like now the kingsman is an organization that exists and we might do another movie set in this time period and that movie i'll, I'll say this much it's very much a a, a, a man's story like because it, it's a story about a father more than anything else and I think that it's kind of neat that he'll make a movie that is as blatantly like, hey, this is about a father, a son, and them dealing with some of the most dude stuff you can imagine, like like the minutia of military history in World War One. And then this is the one that's like, well, now we'll make sort of a more feminine, like novelist story that's like for cat ladies. And And I don't hate the fact that He's willing to <laughs> throw ladies. both. Well, I mean, because like, uh, who else is this movie for? Like, no, it's ultimately, it's right. like, I mean, and like, I don't think I don't think it's unfair to say that. I feel like Matthew Vaughn would be like, yeah, no, no, we wanted cat ladies to feel like this movie was for them, hmm. and I think they succeeded for better or worse. But uh, yeah, you know, like I, I, I guess I just appreciated that this movie was at least going for an audience and doing its own thing while also knowing that that same guy makes the opposite of that. Because I think, uh, I took X-Ray Girl to see The King's Man, and there's a scene where they're both in a car with um, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, and I'm, like, on the edge of my seat, like, oh, shit. And X-Ray Girl's like, what? They're like, why do you care? Like, what's, <laughs> he's, they're in a car. I'm like, do you not? Do, do, and, like, so she didn't really get much out of it because... She doesn't care about military history, you know, but like, mm. I'm just like, oh man, how's this going to go down? And like, I, I guess I kind of looked at this as what's the cat lady version of the King's man. If the King's man is for, you know, middle-aged guy like me who likes military history and spy movies, what's the spy movie romance novel version. And I, I just, I thought the movie was like entertaining enough for being that, even though that is not something that I would generally want to go out of my way to go see or anything so you, like that. I feel like there's like personal reasons why you were more forgiving with this movie then too. I, for sure. I mean, I guess like I, I, it was, I think the context I was looking at it in, like I was like, okay, well this is absolutely going to be like a, a chick flick type movie about a novelist, a, a novelist cat lady. Like I, 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 I knew that going in cause I saw the trailer and I was mostly hoping that there would be enough focus on the spy stuff that I would be entertained through the movie. And I thought that some of the fight scenes were okay. They start getting really ridiculous by the point of the movie we're getting to, especially the smoke dance sequence. Mm. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Although, funny enough, I did notice that a lot of the sets are definitely the same sets that they use in both Kingsman movies and um, Kick-Ass. <laughs> like, like the, uh, or where, where did they have the armory that they open up in, in this movie? Oh, it was at, towards the end, like that, the, where she's got the grenade and uh, like he comes in and finds her when she's kind of turned into secret agent Argyle. You know what oh, I'm talking God. about? That, this so sounds that, stupid as hell. But what I mean is that room, though that room, that armory is just um, fitting room three from Kingsman. Uh, I could tell because I would I'd like been watching them recently, and I think the hallways they're fighting in are the the end hallway from the fight against Mark Strong's character in Kick Ass. So I feel like they've just got a studio where they were thinking like, okay, what? How can we? fit another action movie into these sets and do some you know, things with it and use a bunch of CGI to what buff What movie I've been out. trying to trying to remember this whole time as a reference point is like, because you can do lighthearted stuff like this and still put a little bit more effort into the choreography. You guys remember Kung Fu Hustle? 
Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, that was a fun movie, but this, <clears throat> the fights were still fun. Like, it wasn't just bullshit. Like, put a little effort in, and, like, people will appreciate it. We don't need to Kung, you know, Kung Fu Hustle like is it. usually, that is the reference point I often use to sell people on the live action One Piece. I'm like, oh, really? you yeah. got like the, the fight scenes are kind of crazy in it, but they're they're crazy but in the it, kind of kung fu hustle way. Where if it, it takes itself seriously, it's fine. But, well, that that's the yeah. it takes itself seriously enough, but also not seriously enough that it, you can tell they're having fun. But they're not self aware. Like the characters mm. in the story yes. are. It's it's the filmmakers taking it not so seriously, but the characters in the story are. Sin so, City uh, did that like, to the T, where like yeah. everything is ridiculous, but they're taking they're taking it so seriously that I don't like, mind. The it's characters like, aren't fantastic. winking at the camera. Like the characters no, no, treat no. it as this is their world and their circumstances, it's, and they have so to deal with it. So we're not going like to make Sin, jokes about things like death. Things like Sin City and, and Kung Fu Hustle and plenty others is part of the reason I was harsher on this movie. I'm like, come on, do something. Like if you you know. Yeah, I guess I, I was thinking premises. this would be this would be much closer to like YA romance novel Twilight stuff than or like Hunger Games. It would be obviously less serious, but you know what I mean. Like I figured it would be that kind of movie, and and I guess as far as that, I was I, like, well, I like Sam Rockwell enough that I was I was enjoying his character through pretty much the entire movie, except for when he made just idiotic decisions. I and, thought I was going to... Oh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Well, I'm just trying to contextualize my positive, quote, quote, angle on this movie. It's like, mm. well, I've, my, my, the, when I say I didn't hate it, it's like hey, this could have been a lot worse than what I ended up. I, was, I had more fun at the theater than I expected I would. <laughs> and that, uh, that's kind of all I could ask for, for it, my, from it. My, my, the, my one thing with... Uh, like, I, like I said, I can give some points for the contest, but like the issues with the execution overall. But the Henry thing is just a plague for me in this movie because I really thought this was going to be... If he's playing this character and the idea that we had for the movie of what I thought it was going to be, then he's going to... It's a quirky character, probably. Maybe we're going to be able to get see a better idea of his acting range and, like, really see what he can do with this. And I feel like this is a stain on his career. Like, this is embarrassing. Yeah. That's the part yeah, of it that's, that's really, hard. like, not sitting right with me of, like, this was the worst time for something like this. For that mm. I, wonder, I wonder how the marketing could have changed that. Because you think that if Henry Cavill wasn't really, if he wasn't the forefront of the marketing and it was almost <laughs> like a cameo. That... We wouldn't be here right now if he wasn't the forefront of the marketing. We probably never would have saw this movie. Probably, yeah. A cat, a cat, a cat, a cat the dude, and Bryce Dallas Howard doing quirky things. Well, I mean, never, you know what? Ever I think you can get me into a theater, though, if you show Sam Rockwell doing like a Kingsman style action scene. And that was in the trailer. So I'm like, oh, this could actually be good. And, that, and granted, I was wrong about that. But that's what made me think, oh, this might be an interesting one to check out because there's a chance it could be a interesting little story that that catches us off guard by how entertaining it is. Or it could be absolutely terrible because how good can a movie be about a spy novelist who has a cat and then gets pulled into a world of espionage? Because like, that's that's such a mm. it's such a basic concept. You know, like it's not there's not really anything interesting about it. And it sounds like the biggest thing holding that movie back from being a good movie, like on paper, like I'm saying the synopsis version is, well, what if we just remove the novelist lady and just make it make a spy movie? Yeah, <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, yeah man, too many elements at once trying to, to and it's, none of it's working. So, yeah, I think actually the, the premise was probably the thing that hurt this film the most, because off the bat, there was only so good this could possibly be. Mm. Hey, you know. Okay. Well, we're at the Arabian Peninsula now. Yeah. And, damn, that hacker put some mileage just to get that here because I assume he didn't just send that per mail. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's like some some guy or some someone just brings it over here. He trusts. I don't know. It's just a small thing. Where it's like, damn, he just put a lot of effort in that thing not being found, which I guess is a good thing. <laughs> so what the fuck's going on here? Now this is where you gonna have to explain this to me. Uh oh right so oh this is where where you where you're out okay so right at this moment is where I'm like lost like what the fuck's going so on so Alfie right. has 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 cracked the code uh in that logbook and it's like hey the 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 silver bullet USB thingy uh, thingy majingy that has the the master file on it is in the Arabian Peninsula at the keeper's place and that's like a lady who keeps secrets and things for people. And only Rachel is allowed to go grab it. So she and uh, Aiden go over there. She's not fully badass lady yet. 
but they they they're like ah oh, at least we can uh dress up like the fantasy so now they're like all uh, dressed up fancy like uh actually aiden looks like argyle now like he has like the argyle hair, hair haircut and and the the suit i think it's very very similar if not the same okay now i see because i'm like who the fuck are these people i didn't recognize either of them as yeah like, kept... so the yeah. keeper is this lady who, who 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 keeps stuff for people she's like a safekeeping place it's like in the middle of the desert in the arabian peninsula whatever it's uh sophia Benello is her name i think uh yeah or is that her name i think yeah, so the, I'm... the the amputee girl from kingsman and uh, the mummy from the tom cruise one <laughs> well there you go and they they get here and she's like <laughs> Rachel is like kind of freaked out because she's uh, still kind of more Ellie than Rachel uh and it's like well uh, uh, you know what dancing helps and then they have a little dance uh like in the beginning of the movie they do the whirly bird thingy the 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 move in the beginning and it's like oh and uh, this is i think this is where we learn it's like oh by the way they've actually been a couple uh before she lost uh, her memory Oh wow! What a big, amazing revelation! <laughs> you you like, can make the argument. Hell. <laughs> you that's the one the thing I can see that... coming a thousand miles away. <laughs> you can make the argument that Dua Lipa doing the Whirly Bird is one of the best reasons to actually watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it happens really early on. You know, like, yeah. If this comes to streaming, oh, the Rebel Moon check, that up eh? and see it quickly. Oh, she's in the one. Oh, is she in yeah, Rebel, Rebel Moon? That... Yeah, and she was uh, in Atomic yeah. Blonde. Yo, I can't escape this. Yeah, I, I was, I I was never seen... going to bring up Atomic Blonde because yeah. I just realized that would have been the perfect reference point for you. <laughs> I did, I never have seen this chick before in my life, and then I seen her in Rebel Moon, and then Atomic Blonde, and then now this. I can't escape her. No, no, <laughs> she's she's in lots of stuff, man. Oh, mm. <laughs> her tits look nice in Atomic Blonde. I'll give her that. After after Kingsman, she started getting hired everywhere. <laughs> well. There you go, but uh, yeah, they do the thing. It's like uh, appropriating my body type. The uh, one well, she has no legs though. Not tell Aiden just tells her like uh, not telling her instantly that she she uh, about that was the hardest mission in his life. So they dance, they're about to kiss, but uh, affection is not allowed here because the, I don't know Arabian Peninsula something culture and whatever. No guns and no no kissing in this establishment. <laughs> That's the rules. They would have stopped them so much faster than they did, though. Hmm? <laughs> they would have stopped them so much faster than they did. Probably, like, they did yeah. the whirly bird, man. Yeah. You can't stop the kissing once you've allowed the whirly bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, God. no touching. Like, come on. Uh, but yeah, no, the keeper confronts her. It's like, oh, you you get in here. Only you. No Aiden allowed. And the keeper also has like knowledge. It's like I've been watching you as your Ellie Convey flim flam. Who are you really? Baba da baba yada da yada. And he's like, oh, I'm so nervous. Then, but luckily the the room is very reflective with the stuff. So she looks to the right and sees Argo. It's like you don't need me. You only need you. And then he vanishes. And now she's badass lady. He's, she's Rachel now. And tells her, uh, oh, you're a bottom feeder or something. So are you gonna give me the thing, or you wanna? Do you want me to take it? Wait a minute, Mar Mar Meadow. Are you telling me that she just gets the second wind and like she suddenly fucking like has all her <laughs> abilities yeah. again? Her subconscious finally caught up to her. Told her, <laughs> you're good now. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, the all second right. wind. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous! It's not man. even. Every it's not time. even. It's not even in a fight or anything. She's just getting yeah. confronted by the by the lady. As like, who are you really? Because only one of you is getting out of here alive. And then she looks to the right, and Henry Cavill's like, "You're good now, basically." And it's like, "Oh my uh, god, you 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 bottom feeder piece of shit! Uh, <laughs> give me my stuff." And then the keeper's like, oh, "Maybe you didn't change as much." And then she gives him gives her the thing. I was like, okay, <laughs> that was lame. I was like, well, you want to check it? You could use my computer. And she obviously points out, how do I know that's secure? And then she's like, well, I'm the keeper. I keep secrets. And I was like, okay. okay. And she uses her computer. <laughs> okay. And, Jesus. It's like, this, or... is, this is also the part of the film where I think um, Bryce Dallas Howard's character being a like frumpy novelist starts really hurting your ability to take what's happening seriously well that's all because, good, because that was all the facade like she, anyway. yeah she, she she is i gotta say like not to fat shame but she is put on some yeah albums i know like, and it just does not suit 
Like I'm thinking about Jurassic World, like her like in her prime, like that's like twenty pounds ago. And yeah, like, well that, that's the nothing thing. wrong with so, that, like, but like just for an fine. action scene. It's fine for a good chunk of the movie because that's like the character she's playing. But when you're yes. supposed to then buy that <laughs> same character has now become exactly. John Wick. It's like, oh, God, I mean, it, the way you do this is you have her like you, you basically she's going to have that weight, but then she's going to need to get in shape for these and, and film them at separate times. Hmm. She filmed the the, 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 the the author scenes at the. Well, I guess it wouldn't make sense continuity time, wise right? if she would suddenly be thinner just because her demeanor changed back. Yeah, I know. It just. Oh, I wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. I'm yeah. thinking of yeah. Well, I mean, if, if they, like, that would have been probably. This has a fucking Goku <laughs> transformation. It's like, oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she suddenly gets, Jack gets Super Saiyan <laughs> spy. <fucking> ripped. <laughs> but, I, but I'm thinking about, see, I'm thinking about the movie that we wrote where we would see versions, like, a, a real version of her in the story ah. and then the, the, ch the chunky author version, but, oh, like, okay. shoot it separately so right, we actually right, get, like, yeah. her in shape because that's how you do it. Like, the way they do it, like, for example, I worked at Good Life and one of the things that they do for the for, for before and afters is that um some of them are legit like um where you'll get a, a trainer that'll put their showcase their client and show all the results but from the other advertisement advertisement ones sorry the the marketing ones they'll have people that are actually trained they'll have them get out of shape <laughs> and then basically just lose the fucking weight because they know they can do it anyway just so you can fucking put the photo up and it's realistic that's kind of funny of because it just circles it. back to christian bale because he does, does like all these roles where yes! he gained and lost weight and then got yes! jacked again like he goes that crazy can be that done shit. He's yeah. one of the people that actually gives a fuck about it, but you can do it in different ways. But like, that's why Bale is the king. Like, it, yeah. he's one of my favorite actors, not just for his acting, but for his commitment to like shit like that. I know? think the chattiest uh, ones of those I only learned about recently because while when I was over at Ballers, he showed me Unforgiven, a movie I've never seen before. Yeah, and, uh, Western. And then I uh, I learned that oh yeah, that's that's script <laughs> that script was done like ten years before the movie came out. But uh, Clint Eastwood was like, yeah, but I want to be really I want to be older and more grizzled for that role. So I just waited ten what? years before I made that movie. Gangster, yeah, man. gangster. That's, yeah, that's the way, yeah. That makes me respect him so much more. I didn't even know that. It's fantastic. Because it just movie shows the difference in the, the how much they care. Yeah. It it and it. it, it yeah, it, it stands the test of time because of that. Well, I mean, program. now you know that now every single producer would be like, no, 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 we'll just digitally age you up. Exactly. <laughs> no one's going to know. Crazy. We still have two hours before the movie uh, publishes. We can still change some stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, he's like, no, I'm saying wait 10 years. Like, I'll do, what, five movies, two movies, or like a movie every couple of years. And, and that's it. like 10 years goes by faster than you think, man. Yeah. But the, the, Especially if, if you're like in your late 40s and you're like, well, I think the difference between me being pushing 50 and pushing 60 will, will make a big difference to the atmosphere of this movie. And saying, okay, well, there's... This, this script's not going away. I own it. I'm, I've got the rights to it. I'm going to direct it. But I'm going to set our shoot date for 1990 instead of 1980, you know? Mm. That's just com committing to the role. Like, I have, like, two... Uh, forgetting the second one as I'm saying it, but the first one, Vince McMahon in the 90s, when he really became the heel, Mr. McMahon, mm. and became one of the biggest heels in all of, like, wrestling history, he got fucking jacked! He got all he, all the creatine and all the roids, everything. He got fucking huge to play the role and like actually make it believable for it. Instead of having some old man get in in the ring, he made the effort to make it believable and like make it entertaining. And like that's just a fucking just wrestling, you know. Like, but just the people. He's an example of someone who cares about like you know putting in that type of effort. And I, it's so crazy to see how lazy these these some places some no. filmmakers are now. These little details they don't even fucking care about. Because she's uh. <sighs> yeah, she's not. <laughs> I don't know what's. <laughs> I don't know what's about to happen, but I'm. I'm thinking about Atomic Blonde right now, and like Lorraine was fucking like in shape, you know. Ready yeah. To well, take like, that's the thing is, there's, oh, there's no other way to say it without sounding mean. It's just like, well, exactly. I just, I don't, she's I don't buy for, her in these actions. She's not <laughs> built for battle right now. That's the nicest way to say it right now. She's not <laughs> built for battle. It's just good, like good point. Yeah. Uh, the, the so yeah, she checks computers like she sees something. <laughs> distressing it's like oh no what oh god the next twist is arriving oh no oh no i can't take anymore so <laughs> i can't take uh, but before she can go back to to aiden vogler arrives which is her fake mother because yeah she lives because she was wearing a bulletproof vest yay what she, because he, she got not shot in the face she's still alive 
I was like, well, let's have some tea and talk about the thing. And, uh, uh, all this, all this, uh, what did I write here? Oh, they do the switcheroo with the, with the glasses. Like, oh, you're going to drink my one because that might be poisoned. Also, you go first. And, uh, in the end, it's all full of sleeping agents. Uh, and they tried to do like a, <laughs> a thing here. But like, oh, it was Carlos. Carlos did the thing. It's like, no, it was the, it was just the other ones. She's pretended to fall asleep first, I guess. It's weird. Uh, but anyway, uh, um, Rachel is starting to remember more things, and Vox like, follow the memories, and then she remembers that she killed the hacker, and then everything exploded. And it's okay. Why did she even do that? I don't. It's really awkward. Because uh, a little bit later, Aiden tells us, "Oh, you were just you were probably you were playing both sides up until the end because you didn't know who to trust." And I was like, "Why did the hacker man have to die then? Like, even if that's true, what's the point? He already put the, he got you all the files. You paid him. He, he, he got it to the keeper. Nobody could get it without doing any kind of big uh, has, uh, hassle by attacking that peninsula base thingy." Like, why did he need to die? Nothing changes when he lives. It's fucking dumb. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. Because even if they would go and get him to, to torture him or whatever, it's like, tell us where it is. They're just like, it's at the keeper's place. And they're like, oh, well, fuck. The keeper is like... At least the way she, the, she's portrayed, she's super respected by all parties because she's like the... the, 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 the neutral party here who can keep all these things and... Except for Rachel, who, who kind of just oh yeah, like, whatever they were trying to do there theater, didn't make like, oh, okay. any sense. Uh, but yeah, it's just I don't know why he needed to die. It's kind of stupid, but it, it, it she killed him. Also, I don't know why she would even be surprised that she would find a file of hers in there because we've already established that they've all were hired by the the division at some point. Like you can't tell me none of them have made any shady shit before. There should be a file for all of them, to some degree. Because they do undercover espionage stuff, which is probably going to be terrorism to some degree. So Well, I, I mean, they just tried to do, like, what if she does the heel turn at the last minute, and it turns out her master plan was to betray Aiden and all right, along. Right, right. Well, did, did her time as Ellie Conway change her mind? Or but they don't, even, they don't, don't do even, anything with it. Though. They don't entertain that for very long, though. It's Even the way they do it is kind of stupid. But So, yeah, they, they're all knocked out now, uh, and Rachel wakes up in Rita's place, like the whole thing he's been chilling out. And there's not even, like, a big s switch. Like, that memory makes her believe... Oh, I don't think she does believe it, but the movie tries to tell us... Oh, she's on their side now, for some reason. Because she's just chilling there, and then... She, so I believe she pretends like she's cool with them and talks to them as they were allies. But at the same time, the movie is trying to tell us she's now with them, even though I don't buy it for a second. Because she's clearly lying. Alfie, they want Alfie. They they have the master file, but they want Alfie because he's their one guy that still can fuck him over. It's like, well, I don't know where Alfie is. I, I, I was asleep when we got there. Uh, somewhere in the vineyard in the French countryside. And when I heard that, it's like, oh, just get Google Maps and scan the countryside, I guess. You I mean, find yeah, you figure that, like, for a, a multinational spy agency. Yeah. yeah. Not, it's like, oh, that's, like, that that's would be pretty good information. information. <laughs> Especially because you that's know what That's more than like. enough of a clue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With their they know what he looks like. He's, it's not like, well, we have no idea what his identity is, so we could look at every vineyard, but we don't know what he looks like, so therefore it doesn't yeah. help us. But it's like, no, 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 they know. I mean, they do get there with <laughs> other a means. They that... a country. Yeah. And they know that he's not in a major city and finding people out in the country, if you know it'll be looking for them out there, if you have like satellites and drones and all that stuff, probably can't be that hard. They found Osama in a fucking hole. <laughs> in Iraq, okay? If you can find that motherfucker in a hole, you can he find was, Samuel yeah, Jackson's graveyard. He was, graveyard. He was in a compound. <laughs> was he? I thought it was, it was a hole. Yeah, no, it was in the, uh, you just reminded me of the, the Andy Samberg song in the, the pop star movie. He's like, she said, invade my cave with your special unit. I said, he wasn't in the cave. <laughs> but there was no stuffing. She oh, wanted me no. to fuck it like, we've oh, been loud in. You guys do that? I, I, I haven't heard, listened Hilarious to it in a while, but it's pretty funny, yeah. 
Yeah, no, that that was the best song Coping in the movie. Laden. <laughs> Should I listen to that after this? Because <laughs> the premise of it is that he's the pop star who tried to make his music political, <laughs> and then yeah. and it all sucks. But it's sucking means it's also hilarious too. Oh yeah, god, good, uh, good stuff. Good movie. <laughs> But yeah, they're like, yeah, but we've been torturing, we've been beating up. I wouldn't say torture, but they were just beating him up. So I guess that counts as, tor as torture, but they weren't doing anything super crazy. Just beating him up. He isn't talking and telling them where Aiden is. She's like, well, let me talk. And she's just like, let the lamb roar. So she's like pretending like she's with them now, but it's all her master plan, I guess. It's just weird because the way the movie portrays is like, yeah, that's like happening right now. She's on their side. We're doing this. It's like... Okay, but I don't buy it. Like there was no convincing yeah, it... involved. They, they get uh, put to sleep in uh, in the peninsula, taken to their place, and then she's just on their side all of a sudden. It's like no, I don't believe you. You you didn't put in the work for me to believe that. It's like she's cl she's either lying or you're just being shit at writing. Both are true, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, how is that just? <laughs> What have they done to make this even believable for a second? Which is so strange. Like, yeah, because all all we have is like she realizes she killed the hacker man, but later it's like I remember everything, but she doesn't elaborate at all. So I guess she did kill him because he was playing both sides. Which I'm just like, wow, what a piece of shit. <laughs> you did all you needed, and then you killed him. That's not very nice. So basically, it's all your fault that we're here now because you killed him. The dead man switch went off and exploded your face into the water. It's like cool, good job. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh yeah, she's like, oh yeah, let me go talk to him, and then we got the glorious return of Alfie the cat, because Rita oh. brought the cat to his hideout just in case for this to test her. It's like ah, talk to uh, uh the to get me the the real Alfie, and you get your cat Alfie, and that's just all to be uh, to make her go like. I don't even like cats. You can do whatever you want with that cat, and then he just drops the cat on the floor. And still in that back, by the way. Um, I mean, it's a really good thing he didn't shoot the cat, because that would have been a good way to call her bluff, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> like, I thought that's what was going to happen, to be honest. Him just dropping the cat and its case on the floor yeah, yeah. is the best case scenario. Yeah, it just drops it so we can grab the cat later. Uh, so yeah, the cat is back. Hooray! I'm so happy that the cat is back. Um, <laughs> so they go to the room where Aiden is, which is also the room uh, where they did the the calls from. So I gotta admit, at the beginning, I was like they were making a big error here because the 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 first shot they show us of that kitchen doesn't line up with what they show here. But she says they reconstructed it in case they need to be on base to, and she wanted to FaceTime the mom, so. They got the continuity right there. Good job. I was uh, in my notes. I was already going ham on them. It's like it's fucking wrong. And I was like, oh no, actually, <laughs> they 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 said it's a reconstruction. So fair play. Um, but yeah, they had a like, whole reconstruction thing, and this is where they go with Aiden. And this is where she's like, oh, the reason you killed Taker Man is because you were playing both sides and uh, all the way to the end. And I was like, sure. I don't still don't know why he actually needed to die, but okay. Um, and she's like, no, whatever, fuck you. And then he takes a gun and shoots him in the heart. Hey, remember that vascular tunnel? Oh, God. Remember that? that well, now she can she can shoot it on command after uh, not, not having fired a gun. And yes. <laughs> uh. Yep. Just doing and she goes now? there, she grabs like his necklace. I actually forgot what the necklace was. I, I have to admit, I forgot to write down what it is. Some tracking device, maybe. Uh, I completely forgot what what that was about. She takes the necklace. Maybe it's just a... Hey, so he can find her. Probably. I'm, I'm not sure. But he, it, it, it gives it to Carlos and he scans it. I, 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 don't, th I don't remember it being relevant for anything. Uh, in the end here, I just remember her grabbing it, and that's the re that's how she stops the bleeding by putting a little napkin in the hole or something because that's enough. Yeah, that's, that would not work. <laughs> oh my god! 
What if it's shot it's through? Like, what if it's shot through the yeah, back? Yeah, I know. Like, and she <laughs> said it goes right through. And I was like, well, what about the fucking exit wound? That's going to be yeah. like five times the size yeah. of the entry wound. I hate to break it to you. So, you know all that tissue that gets pushed out of the way when a bullet enters a body? It's got to go somewhere. And it goes out the back. And he's like, she's like, oh, don't worry. I can find Alfie. I can think clearly now. I remember everything. So now she's back back. Like she knows everything again. Uh. I, I, I think like because that. I Aiden told her the things or whatever. Uh, it's like, oh, let me go to the pewter and uh, I'm gonna find the, uh, the the thing. And she just memorizes the like number plates and there's somehow the number plates work in a certain way, so she could know in which place it kinda is. And then she found the thing. But the whole plan is actually, ah, uh, now that I can use your mainframe, I can. Uh, they actually say mainframe, by the way. Um, Oh my god. Now that I access to your mainframe, I was able to send the files to Alfie, but it didn't work because you didn't have authorization. So that failed. But I guess good on the baddies for actually having proper security, I guess. But I don't even know how she managed to make that sneakily while they were standing behind her looking at the screen with her. I don't even know why she sneakily tried to do that. I don't I don't understand. They don't explain. I'm not gonna ask. Fuck you, movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then she just kind of knocks them both out. Uh, Aiden wakes back up. He beats up the two guys who are trying to take uh, get rid of her. Did he just get shot? Huh? Did he not just get shot? Like, what's going Even if he was wearing a bulletproof breast, that was, those things still fucking hurt. Like, oh, no. A Aiden got, got shot through that vascular tunnel. It's yeah. what I'm saying. Even if he had a vest <laughs> on, this would be stupid. But, like, he should be dead. Like, no, no, he's fine. He, he wakes up, he beats no. up the two guys. And luckily for him, there's some supplies in the same room he got shot. So he, he, he fucking... <laughs> he takes four shots down. of adrenaline and puts it in his body. I don't even yeah. want to... I don't even want to guess what that... Pack? I don't even want to <laughs> guess what that does to your body. Yeah, there's a fucking shot. med pack over there, he's got adrenaline? What the hell? Well, once you've been shot through the heart, nothing helps that, like, accelerating your heart to an, in, in, to an intolerable speed. And that's, uh, yeah, that's... And he kind of he patches dead himself. Before he got to the end of the table. So not, that's not what epinephrine does, everybody. Yeah, man. Uh, and yeah, he escapes. He he uh, he he goes to the armory. Uh, same as uh, as Rachel after she uh, knocks out the 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 uh, Vogler and Rita. Uh, Rita does a red alarm. Uh, and. Now we're going. Now we're getting to the big two action scenes in this movie, and this is where the tone shift just all of a sudden is like, what? Is, what is? What am I actually yeah, watching? It, it becomes. It becomes ridiculous, <laughs> like as if really? it wasn't yet. So okay, that's the, that's the harshest thing you've said about this whole movie. So I can't believe what's gonna happen. And I just oh, have to say, you you guys Buckle weren't. Up. You guys weren't You're, kidding. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. One second. I want to ask Brooks a question before we go uh, out of this. You ever play hockey? Uh, no, no, I wasn't much wrong. I'm more of, <laughs> okay, more of, a, okay. more of a martial arts and wrestling, man. I was just it, it, It's okay. Uh, me too, actually. But um, have, you, have you skated ever? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was a sick skater, even though I, had no, I would legit good. just hop okay, on skates. Yeah, yeah, and no, just, perfect, yeah. perfect. Any I'll sport, I would just be able to hop right in and be like, I have no idea what the rules are, but just tell but me which way I'm running. The no, idea no, is no, you, we, you we, understand, we the, you <laughs> understand the the process of how physics. that works with ice yeah, the physics and stuff. You know, yes, it's you yeah. got to have actual balance and dexterity. There's skill to it. Like, uh, no, Trust me. Just just wait. Yeah. Well, give me the exact time step that you have if you can, Metal, just in case. I want to make sure we're I don't have a time step. Oh, you don't? I'm just going for my notes. Let metal tell you. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go. I'm just making sure. No, I'm not gonna watch it. I'm just making sure. I'm back well, the thing so. Mark is talking about is after the uh, the first action scene. So. Oh yeah. We, uh, and I, I was I was gonna say real quick. You guys weren't kidding. He's legit just watching a Lakers game. He's not doing. Yeah, he's just anything. chilling out. He's just waiting for the <laughs> file to come in. Yeah, that, that was a paycheck job for sure. It's like, yeah. hey, I, I've got a role that you want to fill in. He's like, is there any way that I can just be sitting on a couch watching a Lakers game? He's like, oh, yeah, I'll probably figure that out. Uh, so they also lampshade how dumb the vascular tunnel thing is, uh, which is always nice. Because they, they meet up in the in the armory. It's like, oh, I, I, it's like, oh, we're on the same team. It's like, same team, you shot me. It's like, yeah, but remember that thing that fan sent me? I did that to you. I shot you through that vascular tunnel thingy. And then he says, like, that's the dumbest thing I heard in my life. And I was like, I agree. Yeah, that's true. But it's lampshaded. But then he's like, wow. So you like he, he literally says, oh, 
After not shooting a gun for five years, you did that to me, what you read in a, what a fan sent to you. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's impressive. And then I want to meet that fan. So they're lampshaded, so it's fine now. She yeah. said that she looked it up to make sure it was a real thing. It was real. Yeah. I like, did I the research and stuff. You. It's like, yeah, but that shot is in insane. <laughs> Even when the, the whatever. So. If you had X-ray vision, it would be an insane shot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um. So yeah, now they're like, oh, you want to dance? So they, 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 arm themselves in here, and they have like a shit ton of uh smoke grenades with different colors and stuff. Uh, they make sure they show us they have some kind of thermal vision so they can see the enemies. So there's like a bunch of enemies like just lining up outside. They open the door, start smoking everything up with, like, different colors and shit. And uh, that's... Now we get, like, an insane scene. They just spin around, dance, shoot everybody in one shot. They don't get shot back at. I think if what? they get shot back at, no, no one hits. We have a bunch of people just running towards, the, to, uh, towards them with rifles in their hands. We have, like, all the things. It's visually kind of cool, but it gets old really fast. Uh, you can't see anything. You just see them spinning around and there's like hearts forming from the smoke because, you know, they remember they're in love and stuff. It's like, ugh. None of it's earned. If you're just, what you're describing well, sounds like something that could have been fun had they actually built a proper film to lead up to that. And also well, I mean, go ahead. Technically, it's technically it's a mess too because you can't see anything. Yes. Like, it's like, it's not even just, okay, well, they're doing like an interpretive dance sequence slash fight scene with a bunch of colored fog around to like for effect, almost like a scene out of a musical. So it's like, even with that in mind, it's like, yeah, but I, I can't see what they're doing for most of it mm -hmm. or who they're fighting because it, like there's a couple of scenes where it, it's like they, they cut to reality for a moment. And like when they're doing the whirly bird, did you notice there's like a shot where as they're getting to the end of it, Sam Rockwell's just on the ground and has his arm, his arms over her shoulders and is shooting while they're spinning, uh -huh. kind of implying that they weren't actually doing the whirly bird. And maybe there wasn't actually that colored smoke everywhere. Yeah. But it was really strange because they never make it clear what's actually happening. It's like, is this just her fantasy version of what's going on? And she's having so much fun that she's pretending it's this whimsical scene out of a romance novel. Or is no, that, that what they're been, actually... That would have been interesting. That's just actually what happens. In the movie that we made, this could have been awesome. Just what I was saying. Yeah. You would have had room to take something like that seriously. Because I'm, I'm you skimming through and I kind of see the visual. You, you could have, have taken it seriously. You could have done them like back to back. Like the thing that actually happened is like a crazy action scene where they realize again. It's like, oh man, I remember him being in love, whatever the fuck. And it's like a, just a cool action scene and a shootout and whatever. And then we cut over to her book. And it's like all the hearts and the smoke, and it's like real. Well, like, they, which that, yeah, how she re, like two two different versions of it, like her yeah. like her, her love version of it with all the smoke, and this is going to cheese it. Like the the arcane scene where we saw the Jinx and Echo, yeah, where you, something awesome. like that, something like that, like, that, like that, fucking yeah. well, I mean, do something. Like, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like they kind of do, but they only they show it for like a few frames. So they like, show they, what they, they could have really done you enough. Yeah. And, and show uh, what they could have done constantly. Like it's the, movies like this when you can easily rewrite them is the most frustrating because it's like you had it, you had Cranston, you had all these other people. Like yeah. there's no reason this couldn't have been a great movie. Like you have all this this talent. It's just. But yeah, well, this yeah. all is going on. Ritter is trying to figure out what's going on. He's like, I can't see anything. What is happening? And then yeah, the after fight scene choreographer and me was bothered by it. I was like, Oh, why are you doing it this way? You know what bothered me the most? After all Ritter's men died, he's like, open the extraction vents. It's like, fucking start with that. There's smoke everywhere. You could have just gotten yeah. rid of it immediately. Smoke, what the, the fuck are you doing? Smoke that our side is not using nor equipped to deal with. Therefore, first action would be get that smoke out of this yeah. hallway if we can do that with and a button it, press. It was gone really quickly. It's very effective extraction vents. So, great. Uh... And that's also what I mean with the with the with the tonal shift, uh, with the action scene specifically. It's just we went from normal-ish action sequences to now this. And yeah. believe me, you're not ready for what's coming next. Oh my <laughs> yes! I wanna I wanna add one more thing though with the extraction vents thing. They say open the extraction vents. All of the smoke leaves the hallway, yes. and then the two characters extract through a vent. 
And I was just like, that's, <laughs> that's true. Like, why? I was like, what did like that is it's awkward the way that was written. And then what you're showing immediately afterwards. Mm hmm. They could have just left through a door. You could have had them walk around a corner and into the scene. Oh, <laughs> you did oh not God. need to need them crawl into a vent after the bad guy says, open the extraction vents. Because it almost seems like, wait, did he just give them an escape route? Yeah, yeah. Good what? point. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Stupid, uh, stupid, stupid. So, yeah, there's more, the big one. <laughs> so there's more enemies coming and they have a bit of a shootout and they end up in the fuel tank room or something. Because they start shooting things and then oil starts spilling out. Lots of CGI oil, uh, mind you. Uh, and it's like, oh, stop shooting, stop shooting. If There's oil everywhere. If we shoot, like the whole thing just blows up and we all die. Uh, so they make I very clear those are the rules. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so they can't use guns. Um, and they they're like cornered they're behind some cover and the other ones slowly make their way towards them over the slippery oil with some with knives and like okay we're gonna have a little knife fight I mean that could have been could be interesting with the oil and stuff like how they are they gonna do that all of a sudden Rachel asks Aiden hey can I uh can I actually ice skate by the way first of all you said you remembered everything so that was a lie you dumb bitch. Uh, <laughs> And then it says, "Yeah, you're a pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good ice skater." Actually, it's like, okay, no way. So she puts knives minute. on her soles and starts <laughs> oil cross- skating. Oh fucking no! <laughs> I'm just like, no, give me this stupid. I'm just like, it just hit me. Like that's why you. Oh, it, I, yep. I, 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 I can't believe it's this stupid. What she you're puts describing. another I, knife. This and- is fucking. She puts another knife <laughs> onto the rifle on top, <laughs> uses it as a bayonet, basically. And she just goes around and starts uh, stabbing people uh, left and right. She it's like she's on ice, and that's not how that would work at all. That's not <laughs> how you... It don't work that way, man. I'm and so here's sorry. The thing, here's the other thing. If we would have still be in the, in, in, in the tone that we set in the beginning, that would have happened in yes. the book... I would yes. have been on board yes. for this. Yes, but yes. this is not you what we've been doing work. the whole movie. <laughs> uh, we've we've you've cracked the code. Like this is the pattern. Every single thing stems back to the premise that they abandoned at the beginning. Yeah. would have made all of this more believable. The whole heart scene thing. I'm looking at that, thinking, what the fuck is this? This can't be the same movie that I'm watching. Yeah, but it has to be the fucking. You know, like you could have made this work in terms of like, like I, the the, Ar- the arcane reference they gave in terms of showing two different perspectives or whatnot. Yeah, and I would love to see this because then you can. You, you, it makes sense, but. It's all just fucking nonsense. And then I can't believe this is what you were building me up for. The skating thing. Like, no. Yep. So she starts uh, and- stabbing everybody. He's, uh, everybody is down. And then Richard's like, fuck the security protocols. Shoot her. And th- then she goes sliding <laughs> around, grabs a rifle, starts doing spinny spins like pirouettes and shit. And firing. And just fires the fucking rifle <laughs> full <laughs> auto in a circle and kills everybody. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, hold on. <laughs> and now that I'm looking at it, you get the fucking front shot. And now she's doing a fucking karate. Ca- oh my god. And you're just a right. like You're totally just getting rid of throwing the rules. She's like Wonder Woman. <laughs> She's Wonder Woman. Like it, it's okay. This is humiliating. This might be more humiliating for her than Cavill. Like her career is over. It's done. The skate scene. So the restriction like, they put I mean, on this you know, in the beginning they, is completely meaningless. Like nothing happens. Oh God! I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you you have to fuck. Yeah, the gun now. You have, they you establish the whole knife thing and then you completely abandon it. Yeah. Like, you stupid fuckers. While well, the whole this room is, is still enough. covered in oil. <laughs> this is so stupid. How did yeah, they prove I mean, this? Uh, well, I I don't know. I guess someone was like, "Look, we got we have a CGI model of Bryce Dallas Howard, and her boobs are just not going to obey the laws of physics at all. <laughs> what, what can we have her do? How can we have her spinning around and stuff? Well, I don't know. Can she be skating at any point? Uh, I guess anyone so. in the what kills me is the, the sheer they they just don't understand the concept of ice skating. Yes, you wear you wear blades. Because the blades are cutting into the into ice the as ice. you're moving. It she is would t- not just thin things on slippery. It's I kind know. of hilarious because it would have just made it would have made more sense if she wouldn't have put the knives on her shoe. <laughs> because that yeah, no, just all that she needed to do was around. no her experience. Fuck the knives. She has experience with skating, so she's gonna have advantage with balance that yeah. these yeah. guys have. And you could yeah, have had a cartoonish version of that. Been but fun. this. 
this is a joke. Like, this is stupid. This is like, it's not even everyone in the chat who hasn't seen this movie and is just watching. Oh my God, she's spinning around with the gun now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and well, but what, what kills me is like there's there's a version of this fight scene with even her saying, "Well, I mean, maybe I can use some of the skating stuff here." It's okay. It's a knife fight. Have him be injured or something because it's kind of stupid that he doesn't even try to do anything. Also, like it's like Aiden, you could you still have a knife. You could push yourself over yeah. and slide across the floor. And I thought it would be cool if she started doing stuff like that while getting caked in oil and getting grittier, looking like she's at the end of Predator the entire time while stabbing people in the chest if they wanted to go for like an actual action scene that we yep. could take seriously. But then in her head, cutting to her being perfectly in her dress with her makeup fully done and she's skating around gracefully while doing the fight. You can have her fantasize about that while doing gritty actual spy stuff anything cool way to do that cut, yeah. ba cut back and forth we can have those goofy scenes but give them context by making it a fantasy but instead I mean, you just humiliate this actress the like everyone in the chat needs to see this scene if you it's legit <laughs> like, here, like, I, fuck, I fuck, like even with no context just watching it and just be, let your jaw drop like they I, spoiled it for me and i still like <laughs> i i'm like uh, it's quite, it's quite the scene. It's quite the scene. There is a silver lining. It's not even exaggerating. It's there like... is, I'll say, though, there is a silver lining. That scene, the version of that scene that you probably wanted, is in The King's Man. I won't tell you how it's set up, but the idea of, like, guns are not an option right now, so we're going we're going knives and melee weapons. There's Featuring a oil skating? No, no. <laughs> that's the part I can't... You know, that's the part that it's going to be hard no. to find a reference for. <laughs> like, that's... No, just... that, uh, what I'm saying is that's the setup for the scene that could have resulted in a good scene, and they went with yeah. oil skating. No, that's they... that's the part we all agreed with. Like, I, I, I like that in even Aliens, how they can't... Like, no guns, no fight... Like, creating stakes and and uh and rules for them to follow so now it, it justifies having it plays out very much the same where it's the enemies realize oh we can't fire either and so yes. both sides decide okay we've we've got to do melee for this and they mm. all like they're facing off essentially and they take out their knives and one has an axe and stuff like that and it's just this cool standoff that results yeah. in a really brutal fight scene that's quite good it's probably the best scene in the movie honestly but uh, yeah, I re watch the King's Man, everybody. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not altogether terrible. All right, we're on the on the finishing stretch here. We're almost done. But there's one big, uh, one more big kicker that even that <sighs> ruins the movie even more. No more metal. No fucking way. How? What can you do? Wait for it. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Go metal. So. Uh... Yeah, they beat everybody and they're like, let's go to the server room so we can send the files to Alfie from there. Uh, but then they get cornered by Rita because none of them t t t looks at the door at the time, uh, whatever. Uh, I was like, oh no, he's got the gun pointed at them, but don't you worry, the, the cat saves the day because that uh, case got fucking shot at some point, so it jumps out and scratches the fuck out of him so he's distracted he gets shot and it's like oh no we needed his eyes to actually mm. get the file out uh what now so it's like oh don't worry there's another way so i don't even know why they brought that up but yeah ritter is dead now he got shot and um, scratched the fuck by the cat because justice for the cat <laughs> oh my god this is like oh god the cgi cat it's so bad that's the worst shot of it like the yeah. fucking Victor pounds. Like, so what they, the hell was that? Man? So they Still used better the, they used the elevator <laughs> to go up and realize, oh shit, we're in a big old tanker ship now. Actually, that's where they had their secret base is. Which fine, I don't fine with me. Uh, so they use a, a a dish on top to start sending the file, and it starts sending. <sighs> so now Fogla comes around because she's not dead yet. She only got knocked out, and <laughs> she has like a little song thingy in her hand that you like a, like a wind up uh, song thingy uh I jukebox i don't know what they're called a uh, jukebox or music box yeah music box with like yeah, a thing. Music box. so it starts doing the song and she goes like delta gamma bravo thingy so she basically has a switch with words that makes rachel do whatever she wants which she is only Winter Soldier using now. <laughs> Which she only what, what, what? thinking to use this now. Oh my god! They built, man. This, they built this in when she was hypnotized five fucking years ago, and they never used it here. No. 
when she they was... could have just turned her in they could have pressed the kill button on her at any time and they just decided not to. Yep. so they break the whole movie again like yep. that's just they could have used that when when they meet crackling. they could could have met up in london they could have used that to get her away for for somewhere you're gonna use that on it the train means and that... had her kill aiden immediately it or means that. that every single thing we've ever seen them do in this movie was stupid and pointless because they could have yeah. just done that everything we've seen them do every single second on screen it was a waste of time yeah but we Laura, needed aiden and rachel Laura. to fight uh so the, the she stops the download and then starts again and then it stops again at 96 percent, which is kind of funny because that's probably enough data transmitted to actually have all you need for the files but i digress uh, they have like the fight and then she, she's in the post with the crushing skulls from the beginning about to kill him and then oh no deus ex machina kira she's actually still alive in this in, in real life she's been following them the whole time apparently and uh, knocks the music box out of the hand of Vogler and beats her up or something, and stops she's her. She's also from... one to one, one to one. Her same character. From yeah, it's the, the same book. character. She's the the book. only one who's the same person. Because everybody thought uh, she was dead, so she, there was no need to keep her secret or a secret identity. And uh, yeah, she saves the day. She dares ex machina, so Aiden doesn't get killed by Rachel, and they can finish the download. And uh, you know what? You know what else? She was the fan that sent the tunnel thing, vascular tunnel thing, because that's how she survived in real life. She was yeah, the fan. Yeah, and I guess she, she apparently knew that she also couldn't reach out to her and just say, hey, um, you know that character you wrote in the book? that That's me, and you're, yeah. you're Argyle. So and apparently, so you know. apparently her friends didn't check for her again in those five years. They just all assumed she was dead, I guess. She also Nobody. never contacted Aiden, apparently. No. She also didn't and, figure it out herself. There was nothing that jogged her memory. She didn't run into like an old like friend or anything like that. An old like a song. All the fucking different things they can do. There's so many ways you can play with this concept, and yeah. this is a movie that is fuck all. Like they, they they've wasted like multiple different concepts that we've seen used in different movies. It's one of these for, on top of Cavill and Bryce too. I've never really had any beef with her, but like this is embarrassing. No. Um. But yeah, they, they win. They finish the, the upload. Uh, Samuel Jackson can watch his Lakers game again, I guess. Uh, <laughs> they the they send all the data, which I don't I don't even know if that means anything anymore because they blow up the tanker where everyone is on, so they're dead. So they don't even need the master file anymore, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I guess we're assuming there's more bad guys. Probably. It's just funny. Ah, <laughs> funny. Uh, we have the dirt on you, and now we blow you up. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the problem with making the leader of the organization the villain in the first movie. Like, right. if, if you want to have it be this big, like, spy organization, like Spectre or something, like, you you kind of need to just establish them and then make sure you know that, yeah, the, the person you just defeated, not even one of the lieutenants. You know, like, <laughs> it goes way bigger than this dude, and he had a plan to destroy the world or whatever mm -hmm. it is. That's generally yeah, how that can Bond be done movies really well. It can be done really, really well if you... um create this the, you know the, <clears throat> the proper hierarchy and like respect it and make it believable that there's other people that that they're gonna harp on the food chain instead of just embarrassing the top guy from the very beginning the, like the conflict... in, uh, ahsoka is probably the worst i've ever seen because he was the one last piece of star wars i was kind of interested in in terms of being like a space tywin and ahsoka like he's the cope king like i've, I've never seen like something just get thrown like showing the top guy and making him shit right off the bat like one of the worst things you can do. Hmm. Well, that's how you subvert expectations. Keep your audiences on their toes. Wait, you just want stories where you know what's going to happen all the time? Oh, my God. <laughs> God, I hate that. Oh. I know. Uh, but, yeah, they blow up the thing. Uh, we uh, transition one more time to the Henry Cavill character where they leave the, the, the tanker with the explosion and uh, transitioning back to her releasing her fifth book. Uh, basically saying, oh, it's nice to not have any uh, any missions anymore for Argyle, so that's nice. And then some lady asks, oh, what are, are all the characters going to do now that they're done? So it's like, oh, Kira always wanted to be big and tagged like the Steve Jobs, so she might gonna, she's probably going to do that. And uh, Argyle and uh, the other guy probably going to do stuff together, meaning Aiden and... 
Rachel, well, because they're they're a pair, and then CIA uh, CIA man uh, Alfie is going to be reinstated and going to be real cool, and uh, they lived happily ever after. And then Henry Cavill gets up in real life as like I guess a real guy, a real life Argyle. It's like, oh, you maybe want to talk to me, and I. But also, he looks like Joe Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> And then the movie ends, and then there's like kidding. one mid mid credit scene where they where there's like an implication that it's all tied to the Kingsman universe, and uh, there's a real Argyle man apparently. But I couldn't find the the after credit <laughs> scene Joe anywhere, Dirt. so I don't know. <laughs> Joe Dirt, you're right. And I, I'm guessing the idea is that he's gonna be like her ex boyfriend or something <clears throat> if they do a sequel. I I don't know. I hope this doesn't get a sequel. <laughs> I mean, well, but I mean, I think their plan was to do like a sequel and a prequel. I doubt that's going to happen because apparently this movie's tanking. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like nobody cares about just... this movie, really. I mean, well, I, I hear the next no thing. The, the next thing he's doing, though, in this universe, I suppose, is um, a fourth Kingsman movie that's going to be a sequel to Golden Circle, which now I'm much less excited about, I gotta mm. say. I like I was I was because I I'd only seen Golden Circle the one time in theater and I remember thinking ah, I didn't really like that one that much but I, I guess I'd settled into being like I guess there was some okay stuff in it whatever it was fine I just never went back to watch it watching it last night it was incorrect it's it's very 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 bad and it really damages Kingsman almost irreparably which is why it was interesting that the next Kingsman film that came out was effectively kingsman house of the dragon where it's like hey this is a prequel <laughs> it's all just gonna lead up to things that happen before any of the characters you meet in the modern day ones so yeah this prequels has own... become the plan b for like recycling yeah. franchises mm. it could work sometimes you get hot d or maybe you get prometheus so you never know yeah i, I think the kingsman though is a good example of it i think there's even people in chat saying the the, the fight that i was referring to is is a good one it's it's well regarded by most people who've seen that film I am uh, blown away by how stupid this movie was. Yeah. Like, I, I fucking, I think it's hilarious that the part that I stopped at, considering like you're not, you weren't even kidding, it gets so much worse. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, total that's, that's switch. What I, mean. I was like, this is yeah, like, the total, be interesting this... for you to know like the, the twist and I'm everything that I, happens afterwards. Glad it worked out that way, 100%. Like the, the tonal twist and mostly for me, just the wasted opportunities, man. Like, all the points that we made in terms of how all these stupid scenes could have worked with the right context, and you literally had an opportunity to provide that context with the concept that you abandoned in the first, like, five, ten minutes. And that could have made all this shit cheaper. work. Our cheaper. Been a lot cheaper. Cheaper. This more interesting. Yeah. Ultra expensive. Because this was, like, 200 million, I think. Oh, don't fucking get me started again on this stuff. Why are we still doing Joker? Joker, 50 million. Godzilla, minus, minus one. one. Minus one. Minus <laughs> one. Less than 15. I think it was like 12 million is what I'm hearing. Yeah, which is and disgusting. it made like over 100 million. Like, That's hey, what it should be. And one of my biggest inspirations, like to try to eventually maybe do some writing, is like the low budget um, horror, like um, 15 grand or something for, for uh, yeah. Paranormal Activity. And that made like $200 million. And um, Blair Witch Project was around the same, some stupid amount of uh, profit margin. It's because you have all you need is a good idea. That's it. Yeah. You don't need all this shit. Like this was nonsense. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> totally, completely confused. Uh, we talked about how weirdly the concept has been dropped immediately. Uh, you could have just intertwined the actual action with like those silly action scenes and made it like a fun experience. Maybe just go back and forth between what's in her mind or what she's going to write in the book in the future and it's actually going to do it. Because you could have just spun it around. It's like she's a writer who's also a spy who yep. writes the stories in a hyperbolic way where you have the, the, the hearts and the oil skating or whatever. While in real life, it's not oil skating. It's like a, a dirty, slippery fight where they barely to have balanced out and but yeah, wins still like she impressively. Could be... And then in the book, it's like, actually, it's like, oh, just skating, going crazy. Like, ooh. You know? You're immediately giving me an idea of a writer who's, like, taking her horror stories. Like, each one of these crazy, goofy things that we're seeing is her trying to, like, censor all the violence and make it, like, more appealing yeah, for, like, yeah. maybe her audience or something. Like, maybe this is appealing. To, like, all the flower scene, that whole with the hearts and the kisses and whatnot. 
and then cutting back and seeing the real version of that scene and all and all that was blood and like yeah. and cutting back that and like cool. explaining explaining what the heart represented like House of Usher style that mm-hmm. type of thing and it, it could be you some fucked up thing. I want to see a horror movie type of concept mixed with the, the, all the goofiness that they did. Like fucking do something, make an you idea guys, here. Do you guys remember that old YouTube um, action scene CGI expert dude? I, I remember he made this short film called like Flower Warfare or something, where it's oh, like that's, rings it's a bell. all like CGI, I can't remember the CGI name. Muzzle flashes and like projectiles coming out of guns. They're all like flowers, but they shoot it like an action scene that they're taking seriously. <laughs> but all the guns are shooting flowers and all that the immediately sounds are funny. Flowers. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, yeah, I, I forget what the guy's name is, but I think he went on to like be an actual VFX artist in Hollywood uh, or something. Other, but, oh, that's uh, the the rocket jump guys. Is, is that their other one? I mean, Floor or Warfare their... at the beginning. That's like for, for rocket jump, yeah. Oh, is rocket jump their name? I, I could have That's it was a YouTube like channel at dude, least. Though, that... Yeah, that's what I mean. I think that was the YouTube channel, but there uh, it was one guy was I think the main talent behind it was some Asian dude. I forget what his yeah, name yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. They also have the Mexican standoff thingy with uh, Key and Peel. Uh, oh yeah. I think they also there's like other stuff with Mario where glitch Mario glitches in real life and stuff like that. I think. But yeah, but what I mean is like you can you can do action scenes like that in a way where they are entertaining and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's. Uh, yeah, you just you have stylized. to give a narrative context for it or like a Freddy Wong. Not, is his not name. even Freddy not Wong. Even, that's it, yeah. You don't even have to give context sometimes as long as you stay consistent with the tone. That's why Kill yep. Bill works. They established right from the beginning that it's gonna be like hyper action style, you know? So the thing she does is it's it's within that world, it it feels fine. But you can't suddenly just change that, you know? You gotta stick to what you committed to at the beginning. Yeah. It's doubly this weird because they, they do tie it into the Kingsman universe, which is over the top. And then they just go this serious route in the beginning. It's really weird. There's a lot of weird choices with this one well, just I, overall. I, I still want to, like, what happens in this post credit scene exactly? Oh, it's, it's, like 20, <laughs> it's like 20 years in the past, like before this. And like a young, okay. I, I, I think if I remember correctly, a young Argyle goes to, the, to this Kingsman pub. It's like, oh, I've been sent by blah, blah, blah. And then there's just it, like... A... Is the Argyle... Is like, are we talking Bryce Dallas Howard or Henry Cavill? It, none. It's like a child. It's like a teenager. Oh, but is it, is it male or female? Like, which... Oh, it's a male. <laughs> like, it's a male. Okay, so we're like... And I think the implication uh, is it's, it's the young version of the Hen- Henry Cavill character we see at the end. That's how I understood it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's bizarre. <laughs> But why? <laughs> but why? Well, I mean, I guess if, if the Kingsman pub becomes a thing, that would make sense with Golden Circle because the Statesmen are a whiskey company and they say that the, we'll help rebuild you with like utilizing resource from our alcohol company. Mm-hmm. So I guess that that might be what they end up doing is they, they get a line of pubs to get their money back because they basically destroy the entire Kingsman institution and in Golden Circle because it's a terrible movie. It's very bad. I, it, it angered me last night because I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, this is worse than I remember by a lot. <laughs> it seems like a pattern with a lot of these action movies. Like, look at the first John Wick and then the rest of it just turns into a meme. Version this video. Oh, Jesus. Uh, like it just, this, it's very difficult to have longstanding action franchises that are consistently good. Um, that's Wait, why you gotta, apparently you the after credits. Appreciate the ones oh, happen. But no, go ahead. Uh, apparently the after credit scene also reveals Taylor Swift. I don't remember that. Maybe that's that's the second one I didn't even see because I Get wanted her to go out home. of my face. I'm so tired of seeing Taylor Swift everywhere. I'm just like, what is she doing here? Are you not a Swifty? <laughs> no, go away. Right. I, I I don't know. I'm happy songs. for her success. I'm sure she worked hard. But it's she's, little and it's, she's the it girl, and it's very annoying well, right now. Taylor she's Swift, will, she'll now be in the history books as like the person who actually got the government to regulate ai pornography <laughs> that's true like, you know, yeah, because she has like a big thing going on right now i mean yeah like she she might have actually changed the world in in a weird way last week well i did i didn't hear too much about that something about what, what well, it, it just became a thing that people started to like torrent posting like just everyone started posting ai generated <clears throat> 
it, it, non non appropriate images of Taylor oh, like Swift. Nudes for, yeah, that's yeah, the thing that's and, gonna be so fucked up where you can't even tell the difference and people are getting right. accused of things they didn't do. Like they show fucking like Brad Pitt sucking off Samuel Jackson. And it's like you can't even fucking <laughs> it's like what the fuck? No, that didn't happen, bro, in like the nineties or some shit. <laughs> Photoshop that like Photoshop it's, and AI, like we need to have some real like how copyright and fair use is like a clear a weird thing. Like we need to figure that shit out too, because like future's gonna be weird. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Argyle, uh, don't watch it. It's bad. Um, trash. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 no, movie. watch the ice skating scene. That's the one of the most hilarious things I've ever. That's funny. Like, Out of I context, just... probably even more enjoyable. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 fucking stupid. It's really dumb. Were they t to tell me though? Were they taking it seriously, or were they at least was it goofy like in context a little? Because I, I saw I saw it muted. It looked pretty goofy from what I can tell. I mean, oh, there's no there's they... really, not really any talking. It's just happening really. Like, my issue with the Echo fight was that they think this is cool. They're taking this seriously. Yeah. They think she's so badass right now. I'm like, get the fuck off my screen. <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's just another problem because this feels like more tongue-in-cheek while the other scenes are just, like, straight-up action scenes, you know? Yeah, this mixing the tone in a way that's just, you got to decide, man. What are you, trying to, what are you trying to yeah, do I, here? I have no concept of what the rules of this universe are, especially once you told me that now Kingsman is the same universe. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. What's even yeah. happening? But um, I'd say be, be, before we wrap it up, I just, just out of suggestion, we all love action movies. Any yeah. suggestions for the chat or anything? Just oh, some man. of your favorites. I mean, I, I got the right uh, movies physically right over there in my in my cupboard. Uh, yeah, the right Ip Man, Ong Bak, or The Protector, whatever you find it under. Those are really good. Uh, oh, The Protector like and Ong Bak are different movie. movies. Are they? Yeah. The yeah, Protector's yeah. a sequel. It's like the second movie. He did no, no, two no, movies. No, 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 no. There's, there's Ong Bak. There's three Ong Bak movies, and then the Protector is, a, he's a different character. Yeah, I, 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 I misspoke. I said, the, I said his sequel, kind of meaning movie. like his second, his second like big yeah, movie. Yeah, I don't his, really know the fault. other Ong Baks, but I'm telling you, man, I, the I, stair, there's still well fight in the Protector is like one of the. Best I, you took it out of my fucking mouth. Yeah. That's one of the worst, mm -hmm. best long takes. Like he's, it's just like ten minutes of him just fucking people up. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I might have to do a scene went. comparison on that one day. I forgot that existed until you just like kind of like <laughs> sprung that up into my head. Um, yeah, yeah but... I haven't seen Old Boy and The Raid. Those are two that have been oh. on my list for like the longest time. I'm Old Boy waiting. has some really I'm good ones waiting. as well. Yeah, I haven't seen that and in not a while. Lot, though. Old Boy I... is primarily a thriller more than it is an action movie. But there is like yeah, there's like one classic action scene towards the beginning actually. Yeah. But um, The Raid is beginning to end like nonstop legendary fight scenes have it's, you seen uh, um eastern promises no. yeah yeah it's a great fight at the end I, I, you go right to it i'm saying <laughs> I, I, great fight i would say arguably the most grounded gritty fight like ever fucking yeah. filmed like so, yeah. would you agree with that like at least should be up there right it's not to like, spoil it, it too much but <laughs> metal metal like one of the most fucking visceral fights you'll ever one of the most realistic fights i could possibly think of happens at the end of this this crime movie with between Morton, two so. between two nude men mm. no, no vigo is legit gets attacked in a sauna by two fucking yeah. mobsters and he <laughs> fights them to the like the fight that they have this fucking dick is swinging around everywhere during the fight like it's the most real like yeah. i can't believe how realistically filmed it was and he just just him committing to that i was like Cronenberg, holy shit man. like we were talking about um bail <laughs> for like um bail for all the weight loss stuff and everything yeah but vigo needs to be amongst those lists for like his to do a nude fight scene like that like i, I don't know if i'd have the courage for that like that's fucking <laughs> insane you know that's crazy but it's fantastic check that out one time sure. promises. i'm gonna write that down I, I would recommend that. also uh, um oh god history of violence um, also a david cronenberg movie that he made with vigo mortensen right before eastern promises and mm. history of violence has some really good fight scenes too. i do remember that i remember the nice build up to like what's going on here and then said like, oh shit badass they did 50 Definitely takes badass. to really get the proper dick swing shots <laughs> what that's I, I think that was a joke in in chat oh oh <laughs> if not <laughs> that would be i thought you were funnier. looking it up that's what i'm saying like how many takes are you comfortable <laughs> and action oh if you know what the punches and everything were good well we didn't quite get your dingus <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing if you're doing a nude fight scene you should fire your agent if they don't say look you got to make his dick look pretty good okay, like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. if, if there's a shot where there was a draft on set for a minute that we we got a heater and sorted out <laughs> don't use any of those takes okay and this part of the thing i part of the reason this one should be mentioned i don't feel like it was a vanity project they want it looked 
like a real fight scene, like how your fucking schlong would look if you're trying to kill two guys, <laughs> like not trying to fucking, you know, yeah. like it's, 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 I can't think of a, the atomic blonde fight scene that I just put in, it impressed me in terms of, I've never seen such a female fight scene that was so grounded, like, like the damage that that bitch took. It's yeah. on that level, but like, like, yeah, definitely check it out. Good stuff. Uh, Compared yeah. to Argyle. No CGI cats. It's a party with the two bugs. Lots of <laughs> views on your Suicide Squad vid. Congrats. Well, thank you. Yeah, it, it passed yeah. like uh, over 10,000 while we were doing this. So people seem to enjoy nice, that. Nice. Very cool. Considering it's just a rant I cropped out of my stream at the end. That's just uh, not too bad. That's all it takes. I mean, it's fucking, it's over 30 minutes. It's just, <laughs> I talked with Damala about this briefly. It's like, I don't know how like the the chris stuckmans of the world talk about the movie for seven minutes only get it. it's like how like i'm a fucking moron idiot and i just it's talked 37 yeah. minutes about the game i just finished because <laughs> you care about it more like you don't need to be a fucking like a genius yeah to, if, if you, people they want to watch someone who cares because they're gonna actually give you the details that fucking matter like it's just it's the stuckmans that effect that you guys did a little while back, I'm not sure if you were on that one. Um, with the oh, that was at Mala's place when we were talking about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that uh, was the one. Yeah. Oh, fucking the hell. I've just. Best movies, or you... what was it, uh, of the year? That one? He just has nothing to say about anything. I just. That's, that's I can't crazy. fucking believe it, man. Like, I, I, we talked for like four or five hours about No Country for Old Men yesterday, and then me mm. and Uninspired talked for like another 90 minutes after that, like just about like random like stuff, like Attack on Titan and different type of things. And I, I just don't understand how you'd have that little say when this is your job. Like, you're one of the OGs on this shit. You do nothing. It's embarrassing. Chris well, I, he shit. does, does like the IGN formats, how reviews. Like, here's basically what happens in this but movie. Here's what it. I felt about it. And here's a letter grade. I tried watching his. Uh, his you're not getting any on... value from I it. I tried watching his review for Argyle. I got into it for like 10 seconds because the first thing is like, there's like the scene that talks about how writing works. I was going to click off. It's like, I don't care. It's nothing to do with oh, it. Like, Chris <laughs> Duckman. Chris Duckman arguably inspired my Midsummer review because oh, okay. I watched his and I was just fucking like, he's talking about how it rained when he went to the theater and shit and like a cut to him laughing about that. I'm like, what the fuck does this have to do with the movie? Was he on and after waiting through all that. Unless he was on shrooms, it didn't have anything to do with the movie then. That's what I'm saying. It's just rambling, rambling nonsense. And then he talks about the cinematography and the director. He doesn't talk about anything that happened in the movie. Nobody talked about the plot. Except for fucking drinker, it was like one of the first videos of his that I that I like really took in and watched, and I was like, finally, this guy Elise is like telling the truth, like saying, "What the fuck is this movie?" So that's what like when I made my midsummer video. After that, I'm just like, I need to say something. I'm so frustrated with this movie. Like everyone's praising it when I think it's one of the stupidest movies I've ever fucking watched in my life. Mm. So you never know where you're gonna your inspiration is gonna come from when it comes to this shit. But it, 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 people care. I cared about that movie. You cared about the rant that you did. It's just, that's just what matters. Like the the rant. The only time I uploaded a rant was my me watching the Ahsoka finale because it's just me genuinely losing my mind of like I can't yeah. believe how stupid this is. That's the so second <laughs> uh, second rando. I call them rando rants. The second one i did one on the marvels because i talked about it on my stream for like 20 something minutes i was like yeah. might as well just fucking upload it to the main channel because i'm not going to talk about it any other way yeah, yeah man that, that's that's how i've been putting content on my channel lately as well just like the uh, things i say during stream like clip yeah. this out people well, who don't want to watch me stream yeah but like that's the thing people might not want to watch me play like a dragon infinite well for eight hours but they might want to hear what i thought about yeah sure you know, movie you watched last night or whatever. I grumbled That's at two bucks. Talk about snowy movies and not playing God of War. Shaking my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, Grump, I finished God of War Valhalla. I told you. We talked about it last week. We did. It's always it's, it's always God good. of War shaming me. <laughs> oh, Brooks, have you have you played Sifu before? No. no. You should check that game out. Good game. It's, yeah. It's basically, martial arts movies. The game. It's amazing. It's really cool. No. The only me with games though is the weird one where like I'll play like one game and try to master it and just try to go like as high as this is this is like this is a game but that I you would have a lot of fun of doing. That. Yeah, that's that's I, a game I, you like, can master. See, see, I, I was, was saying um the perfect game for you then. <laughs> I do DVD content here and there, like on my second channel, because that's one of the main games that I play in terms of like just you know having good knowledge of the game or, or to be able to speak about it. Mm -hmm. But there's so many of those ones that are on my list. Like I, I can't. I have to beat Dark Souls one day. That, as a gamer, there's one of those <laughs> ones I just have to have to have under my belt. I do so, love like, me some Dark Souls. Or when Souls the time like comes. In general. 
maybe I'll stream it when the time comes. You can see me fucking fail because I've I've made it past like the first boss and like that's about it. If you ever <laughs> that, the if you play this and stream it, or the let me know. I, I love seeing people play that game for the very first time. It's my favorite yeah, I do. thing ever. Because you have such an understanding of the game, you know, oh, all, you can see, all, you can relate to all the failure. That's why it drives, <laughs> drives me and Mahler nuts when people in chat just try to uh, backseat a whole lot. When Mahler played uh, <laughs> Sekiro for the first time, people were trying to tell him how to play. And it's like, just If you roll, up. then you can die. It's just like, they don't understand the process of like, let, come on now, gamers are gamers. Just, yeah. They're smart people. We will figure it out. We've been doing this for fucking, you know, I'm assuming... I can guess right now that we've all been playing games since we were fucking kids. Like, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, sure. absolutely. So any gamer I... since the Super Nintendo. <laughs> Where I don't mind backseating during a stream is if I'm about to move on and then miss a good chunk of content. <laughs> yeah, really like that's see. that's the system. Because, uh, yeah, that, that's I, I have enjoyed that because uh, yeah. my chat does that for me often, and I, I end up getting more out of games than I otherwise would. For example, I, I fought a whole whole other boss that was the most difficult boss in the game for Super Mario RPG because oh. I never would have known where to get this secret boss. They're like, no, 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 fight the secret boss before you finish the game, and I'm like, uh, what? And yeah, and they they guided me to it. I got the secret boss. I yeah, mostly start asking when numbers. I get the feeling I'm getting towards the end, and it's like, Chad, if there's any any anything that I I'm gonna miss if I go past this point, or when I'm uh, getting close to the to the end, and I should do the rest of the things. Tell me that yeah. I want to know that because <laughs> I want. I'm I'm uh, even on my first playthrough, I like to do as much as I can. I mean, my first Elden Ring playthrough was like seventy or eighty hours long because I went everywhere. <laughs> Oh my, yeah. Mine was <clears throat> crazy long. That's part of the reason why I could never I finish Skyrim or anything. All the exploring. Mm. I see. The thing is, though, I guess with Souls games more so than a Bethesda game, you're you're encouraged to find the next point of progression because that's how you get the next boss. That's and the yeah yeah. The, yeah that's the, the appeal of those can... games is the boss fights more than anything else. So it's, like... it's you're so right when you say that. Like I've never finished the Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim because I'm so busy with the exploring. But every <laughs> Devil May Cry game I've played, I've I've always beaten it because you want yeah, to get the power ups, they... you want to get the next guy. You just want yeah, the, the, next the best fight, content right? is in progressing the main yeah. thrust of the game. So you, yeah, you don't 100%. feel you don't feel because even in Elden Ring, like eventually you will get tired of just exploring caves. Like you can get a lot of stuff from it. So especially if you're having fun with the game, it's not a bad way to kill some time while listening to podcasts and stuff. But at the same mm -hmm. time, like you, you will get bored if you're just wandering around and not trying to fight any of the actual bosses, because that's how you open up the areas that have the more interesting bosses and well, so but the mechanics playing. too, like the, the the feeling of beating a boss is one of the one of the best things in video games. When it's a well crafted boss and you actually like, you, you fucking earned it, like I've hours and hours of hours trying to beat these most fucking ridiculous bosses, and like mm. and that's one of those things that I know you get right back into. Like some one of my favorite aspects of games, like finally that one blow got you, you fuck, get out of my, <laughs> yeah. hey, get out of my life. <laughs> Holy fun. shit, man! Video games, yep. they're pretty cool. Yeah. Unlike Argyle. <laughs> Argyle is not pretty cool. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they that's... used Dua Lipa. I, I will say they did one thing perfectly. They used Dua Lipa perfectly. Yeah, they got a go. really hot pop star to be very hot and dance, and then have a little action scene, say like three lines, and then die. <laughs> that that's how you do it. No, no, that's like how you do it. Just, how you do it. Even if she didn't die, just get her out of the movie. It's like, yeah, no, that's the perfect the perfect way to use a pop star who doesn't act in your movie. Have her do the things she's good at, yeah, and then just don't don't focus on her all that much. Yeah, she was really sexy in that opening scene. And it's funny people are only going to really remember that shot, like, yeah. The opening, because oh, yeah, she, you know? she, uh, she yeah. came out of this movie most unscathed. She's clean. Yeah. <laughs> unlike she's fucking cool in it. <laughs> unlike fucking Bryce, man, Jesus woman, like that is. I I always picture her as like heels and like the Jurassic World World Dominion like stuff like in terms of her memes but like this trumps all that that's the goofiest fucking shot i've ever seen of her the whole hockey thing is embarrassing but well, oh, well, well. good luck to her good luck to her that's one way to put it yeah <laughs> and you know i had to preface how much a, one of the other canadians on the show knows about skating before we yeah, got man. <laughs> Just, what the fuck it's ice it's key it's an essential <laughs> part of it <laughs> what are you oh, doing God. even i know that Honestly, like, I think if she put four down and it was like, it was almost like she had a little boat, like a, a roller skate format more so than, than an actual ice skate would probably work oh, better. Wow. 
Or just her think, shoes. Yeah, like, that's, that's like ultimately, I think it, she pushed through with her shoes and was like kicking herself off the structures and things like that to slide and then getting knife yeah. kills by just moving faster than they are because she understands how to move fast and do specific Use her actions through background like, or something. Yeah. But I'm saying in, in conclusion, just so if he, he can wrap it up, I, uh, um, I, the pattern that all of us pretty much pinpointed was just wasted opportunity. All these things had cool cool ideas that we could have done something with and they did the stupidest thing imaginable or nothing mm -hmm. pretty much you nailed it yeah but yeah that wraps that up uh good stream fun stuff uh movie bad yeah. don't watch it uh <laughs> thank you brooks for hanging out for joining us oh what, no what problem you, man what you what you up to where, where do people find you obviously link is in the description uh jedi brooks youtube um i am Fucking thrilled that 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 the uh, Atomic Blonde video is having such so, so much success. Awesome. Uh, Mark helped me out with the thumbnail. It was yeah. a super personal video for me in terms of just like Sick. I fucking hate what they've done to the strong female lead shit because you've you've ruined the ones that actually do it right and they don't yeah. give me credit. 100%. So I'm happy to give her some shine and it echoes and embarrassment. Don't waste your time with it. And I'm also wait working on like a top five Marvel video that's um, basically the top five wasted Marvel characters. Oh, and it's okay. going to be like one of my one of my longest videos ever. I've been working on it since like Secret Invasion EFAP, like since oh. I met you guys pretty much, you know, I've been working on it for a long time. So nice. yeah, uh, you'll see me soon. And I need to start streaming more here and there. So Hell Supernatural yeah. Sundays, eventually I'm going to be able to do uh, consistently. I've only done one now. It was a breakdown of um, Let the Right One In. So anything yeah, horror... Yeah, anything horror related, supernatural of any kind, even freaking maybe some like true crime shit, just anything fucking gritty on a Sunday night. No, nice. and um, yeah, I'll be able to figure it out from there. But yeah, Sick. thanks for having me on. I'm happy to see you guys like doing the Hell collaboration yeah. and keep it up. Yeah, good stuff, Mark. You you got anything going on specifically? I guess um here I'll share it in the Discord. There, um, it, it's not my project, but um, my Mike from um, like Geeks and Gamers crew, Epic Mike, uh, made this horror short called Reflection that uh, both my wife and I act in. So yeah, oh. if you want to see me acting in a horror movie, like a That's short neat. horror film, uh, I the trailer want for to see it. That. Send is... that shit. <laughs> yeah, so I, you can throw it. I put it in the Discord, but I don't know if you're. Yeah, so it'll just the show, in the go chat. check it out. Yeah, that's the trailer for Reflection. You'll see me in there. I'm uh, cool. I'm, I'm dressed like Barney from Half Life. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not playing that character, but that was essentially the inspiration for my security guard guy's costume. So, Coolio. And I look very afraid. Yeah. Good but yeah, no, that's it. And then, like, you know, my, my Mark the Cyborg. You guys can find me, I'm sure. Yeah, links are all down below, of course. Go click the links or I'll find you. Um, <laughs> for, as for myself, tomorrow, good old birthday strumble, because uh, yeah, tomorrow's my actual birthday. So I'm going to play some games, hang out, maybe do some multiplayer stuff. I don't really have anything specifically planned. Normally I would plan, like, a big old drinking stream or something with, like, Gardic phone and stuff, but... It's Monday. I have to work the next day, so I can't really get passed out drunk or anything. So that's yeah. not fun. But got to do something. Just going to go play some Gorms. Uh, should be fun. Got people there hanging out. You'll see them. Uh, and then I'm just going to get back to, uh, in the groove because Burke's been busy. So I haven't really been able to go back to my actual uh, scripted video, uh, which I really want to go back to. But yeah, time is too little and i need to use it wisely but hopefully i'll go back to that very soon it's only one or two more recording sessions then i can start editing so hopefully it's not going to take too long but we shall see no promises or dates or even what it is <laughs> you'll never know except the people who do know anyway uh thank you for hanging out oh, yes. Quickly, I can yes. reveal Metal Commander's birthday gift. So for uh, this year, for your birthday, Metal Commander, what I've got you is I've commissioned our friend CT, Caffeine Tweaker, to do some some art of the, oh, of the two of us for the show. Oh, sick. <laughs> I'm looking forward oh, to that. That's yeah, awesome. She's a Stitch and Adams artist. Um, like she's, <clears throat> she's their like, head mod and their clipper editor. But uh, yeah, she's a really good artist. And um, she did actually the profile picture I have right now. That's her art. Awesome. But, uh, well, looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to show that, that off on stream. That's a fun thing to do. Might take her some time, but yeah. Yeah. Come in, come. Cool. Thank you very much. That sounds awesome. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the super chats. And I shall see everybody very soon. Peace out. Goodbye. Later, everybody. Peace.